Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. I don't like wrestling. It's been underwhelming this week, Matthew. Hello and welcome to the <laughs> Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. Scrummy, scrummy, scrummy. <laughs> oh, the kind of surprises themselves are here. Before, ready. before we start proper, can I just address the camera and just say once again, thank you to Chris Jericho for still being a leading light uh, behind the scenes in AEW. We can't We're, thank you enough. This is like the start of a PWG match. We're just yeah. all getting our stuff. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> can't thank you enough for your service, Chris. Yes, you are listening to the Cold Hollet Wrestling Podcast. Thank you, Chris. Believe it or not. Jack is here. Hello. Door is not. Ross is here. And I am here. That's good. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a podcast be if we podcast, weren't here. No. No. But Jack, how are you doing, pal? I'm all right. I'm going to a basketball game tomorrow. Oh, who's playing? The Newcastle Eagles. I don't know who they're against. Mike from Coop <laughs> used to play in the same basketball circles mm. as me as a teen. Oh. Although I never met him as far as we can remember. Um, so tomorrow he was like, do you want to go to the basketball? And I was like, yes, I bloody do. I've not been for years to see the Eagles. Let's go, Eagles. Let's go. Newcastle has one of the best basketball teams in the in the whole nation. Well, it is the best, isn't it? Is it still? It was for years and years the mm. best. I don't, I don't know, know, know if it is anymore. I don't know if Fab's still there. You'll I find out. It tomorrow. probably yeah. crumbled after me and Tom mm. shot our hoops on that court. <laughs> <laughs> They've never seen if skills you like that. Expression. Because you'd embarrassed them with your skills, or because you'd cursed the ground. No, because <laughs> we'd embarrassed. Them okay, yeah, yeah. With yeah. our sheer natural basketball cavorka. <laughs> if it was a contest, <laughs> who could throw the ball hardest against the backboard? Then it would have been. That's the point of basketball, isn't yes. it? Try and make it bounce into your own half. Yeah, this, yeah. This wins. It's like yeah. squash. Yeah, the big bang. <laughs> really good. Ah. <laughs> Apart from the big bangs, as the actress said, the bishop. How have you been, Ross? Hello, William Regal. Oh, I could oh, not oh. be in a better fettle because this is my last day in this godforsaken hell cove for thirteen days. Ooh. Thirteen days. I'm going on oh. holiday. Oh, oh. Where are you going off to? Th uh, Thalu and Barcelona. Lovely. Um, just to get me Spanish in there. I've learned a bit of Spanish. That's as far as it goes. Oh. Um, C C. I C and. Hi, how are you doing? Barcelona and Thalou. Dos cervezas, por favor. Oui, oui. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oui, oui, bon quick. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm, on, I'm, I'm missing from the next two podcasts. Everyone will be relieved to hear that. So, Aww. Aww. Relieved. Oh, relieved. Really? You'll get someone better like Frazier so, Poitier or I, uh, Tommy A. Campbell or something. I recently downloaded a chess podcast to listen to all the unfolding. <laughs> why would you possibly be listening <laughs> I just have always to a loved, podcast about I'll, chess? I'll, I'll tell you why. I just always love chess. You know? Anal beads. No, no, no. That is why. No, that's not why. It is why. I will say the, the <laughs> presenters of this particular chess podcast that I downloaded uh, rubbished the claim said it was poor journalism the anal beat stuff that was like clickbaity to be fair wow there's not much of that in this podcast yeah. later on as we'll cover <laughs> well, that was going on who wants to be a millionaire the alleged <laughs> cheating ways of the chess man is the way to win it isn't it not a coughing lady in the crowd it's anal beads and a vibration device mm. is, it, is it A <laughs> B C B <laughs> oh <laughs> Ooh, oh, I've just had a thought. <laughs> Off me piles. Um, so what Ross just said there <laughs> reminded me of, in jest, Ross said it, but this guy, it was a two-part chest podcast well, because the, the situation developed. Magnus Carlsen released a statement. All this sort of stuff went on. I was listening to it on my walks to work this week. It's been fantastic. On the set, on the part two, they're like, well, unfortunately, so-and-so couldn't be with us today, but now we've got our old presenter back. Hey, say hello, whoever. And he went, Hey, everyone. Uh, obviously, I checked the comments after last time I was on, and a lot of people said that they were glad to see the back of me. So I'd just like to say to those people, F you. And you just heard the other two presenters going like, huh? <laughs> I was like, you've killed the mood of this chess podcast. Anyway, there we go. I'm old. I play chess. Oh, and I work. I work with children. <laughs> All that going around then, not just the wonderful world of wrestling. And yes, we're all coping on doing our best. I hope you're doing how, the same. How have you been? I'm just keeping myself above water as we live every day on planet hell. Mm -hmm. uh, been a great week for uh, England and yeah. our overall image. Our the green rest of the and world. Pleasant land. All the Americans going. I knew I hated them for some reason. And now it's such a weird feeling, isn't it? When you well, dislike somebody for no real reason, and then that person or country does something stupid. You go, aha, now I can justifiably I, hate them. I would say we're actually the victims in this situation because you can't oh. really, in the spirit of the game, run out somebody at the non-striker's end. It just makes no <laughs> sense. So, no. It, we're obviously that talking, was a fair dismissal. Very, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. You know the rules. We're but, obviously uh, talking about so the economy, actually, aren't we? We're, we're trying yes. to be America, aren't we? But the, the problem is there's like billions of more people over there, isn't there? Not like literally billions, but a fair few more. So we can't be like America. We're a bit smaller. 
We need to just spend within our means. Mm. Not like what Liz wants to do. Yeah, that's not a concept that to follow. And it did it weird me out the timing of, as I was noticing this morning, I was waking up and watching A-Dub. SummerSlam 92 happens, August 92. Several weeks later, uh, the event known as Black Wednesday occurs and the John Majors government. When where... Vince took control of all the territory. That's right. He showed up on ITV, News at 10, <laughs> and went, guess who owns this? <laughs> and then fast forward. So SummerSlam 92, obviously the biggest UK event in the breath history. 2022, biggest WWE event in UK history, Clash at the Castle. What happens in the same calendar month? So you're that? blaming the economic downturn on the WWE. All I'm saying is, when they come over here, can they please stick the house shows? <laughs> yeah. no, no issues with them. Matthew of Botchamania has tra- transitioned to the Tory party. <laughs> he is looking for other people to blame. Other than... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Have you seen people, the narrative now is that, I think Lord Ashcroft tweeted it, that the, the economy is actually bad because everybody's so worried about the prospect of a Labour government. <laughs> Not the government's been oh, part that's a good for ten years. Anyway, not let's anyway, not. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, look, right. The yeah. UK we'll currently it, yeah. is like five star wrestling, circa twenty seventeen. All the heights go on. Whoosh, whoosh, money going mm. everywhere. CM Punk, one million dollars, <laughs> and then it just dies. Yeah, we're on the brink of death over here. Just to bring it back to wrestling, yeah. makes sense in my head. Yep, it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel great. Let's have a look. <laughs> uh, in the news. Sting, set for the great Muta's retirement match. Obviously, he skipped ahead to the week of wrestling, but obviously it's old news now. The great Muta appeared at the very end of the little scramble thing they had on AW Rampage, and obviously set off camera, Sting, will you team up in my last match in Japan uh, for great Muta final bye-bye event? That's the official name, by the way. Jim? Who titled that like? Me, I think. <laughs> Good Buddha final. Bye bye. That's how he ended his career. Tell me, Tubby. Again, again. Yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, we you know who uh, Muta is, and Sting had some I love you matches in Japan all this time ago. It's a bit of a mild surprise, but I guess he wants something special. Mm. It's like having those um, custodian matches, whatever they're called. That's what you say, is it? Testimonial. Testimonial. Oh, testimonial. <laughs> Custod- yeah. <laughs> the winner gets Dominic. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that'd be nice to see. It's obviously, I know that you're a good as a fan of later day WCW, that uh, Muta's pal Vampiro, obviously not available. Well, yeah. You know, would it be nice to see him set you know, Muta on fire like he did this thing back in the day mm. and stuff and maybe drench him in a bit of blood. That's it. <laughs> bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I saw a tweet that was like, it did get hammered, to be fair. I'm not the first person to take aim at this tweet, but it was like, who are these nobodies that AEW keep getting in? Who's this guy? And everyone went, it's a great Muta. It is the great movie, yeah. No, but it's not like the, that's supposed to be a joke tweet, but now everyone does oh, was it, it was so it's it no joke? longer. I thought this one was serious. Oh, it's because AEW do it tell. so much that we don't know when people are joking and when they're not, I would have. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It's like you say, well, but, yeah, you know, if that's the thing when you do a sarcastic joke like that, there's so many people who say serious stuff like that, that the line blows. We which to, apparently is to, prime we to, satire. We used to yeah. love AEW. Oh, it's gone off the rails. I don't know what's happened. Hey, Muda, good, reckon, good call there, I hope Sting. For this last match. Muda I, was exciting. Yeah, yeah, I hope they uh, get a camera in the locker room because I saw that clip from, uh, well, I, must, I think it was the StarCast event with Sting. And he's on about his like interaction with Muda before one of their matches. And he's like, half an hour, he's like, no, I get blown up. Yeah, I'm a bit tired. He's uh, having a tab. Muta, this is. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I get a bit blown up there, Sting. And then Sting's been told he's winning. But he's like, oh, what's the finish there, big old Muta pal? And he's like, moonsault. He's like, I do not do a moonsault. <laughs> oh, he's been told he's winning. Oh, no. oh, he thinks he's winning. <laughs> so, yeah. I hope they get a camera in the locker room. Bet they have a great time. Like those football manager ones. Aye. You go out there. Mike Bassett was 20 years old this week, I think. What a film. He's looking good. 4-4, four, four, F and 2. Yeah, I'm sick of Fraser telling me to watch Ted Lasso when he's <laughs> never seen Mike Bassett in the manager. He's a great, the greatest film. All I know is Ted Lasso was a was it an advert, and then it became a TV series, and now it's in FIFA. Uh, it's in game. FIFA, yeah. I mean, That's a hell of a... I need to give it a go. I've not, I haven't seen I've it. I've not seen either. Uh, I've not either, but I've seen enough clips where every, it's not just Fraser. Everyone in the office who doesn't like football has gone, you will love it. And I'm like, no, I won't. I won't. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it, when people recommend your stuff and you're like, like I know what Ted I Ted Lasso's in the dugout going like, run the play! And they all do like an American football huddle and I'm like, this isn't for me. I'm sorry. Oh, that, uh, uh, if it is just that, that's, that's sad. Apparently it's very wholesome and heartwarming though. Is oh, it? I already hate it. Yeah, I know, exactly. Where's the cynicism? <laughs> so then Budweiser do an advert like that. Years ago, it's like, like, what if we did football over here? Yeah. Manchester City and Manchester United. Multi why, why not just Team Manchester? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Gabe Sapolsky is re-signed with WWE. Get in! Yes. <laughs> and I'm yes. so happy about that, right? He was there for years, but nobody could tell. Unless you were working there, I assume. So, yeah, you go, oh, Tim. <laughs> uh, he later found it, obviously, 
the understudy, the Paul Heyman, mm -hmm. a ring of honor during its uh, glory years. And he later founded Dragon Gate USA in 09 and evolved in 2014 and has been uh, trying to deal with NFTs. So it's obviously used oh. to products that oh, don't so make any he's money. A, he's a <laughs> monumental twat then. So <laughs> he's got his bio still. Seems like he's had a good run with, like, he's got a decent track record and everything. But the main things I know about him are just from wrestlers laughing about him in shoot interviews. <laughs> like the young old CM man. Punk. Yeah. yeah, and CM Punk, yeah. Weird. I used to get him and Joel Goethe confused. Mm, they do look a bit similar. Yeah. But now I don't. Because yeah. I've grown as a person. And so have they. <laughs> uh, Raven to be inducted in the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Raven? Very deserved. Oh. That's so Raven. I feel yeah. like there's other more obvious candidates. Actually, I don't know who's in it already. Sting's in it. Yep. AJ? Christian? Uh, I don't know if AJ Styles is in it. AJ not. Daniels and Joe should all be in it before Raven. IMO. Who is in it? I don't know. Ken Shamrock. Ken Sh yeah, because he had the rock. The rock. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're going in like chronological order. It looks like Maybe it, it? Yeah, O2 was Ken Shamrock. will be in at yeah. some point, yeah. Surely r would be before Raven, wouldn't he? Oh, uh, yes, he would. Oh, my Just God. immediately before. You'd think. Wow. This is like 03, 04 sort of time, is it? A bit earlier, a bit later? Yeah, no, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Truth was a champ before that. Raven had that giant push where they sold out the fairgrounds, which is not saying a lot, but it was back mm. then. Uh, Jared, anyway, yeah. Jared kept on winning yeah. when he shouldn't have been winning. Yeah. <laughs> nice guy, Jeff. Nice yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. Jeff. I have a bad word said about him here. Fair enough. Yeah, but me neither, now that he stopped talking about that bloody flare match. You can move on to the other <laughs> good stuff in his podcast. Oh, it'll be coming soon, though. You but you watch. We're getting South East West Southwest. Championship Man Southwest. Wrestling Manager. Southwest. <laughs> And uh, the segment I called the AEW Mega Contract Segment of the Week. <laughs> uh, Malachi Black denies he has been released oh by my AEW. God, story. Says he will be back pretty soon. Uh, he, It's been very weird because we've not said much on this podcast because I like to think if we don't know what's officially going on or been confirmed by another uh, reputable news source, we'll shut up and mind our business. Uh, people, I, couldn't, I think it was the Big Dave himself, Meltzer, did say like, no, no, he's, he's, he asked for his request, uh, he requested his release and he wasn't given it and all this stuff. To where Alistair Black just did a Malachi. live stream. Back, beg your pardon. Malachi Black did a uh, Instagram live stream and basically went off it in a nice, very calm way, not like CM Punk way. He just said, none of it's confirmed. There's no confirmation because I haven't left. That's what this whole thing was about. I've been given time off by Tony to take care of a bunch of stuff. All this stuff has been played up for, uh, for weeks. All this stuff was weeks ago. I'll be back soon. That's so, it. And he blasted the dirt sheets. I mean, and then... Oh, I don't know whether to bring it up. I, I'll just, I was going to say, while, he, pull, is, while uh, he mulls that over, just off the back of that, the rumours, I think he's being... He said he got death threats, which is just like... Oh, yeah, and then another thing he says, like, like I'm be getting threats and stuff because he's he said, I just need time off. I'm dealing with some stuff. He left it, I guess, ambiguous enough for people to go, aha, yes. that thing he needs people. to deal with is his, is his secret meeting with Triple H on <laughs> the people who swinging this as... Well, then, then it was claimed... And I'm not having a go at him, right? But then it was claimed by Sean Ross that mm. he, he came out and went like, well, actually, he did say that he was going, I've got receipts. And then he, apo and then, and then he, he apologized. The yeah. Whether that's true or not, right? Context is everything because that, that could have been him joking with someone in a text or it could have been him wanting to back then, now changing his mind, just various things. But even if Sean's right, I'd suggest that probably it's never a good look to... When a wrestler comes out and flat out says, that's not true about me, for that person to go, no, I know more about you than you know about you. Like, it's not. It's 100%. Just never, even, if they're, even if Sean's right, it's not It's not a good look. Yeah, they've said it. They're fake. Like, well, what's your source on this, think, this claim? That's like, oh, he said it I himself with his own words. Especially and face, after right? the CM Punk thing and everything. Fightful and Sean Ross Sapp really established themselves as like a reputable source in wrestling and, and a good one. And I think that maybe just, just accept that like you're not going to have 100% accuracy record in wrestling of all. I don't know. I've, I've been thinking about this. Right, right. I get, yeah, you'd think this is the to go, oh, it turns out like something must have been wrong then. Or, oh, plans must have changed or whatever. Yeah. Uh, or anything. Or rather than try and argue the toss. I do like Sean Ross. I don't envy of, him. I don't envy the, the position he's in. If, right. Heavy's the head that wears the crown as then Biscuit said. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Sean Ross Sapp, he has that weird thing that Brian Zane used to do, and I told him off for it, and I think he And you stopped. told him off for Yeah, because it's like, if someone goes, boo, you stink, Sean Ross Sapp, at Sean Ross Sapp, he will, like, quote tweet and, like, go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't. And yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you know, you got know. the world, the eyes of the world are watching you, or the wrestling world are watching you right now, and all the news and stuff, and here you are squaring off with a kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, just move on, mute and block. That it's is, not just him, though, everyone. I mean, you know, lots of people are guilty of that. 
Yeah, but you need to not do it. I've done it in the past. We've all done it. Other people who work here <laughs> need to stop doing it. <laughs> that is the journalism game, though. You're only as like you're strong as your sources, aren't you? And if your sources right. are telling you one thing, it's like, and you've you know ratified it and verified it as much as you can. You are going to put it out there. But as we said, like if Malachi's going, nah, that's wrong. Just maybe go, oh, fair enough. I was wrong. Yeah, don't go. Sorry. No, yeah. I know what you want more than you. Just tweet Because Fightful, it. you know, over the past two years, especially, as Jack said, with breaking the CM Punk thing months yep. before, uh, Sean tells me all about that on Straight to Hell on the channel. Oh, lovely. Check it all out, how you, you, you source that and whatnot. It's very interesting. But they are the top dogs in the game at the minute. Oh, yeah. In terms of the wrestling report and game. They've, they've got there because they get more right than wrong. Yeah. Recently, they might have got more wrong than right. But, you know, as we say, you're only as good as your sources, aren't you? Yeah. You know, it gets Cause, me. You've got to stay humble and keep respect. You know, it gets me know. excited in the world of wrestling journalism. The mysterious shadowy figure of Russell votes. He'll just tweet one line and it's always true. And I'm like, oh, mm. num, num, num. <laughs> <laughs> num, num, num. I love Russell votes, man. Whoever you are, love you, Russell votes. I don't know who on earth you are, how you get the information you do, but oh. Mm. <laughs> Bless you, Jack. And continuing the gauntlet with part two of the AEW contract stuff of the week, Bobby Fish addresses the rumor that he tried to convince Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly to quit AEW for WWE. Um, um, Fightful Select, say. again, I guess we themselves though, with numerous sources denying this rumor that came up uh, courtesy of Ryan Frederick of the Wrestling Observer on the outlet's message board. Apparently that's a source of news now, the message board for the Wrestling Observer. That's Wait, news they, to me. They've put stuff on there as well. Yeah. Well, just the rest I'm of the message board. I'm assuming not... that Ryan Frederick's a staff member, not yeah. just a bloke on the forum. Plays right back for Bournemouth, didn't he, as well? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think Dave like sometimes sees a comment on there and then replies saying, no, this is what I've heard and this, that, and the other. Mm. So, yeah. That's obviously the place to do it. Oh, that, we should all sign up to the wrestling well, I assume there's articles board. as well, but sometimes, yeah. you know, he says a little bit, a, a little accoutrement. Yeah. Mm. And accoutrement. Uh, Fish did not like this. And he says, guess what, boys? After over 25 years in the wrestling business, I don't know how contracts work myself. What was the most troublesome and amusing at the same, the best he's ever sounded, to be honest with you. What was the most troublesome and amusing at the same time was how many outlets picked up uh, were picked up on it. If there's anybody who knows that it's a total fabricated information, it'll be me, Adam, Kyle, Hunter, Triple H, the people that we're talking about Ooh, who, first did, name terms. who didn't do any of those things. None of it is real. Even people like Cornette picked it up and commented on it. Jim and I always had a great relationship, but from being honest, Jim hurt my feelings a little by believing some BS about me so easily. It is what it is, but that's what sucks the most about it. The people that write this stuff, there is no checks and balances. There are no ramifications when you're in the wrong, and they'll continue to write whatever they're going to write, and it gets picked up by whomever. That's not true. Why do you say something like Bob? But... Oh, also, rumor killer on Buddy Matthews being suspended <laughs> by AEW. In it, rumors have suggested that Buddy has actually was actually suspended during July, but PW Inside have confirmed that was not the case. Instead, Matthews had to return to Australia to process his work visa, oh, so continue to perform in the United States because he wrestled up there, wrestling the likes of. Alex Zane, Alexander Hammerstone, and Brian Cage. Um, he then notes that he's going to be taking some time off, but he hasn't left AEW either, he's keen to point out. He's just taking some time off. He'll be back soon. And then there was rumors that he, he, he wants to go back to WWE, which I think me and Jack were sort of inching towards that because he put a little gif on Twitter, didn't he, saying fake, 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 yeah. fake, fake. I think we were edging towards that being a response to those like going back to WWE rumors rather than yeah. leaving yeah. AEW. Yeah. So can't really tell. Again, yeah. again, we don't know. And a final bit, uh, final select confirmed that W reached out to Swerve Strickland, but he was not interested to return to the company at the time and simply re referred them to his attorney. It feels uh, like a transfer window, this. It really does, doesn't mm. it? But, uh, I don't know if that means he's not interested. I just think that's the proper thing to do, isn't it? When you're in a contract with somebody else, put it to the lawyers. So he could yeah. be in. We don't know, do we? Should we put words I, in his mouth? I would be recent. <laughs> we can exclusively hear. <laughs> <laughs> we should get Puppet Jack to just say what we're thinking so we can avoid litigation. We should get well, Puppet Jack to sort of turn into that octopus right, from the World Cup. Just get <laughs> put a couple of balls oh, at the end of the table and uh, see which one he Paul. flies towards. Was it Paul? Dan Paul the octopus. <laughs> I thought Dan would Oh, know. yeah, you don't get the wrong name of the octopus. Dan would have been quite young, actually, then. Was it 2006? Six, Jeremy, yeah. Uh, How old were you, Dan? 12? 10? 11. 11. Oh, mm. you baby boy. That's the perfect age to get hooked on an octopus. I still remember watching the opening game from that World Cup in my nanas. Germany just banging 40 yard. Oh, what a. It was Paul the Octopus that Get in Paul oh, the Octopus. Yeah, the World Cup's next month. Two, well, in a month and a half. Is Paul the Octopus. Still... How long do octopuses live? I think he was like six or two. When... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how octopuses long. have three hearts. Oh. That's right. Mm hmm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You excited for the World Cup? Because it's been tearing our office apart. I Ross is wait. excited. Jack Atkins, he's a traditionalist. He likes a summer World Cup. And who can blame him? But Ross is kind of like very optimistic about this. I love a winter beer. 
a winter drinking session in a nice pub, a nice crackling fire in the background, mm. that smoky aroma filling the pub, the nice oh. hot jug of cider on the bar. Oh. Imagine all of that, that wintertime sensation of having a beer with your friends, but with the football of the World oh. Cup on in the background. Oh. And the chance, because we have such shocking weather over here that we might have an advantage. Mm. Um, no, the World Cup's in Qatar. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's going to be 20, yeah. 22 We're going to degrees. lose, horror. <laughs> that's going to be rotten. Oh, we're all going to big, big coats on the side lose. of our warm side. Look at in Qatar. Gareth, oh. I, I trust in Sir Gareth. Some people have fallen away. Some people have maybe, you know. I don't envy. Gareth. I don't envy the England team because we watched a video the other day of where they're staying at the hotel. And at 5 a.m., the local town like pipes out these the prayers. Prayer. Through like tannoys around oh, the town. Oh, because England are going to need one to win. Well, yeah, right. obviously, but like yeah, that's Gareth, nice. So the attack Gareth, will you? But they pipe them out through the town. So they're going to get woken <laughs> up at five a.m. every day. Why? Let's get I've been in the army. Yeah. Oh. Me and Dan are still. The, this country's got an awfully short memory. Gareth has served us well, <laughs> and I think he deserves hey, this last. You're only stand. as good as your last season. Mm, yeah, true. Mm. And it's not been good because we haven't won in seven games. Come on, I'm sure all that's just. <laughs> Any more wrestling news there? Oh, yeah, right. Ten, ten so that long. was the contract stuff <laughs> of the week. Uh, the news this week, oh, oh, I hadn't heard this story before. There was a backstage fight between the League of Nations at the re WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, but this is all according to Alberto, though. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 I'll read the story <laughs> out and see if you can guess which one it was. <laughs> the League of Nations, if you don't remember or you try to forget, was a short lived faction in WWE consisting of Sheamus, Wade Barrett, Del Rio, and Rusev. The lads. The lads, the lads they call themselves. Yeah. Only being put together to help Roman Reigns. Get over. Animosity soon built within the stable, and Del Rio revealed to Sports Kida that the stable actually came to blows right before the WrestleMania 32 match against the New Day. Quote, there was a big fight backstage. On that one, I was involved. Just pause to get the let that sink in. I know the shock, right? Uh, but it was not me creating the altercation. The person creating the altercation was not against me. The other two and I, we had to put someone in his place before going out. This is one minute before he we went out. We went out to the ring, and one of us, I'm not going to say who, had to tell this person, listen, you mother, we're done with you. You're going to go out and do this because you're a this and you're a that. So yes, one minute before we went out in that huge back stadium, a big altercation was happening backstage. It's part of wrestling, unfortunately, these days. Situations like that, yeah, we ye. Uh, you talked about it with the CM Punk, said, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's just human nation. But he doesn't say who so well I know who it was it was stupid sexy Wade Barrett because this was the arse in the 2015 and 2016 Barrett had given up by then he's a you know he likes being saucy and whatnot I reckon he saw Bertie's scarf and thought oh I'd love a go on that starts tugging on and stuff mm. like that I reckon that's what happened I'm Completely really unfounded this there. is like a logic I like puzzle that. and I can't <laughs> work out sauce, who, Puppet Jack. <laughs> I can't work out who did it because if it wasn't Alberto telling the story I would have 100% assumed this was Del Rio who had to get told by the others right. I reckon it still is him. Seamus and, Seamus and Rusev, yeah, he's being sneaky. Yeah. Seamus and Rusev are boys. They're really tight friends. So I think, but then I don't, but then Wade Barrett's really calm and composed. And he's like tight a gen. He's, well. he's and he sees composed. women or men. There seems to be one or anyone. anyone. Yeah, yeah, anything with a pulse. I reckon Del Rio started talking and said, compared himself to God. And Miro, who hates God, <laughs> went, aha, I'm going to commit deicide. And uh, they went, no, 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 no. I, d I did interview Seamus once. Uh, and he, I remember, I remember some other League of Nations got brought up and I was expecting him to give a really like political answer. And he just went like, well, I mean, it helped get Roman over, but what on earth did it do for us? And I was like, yeah, I was really shocked. Yeah. He was so blunt about it. So maybe, I don't know. It got them a WrestleMania moment with Stone Cold oh. Steve Austin. They got battered by some legends. <laughs> <laughs> battered. Uh, update on three plans for Via Mahan. Apparently, he's been quietly moved over to NXT oh, to team see, up with Sanger. Did you see who they beat? No. Did they? Oh, no. I hadn't read that bit. Mere days oh, after no. he's schooled Carmelo Oh, Hayes, my God. Sanger and Via Mahan have spaffed in the eye of Chase U. Well, you can't... Oh, on a house show. You can't win the NXT more. house shows are back. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. They're doing little loops again. The coconut loop. The Florida loop. The, the, the southeast loop. They're all in Florida. If we stare at him, so you keep on doing that. Yeah, I'll just, I don't know how it went to stop. The Lupe Fiasco. Is that oh, his name? Oh, fantastic. That, that's it. Take a boo. Uh. And then finally, in the bit we already know about, but Drew McIntyre confirmed it. Uh, no, not all of his sing along was supposed to be shown on the network. <laughs> uh, the quote The singing that happened in Cardiff, if you had told me you're going to sing a song after you lose a big match, I still haven't checked how much was on TV. 
but not oh. all of it was supposed to be on TV, oh. but we went for it. If you embrace it, chances are the crowd is going to embrace it too, and you're going to have a fun time Aye, together. They were pissed. They were all say, pissed. Ross, you were there. Did the, the of course they did, because everyone was drunk. Oh, right. It was a largely adult crowd. You know, I could see, you know, three or four sections and the floor seats in front of me. Children, you could have counted on one hand <laughs> around me. So yeah, everyone was drunk and everyone was having a good sing song. Yeah. But we, because we thought it was off the air, because uh, we were like sort of sat under the, on the like up the the, the side, but like yeah. below the next tier, if that makes sense. You had like TVs above your head, and it went off. Uh. So we thought, you know, it ended with Roman and Solo standing tall at the top of the ramp, but no, it all got short. E. But at least it's nice to know he just didn't go along with that. I like to think he would have put up a fight. Imagine how what a night it would have been if Drew had won. Everyone would have gone out. Mm. Oh, Everyone sorry. did go out. Oh right. Well. Oh. Straight across the road to Tiny Rebel. Aye. Mm. I had to get a refund out of the ticket office. <laughs> that was a really good night. Mm. Aye. Now, it, apart from that one moment, I, I overall enjoyed it. Uh, some Teddy ten... Long. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get blocked? I, I've been blocked from by years. For but, years? By years, yeah. So that, this was like, it was like, ah, oh, why are we getting blocked? I'm like, oh, I was getting blocked before it was cool. But mm. I reckon Teddy Long fell for one of those. Hey, it's me. Do you want a PS5? <laughs> but... Because Teddy, he's an old man with a phone. We know what they're like. I've got some at home. Um, they don't always You've got get some used old men at home. Some old men. I know what I said. <laughs> and uh, they don't. They're not the quickest on the draw. So I reckon it would have been someone like Fritz von Erich sent me a message, and he was just like, "Hey, Fritz, how you doing?" He said, "Speaking of Fritz, your phone." Are you, get, are you get messages there. No, my phone does this thing where it's that it, oh. it's voice. It's, hey, do you want to use your voice to do? For Doing your <laughs> to Google stuff, it goes, No, I don't trust that. But, but I'll start speaking loudly and he'd be like, Look, I can do it. I said, No, you can go away for Teddy's confirmed what happened. Uh, well, yeah, Teddy's confirmed. So, first and foremost, he said it wasn't a verified Teddy Long account that was blocked by blocking everybody, <laughs> even though there's a big old blue tick next to it. Well, and yeah. secondly, he claims a person who Teddy had blocked years ago had got access to his account and was blocking everybody in revenge. And he says, I love you all and stuff. I'm player, sure player. he does, yeah. Uh, my favorite tweet in response to this was Dustin Rhodes, who said, there has to be something wrong. He can't hate all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Dustin Rhodes said this? Yeah. The other person who blocks everybody. Oh, oh does he? Goodness. Oh, Dustin's the Tory, yeah. Oh. He was, he was Dustin's the Tory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, uh. I know I'm blocked by our truth and I'm blocked oh, by uh, Sin Cara and Kalisto. Oh, yeah, I'm blocked by Sin Cara, but uh, that's, yeah. that's fair enough, mm. isn't it? Isn't he hard? Uh, he beat yeah. everyone up. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay. You know, all the rest is just soft and it's not one hard lad. Uh, was he um, running through a can of Pepsi at somewhere? Simon Gotch. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what was it with me? Oh, but John Cena follows me. He follows he everyone, follows yeah. Everyone. He, he doesn't like yeah, The cheat code was liking a tweet, wasn't it? Get a follow, follow back. Me. Oh, you got to like a tweet. Yeah, that was cheat oh, code. His tweets are boring. They unfollowed him, so it looked like a no, big they're league. not. They're really inspirational. It's like Ted Lasso. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And some negative news uh, for, oh, no. for some good news, like roller coaster, okay. go down and get up. Uh, Coolio, oh, the man. rapper passed oh, away yeah. this morning, yeah. last night, whatever. Oh. Gangsters Paradise, Keenan Kel. Yeah, that's all. Mean. Big brother. Both of them. Big brother. Eating that big pepper on Big Brother, yeah. One of my dad's, one of only two rap songs my dad likes, Gangsters Paradise. Nice. And Thrift Shop. <laughs> An eclectic taste. I thought it would have been yeah. a Fong song guy. No, 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 no. I don't know. That's more like R and B, though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but apparently, I I didn't know until obviously checking other stuff that he's passed away. Apparently, he took issue with Weird Al with his cover of uh, no, Paradise, Amish Paradise. Amish Paradise. But then he's like, people have asked him since, and he went, no, 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 no. I got the wrong end of the stick there. Just I should respond like that. I'm mad at my management for saying uh, this is a good idea. Uh, yeah, be mad at the guy who's parodied Michael Jackson who didn't say anything. Uh, uh, all these other famous artists, they're okay. We had but all... you, Coolio, you're better than them, are you? So we he's just a... saying, no, we're cool, we're cool. We had all tweeted a, an RIP Coolio thing, and it's them hugging. So yeah. it's nice, yeah. Oh man! The, 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 Weird Al said, "Yeah, people seized up on it because they're doing that special on Weird Al, and he had no no issues or heat with anybody. So it was like, oh, Coolio hates you. There you go. That's something for the TV show. You know, this Weird Al biopic that's coming out. Why have they made Daniel Radcliffe? Why is he all hench to be Weird Al? Why has he got to have like rippling arms? Wait, is he? Yeah, he's got himself. If you watch the trailer, he's got his top off, and it's like Daniel Radcliffe, but like jacked. And I'm like, well, he reminds is me Weird Al Jack? No." He, no, I know. I thought he was just a skinny him. guy. He reminds me of Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> oh, because well, I knew we were bring up Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer in this, in this doc, in this sorry oh, uh, drama thing, he's ripped us out as Everyone well. Everyone has to be sexy. Everyone's got to be like you know zero percent body fat and just like veiny. Yeah, 
Everybody, Weird no matter who you are. Oh. Jeffrey Dahmer doesn't. No, Jeffrey Unless Dahmer he was won. in real life. I don't think he was. I've only mean, oh. ever seen the interviews after all the stuff happened. Yeah. Maybe he was back in 1978. We, we don't have know. to Google Jeffrey Dahmer's workout plan now. <laughs> I want to get that what's Jeffrey your secret? body. <laughs> He's at the gym like, hey man, what's your secret? Human flesh. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, oh, the... I did see the thing by where the issues that, okay, this is hilarious, just obviously representing them a lot, but the fact that Netflix moved like Jeffrey Dahmer's, the Netflix thing, to the LGBTQ section. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you love uh, Drag Race, boy, have we got a show for you. A different kind of drag he race. He did do a lot in the serial killer world for the LGBT. Oh, yeah. <laughs> drag the bodies to the graves. Too long <laughs> have straight white men dominated the serial killer world. Oh, finally, some good representation. <laughs> Meets back on the menu, boy. Have you seen that lass? He's got a tribute leg to oh, serial no. killers. Have you seen it? I'm surprised. Worth a Google if Just you two. want to see. Just, Just two. It's got, she's got uh, Jeffrey at the bottom. And, and then, then the big one. Ted. Ted on the, the knee slash thigh. Not only has Ted and Jeffrey's face been put on a leg permanently, I should say, but she's also got a, a quote from Ted. His car that he used to go around and do she's all... She's got the car. She's got a quote from Jeffrey on her thigh, and Jeffrey is holding a dripping bloody brain. She is beyond help. Which is also like... <laughs> she's like also, she watches a lot of Netflix. She also seems quite like... If it wasn't for the, the serial killer-themed leg tattoo... She'd seem like she's really got her stuff together. Like she's she's like an influencer type. She's in great shape. She's a psychology graduate. We did we did a deep dive. Like Jeffrey on Dahmer. Him. But now, but also <laughs> loves the old. She <laughs> can't seem to separate, you know, the fictional Michael Myers, for example, with the real life Jeffrey D. Mm. That would be funny, yeah, if you had like Jeffrey D. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a stage name. <laughs> Jeffrey D on the MIC. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Dahmer was my father's name. <laughs> uh yeah. So that... That was the negative bit we got into some okay. weird stuff then. But the positive bit is, uh, by the time this has come out, it will be very soon Jack's birthday. So, uh, they were, apparently Cora Jade doesn't have cameo. So instead I got you something nice from <laughs> well, the sweetie place. Thank you very much, Matthew. Cheers. I'm sure the people got you the stuff I want to be <laughs> in first. From... Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, I Not thought you were getting them a chalky muff. Oh, muff. my God. They, they didn't... Have you heard about this? <laughs> yes, and they were out at Tesco. So about you that instead. I'm just going to pop this in the fridge. <laughs> that makes sense, because this is the end of the news. I thought we were going to explain what the Chucky yeah, was. Yeah, we ran out, didn't we? He cycled to Kawaguchiko. Nice. Was pretty wet. He chilled, chilled? He chilled round Lake Kawaguchi. Nice. He also rode around, around Seiko, Kawaguchi, and stop it. Yamanaka Lakes. Mm. He also realized Mount Fuji only appears from the clouds when he spends the whole day cycling away from it. So Slapping that, emoji. Yeah, it was shrouded in cloud, in cloud all day. And then, yeah. yeah, but he's glad he got some glimpses anyway. It's like the, the ghost from Mario, I guess. If you look at it, it looks away. It's shy, yeah. Uh, he said ah. there... Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he said there were some lush scenic spots on the long cycle back to Tokyo from uh, Kawaguchiko. Nice. That was... It's been a big... It's been a big week. It has for Tubman in Japan. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Now for everyone's favorite segment, the Hall of Fame, in condescending order from last week. Easter Island statues, aren't they cool? 11%. So I guess that's a no then, is it? Get... Uh, Miss Spider from James the Giant Peach oh, no. will make you horny. Why does it say that? Uh, 18%. <laughs> it doesn't say that. 18%. That's pretty all right, actually. No, no, it's not. No, considering the winner, quite right. Have you seen the engagement of Cultaholic Moody? Wrestling's no. Tom Campbell and his oh, good lady. 71%. I, I totally, we have no chance. I totally didn't remember no what chance. the other one was. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He's back. He seems in a great mood as well. It's lovely to see. Absolutely. It would be like uh, you when you finally... Ask Miss Spider if she's single. <laughs> Can you become Mrs. She's not, Spider? She's with the, the centipede. That'll never last. Okay. So well done, Ross, for that disgustingly easy pick. I mean, well deserved pick for You have sat there being. and picked disabled animals for months on end. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> this is a contest. Yeah, but they weren't married. It's a doggy dog world. How's even that? the disabled ones. Low hanging fruits are delicious. <laughs> really is nice. Me and MJF stick together. <laughs> <laughs> What's your whole Go on, Ross. <laughs> My pick this week is Sami Zayn because oh, oh, very good. He is 
the highlight of the wrestling world at the well, the, the, what we cover, the, the what we cover wrestling world at the moment, his performances, the segment at the start of last week's SmackDown was also made by Jay Uso, but it couldn't have been possible without Sami Zayn. So I'm going to go for the now officially honorary Us Sami Zayn mm. to bring it back to wrestling and go for a slightly higher fruit. Very good. A slightly higher fruit. Slightly higher fruit. No, it has been it's good though. Anonymous praise I've gone for the from wonder that is Sami Zayn. A berry in a bush to a banana on a low-hanging tree. Mm. It's a- Hand movements and everything. That was beautiful. <laughs> the, the, the deaf people listening to this. Sometimes a fruit's so good, you can't deny it, no matter how high it is on the tree. And I think this is one such example. Mm. It's been fantastic, Rob. Thank you. There's as one such fruit from an easy tree. I agree completely. <laughs> Especially <laughs> considering he's your, he's your brother in the red mist. The, the old Hi, I've got there, ginger so. pews, Matthew. Thanks for repeatedly <laughs> putting that out on the podcast. What? <laughs> audio, audio experience Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I never inferred that. <laughs> what happened there? No, Matthew keeps having a, like, not having a go. He keeps just keeps mentioning my ginger beard. Oh, But right. not actually outright going, you've got a ginger beard, you. <laughs> oh, I think oh. you were born with. <laughs> right, can't right, really right. help. I get a bit of it as well. <laughs> but I get, I get the, the, the ginger goatee and the rest of it's flat. I'm like, well, that's great, like, isn't it? It sucks to be you then, doesn't it? Like, why have you dyed your hair specifically <laughs> like that? I'm the opposite. My hair's quite light, but then my eyebrows and that are dark. Uh, What's going on? Isn't the human body amazing? It's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Showing on the ginger Yours pubes is. for the Hall of Fame instead. <laughs> Dan's beard's looking good today, actually. <laughs> actually, I might get rid of mine. Ginger <laughs> pubes. 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 Oh my God. Pubes. How you see me pubes? <laughs> I'll set me pubes on fire. Got me links Africa. <laughs> Spray the dune and then fwoff. Fwoff. <laughs> Then what do you do? <laughs> no, we'll play the game. Oh, what's it called? I can't remember. Like, you know, when you, uh, you get vodka and put it on your scalp and you set it on fire and pass it around the table. No, I don't. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't know that at all. Oh, we haven't lived then. <laughs> oh, if you want to play at home, you need a spare man with a large bottle of vodka. He'll pour the vodka onto the first man's head, or you know, whoever wants to play, lights it on fire. Then he goes around the table and keeps pouring on people's heads and you have to duck down. Oh. And then it, it, it's like a lovely candle. This seems like one of these bad pranks you go. It's like, this is what we're going to do, mate. And we'll set your hair on fire first. All right, you set that guy's hair on fire, and we'll just run. Like, <laughs> you bastard! Don't do that at home. That was a, just a thing I saw on Instagram Reels. What a mm. dark and disturbing place that is. It sounds it. Yeah. Bloody hell! But yeah, Sami Zayn's back. Being magnificent, honorary oos. We'll get into that later on the recon wrestling. But yeah, everything he's done has added more life to the Roman Reigns experience. Yeah, it's been mm. quality. Really good. Mm. Hall of Fame worthy. Oh yes. We'll see, won't we? Yeah, it's winning. Who are we kidding? Uh, Jack, what do you think? Uh, my pick is just to address, like, when something's when something's become a joke about you, just try and own it. So I'm going to try by nominating Chalky Muffins, and now I can give background to the whole Chalky Muffins oh. situation. For some reason upstairs, it's become, like, funny just yesterday. Tom started it immediately after he got back from holiday. I was having a chocolate muffin in the office, and then Tom started going, you love a Chalky Muffin, don't you? And then Fraser was like, he does love a Chalky Muffin. And then... Now everyone upstairs is just ripping me for loving chocolate muffins, but they're all saying chalky muffins. Um, I'm going to nominate them because I do like them, and that's fine. I didn't have a Hall of Fame pick this week. You're not going to be like a Sean Ross Sab and be like, yes, I do like chalky muffins. <laughs> Why? Tweet, quote, tweet. They all find it really funny, and they all say like, ooh, we're having a chalky muffin, and then they all fall about laughing. Um, I was very. I was in late yesterday, and I was I was caught in the crossfire of the chalky muff, muffins. <laughs> <laughs> There's an image. Um, so I was very confused, and I still don't quite understand it. But there we go. Not me neither. <laughs> They're all going ooh, and then someone, for example, I think it was Alex Winters from one of the Triple Jump editors, photoshopped that woman's leg tattoo of Jeffrey Darwin that we were just talking about. But instead of holding an organ, it's me holding a chalky muffin. <laughs> So, oh god, do we have that? No, that no. But, well, maybe, but then there's a double. If I find it, there's a double because I put I put a, a photo of myself through like a, a cartoon AI generated thing, and yeah. I came out looking like a character from a game you're playing currently, Disco Elysium. Oh, I'll show you if I can find that, the. That could be a very bad thing. It's not the most flattering image of no. me I've ever seen. Um, uh, oh, I'm man. ready for this. I'll send this to Dan afterwards. Oh, I can't find the tattoo one, but I can find the image itself. <laughs> I do, I do, I think I do. Right, anyway, Dan, I'll send you that when after this. Cheers. Chalky muffins. I like them. There's nothing wrong with that. Any particular uh, brand? Greg's. Oh. I mean, come on. Costco have a nice chalky muffin. I've never tried the Costco one. I just want to get them in bulk. 
Oh. Yeah. Uh, come in like You'll have to in the these climate. Yeah, true. Yeah. You having a daily muffin from Greg? Sorry, no, not big daily. spender. No, no, God. All right. No. Quite calorific. Uh, yeah. Chocolate muffins are renowned for them. Lovely gooey center as well. Love them. Love them. Mm. Ronnie Coleman's, and all, they, they stand proud on their chocky yeah. muffins and their calories. I, I don't know why oh. chocky has caught on so much. <laughs> Apparently that's like how I talk and stuff. Like, ooh, silly willy and all that sort of nonsense. But it's just Tom's a monster. He's yeah. first day back in <laughs> and he's made me a figure of fun. Thinks he's Bertie Big Bollocks now with his, you know, his ring givings and all that. Yeah. Oh, it's no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Oh, I saw him. He walk around like the the Russian pirate meme, just uh, uh, big grin. <laughs> Good tan though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He looks gorgeous. He's ready for his W debut. Yeah. I, caught, I caught a glimpse of his chest, and oh, it's a lovely shade of pink. Oh, <laughs> like a seared steak. Oh, now we're talking. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Munchy, munchy. <laughs> uh, wow. So, just any chocolate muffin then? Um. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Great. But then anybody. Stand proud. But then someone's like, someone got in from Tesco and went like, they everyone's just using it as like easy, like low hanging fruit. They're going like, only blueberry muffins in Tesco, Jack. And everyone went, oh, I like blueberry muffins as well. <laughs> it's literally been back in school, isn't it? You yeah. do one thing. And then that's your nickname for like thirty years. Oh, look at it! It's hat wanker. <laughs> We have a couple of things like at home, one lad's called bacon because one lad licked him in year four or five or something tasted <laughs> bacon. <laughs> and then there's another lad who... Why is the one who got licked the one who's been... He's called, he's called bacon. Yeah, he's been called bacon, bacon. Well, yeah. But surely the one who did the licking should be the one who gets No, mocked. that's not how it works. All right, well, okay. The guy Don't tastes like bacon, okay. One sauce is very... It's like right. Ross that report. Yeah, so he's bacon. <laughs> is he still bacon now? Yeah, he's still bacon now, yeah. Never changed. The other guy was called Coffee because guy was just one day was like, I don't like coffee, so I'm going to call you Coffee because I don't like you. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, yeah. that's Iron Sheik levels of Good wow. Yeah. yeah. Right then, what's your Hall of Fame nomination? Mine, I can't remember. I'm thinking of is a uh, some, some kid licking another kid. Good job, bacon. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I'm a Dean. Oh, yes. Um, again, we love on planet hell, uh, also known as England right now. So it's <laughs> very few times we get to appreciate, you know, just how crazy current life is with everything going on. Um, not only is the pound sudden fallen, but uh, we also get reports like this where Jeremy Corbyn was seen playing a Doom mod. Yes, they are still making mods for Doom, believe it or not. Where you have to kill Thatcher. <laughs> Uh, I hope he succeeded. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was just seen on this roadshow. I remember this being advertised, like the then boss of this game has been Thatcher reanimated, I guess, as this evil hell version of... Well, that's just her, isn't it? Um, but they have been dragging it around as an arcade cabinet, which is weird because Doom wasn't an arcade game, but that doesn't matter. Oh. And I don't know what he's doing there, but I thought maybe they just said, hey, do you play a video game where you kill Thatcher? And I was yeah, I'll be there. But there he is. Did he know that this mod was a Thatcher mod? Has he been tricked? Uh, I'm I pretty... The, the game's called Thatcher's Tech Base. Oh. <laughs> what is no Thatcher? illusions, Dan? There. Could you possibly Google what Thatcher looks like in this thing? Whatever. You just Google Thatcher, Thatcher's Tech Base. Thatcher Doom might bring up too many results. <laughs> <laughs> Thatcher, Thatcher in hell. Like. Did we all have jelly and ice cream the day she died? Because I did. I don't know. Oh, I, I, I had a chalky muffin. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> here's a nice interpretation of. Oh uh, my god! It's, <laughs> <laughs> pretty like <lifelike, laughs> really. An uncanny resemblance. <laughs> and again, that by itself was like, oh, okay, I'll play that when it comes out. But then it's like Jeremy Corbyn played it. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, why not? You gotta take the, the little victories where you can. He's not going to be prime minister now, so he might as well. Yeah, yeah, he's the gosh, on it. Uh, did you see? He also was. Uh, a thing went viral of an interview he did where he's an Arsenal fan. So is Piers Morgan. Oh, and he was, a, he was, a, Sorry. that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Another disgusting oh. team. No. Oh, carry on, carry on. Um, and he was at some event with then Arsenal right back Hector Bellerin and was talking to him. But then Piers Morgan got really jealous and tried to like interrupt their conversation and talk to Hector Bellerin instead. And um, apparently, Jeremy Corbyn and Hector just started speaking Spanish so Piers couldn't understand. <laughs> I have not seen that. That Fantastic. sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Go. So yeah, that's uh, Jeremy Corbyn playing a game where you have to kill Thatcher or re-kill Thatcher, whatever. I'm looking into that. Margaret, uh, not Timothy. Wrestling podcast. Oh, 
Or Mark. Do you remember when, <laughs> you remember when they brought out that Thatcher t-shirt for Timothy Thatcher? <laughs> just had like... It was, was it? I think it might have been when he was doing like a UK thing or something, but it was just Thatcher in like a Union Jack thing or something like that. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. I don't remember that for, for a good reason. I think I hit my head mm. very slightly with a small hammer. So I have to remember that. <laughs> yeah, because I remember every time he'd come out and get cheered, and I go, "Oh, Thatcher looked great today." It was like that's the first time some of the no, I've said something good about it. every single time you tweet yeah. anything about him. But anyway, we're digressing. Those are three great picks. One is Sami Zayn, honorary Us, or just Sami Zayn in general. That one, that 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 stroke of that character, that stroke of that character. <laughs> uh, Chucky muffins, Chucky muffins, yeah, of course. And Jeremy Corbyn playing a game. We have to kill Robo Thatcher. Fair enough. Yay. Or Mecca Thatcher, whatever. I'm not getting the semantics of it. But those are three great picks that you can vote for, and you can vote for alone by going to patreoncom forward slash Coldaholic. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, hello, you. Just seen a controversial tweet from a member of the Cultaholic team. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. It's uh, Merseyside's own Jack Atkins. Oh, phew. Says, okay. right, someone go to Chew's Chippy in Toxteth. Get one of everything and bring it up to Newcastle. These effing mugs know F all about good chippies, and I, for one, am sick well, Do you of want them. to know why this has become come to light? Because upstairs, he revealed that in Liverpool and nowhere else in this fine land that we call England, um, they have joined... Fish and chip shop in Chinese is not separate shops. So if you go for a battered fish or some battered sausages, you also go to a place that serves Chinese food. I would argue they're two different delicacies and yep. they deserve their own place. If I'm getting a Chinese, I like the saltiness of a Chinese. Exactly. I like the saltiness of a fish and chips. It's a different type of saltiness. It's a different, yeah. Mm. It is a different. <laughs> it is a different, yeah. So suck on that jargons with your weird scouse ways. Where class at fish and chips up here? He lives Ashton. In Ashton metaphorically pulled his pants down upstairs. Oh, what happened? Hopefully she just shouted at him how ridiculous the concept of a, is of a joint fish shouted and chip. Shouted at him. <laughs> she literally did. Of a joint <laughs> fish and chip and Chinese place. Scary lady sometimes. Ah, uh, it's terrifying. <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> Thank you for that. Just like Roman Reigns in many respects. <laughs> oh. The, uh, the tribal chief of upstairs. Just the volume control. Ashton. Sometimes she's quiet and then sometimes she's loud and it... it whoa. It Rather is gravitas. mental. Wait, did... We, did did I should do that thing of Royal Rage that always gets put on Twitter? She's thinking about like cottage, uh, cotton chips. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just with that gravel as well. Yeah. <laughs> this week in wrestling, SmackDown, the Invisible Man strikes again. You'll get, you'll, okay. When we reach that segment. The Bloodline opened the show. Paul Heyman explains that Solo Sokoa was sent by the elders. However, Roman says that Solo answers to him now, and Solo acknowledges him. Mm. Yeah. They go to leave, but Sami Zayn makes them wait and wants to publicly express his gratitude. Roman doesn't seem happy and wants Sami to take off that, his bloodline shirt, which Jay's like, yes, <laughs> yes, rips that shirt off. <laughs> Roman explains he never wants to see Sami wear that shirt ever again because he's got him a brand new one. Hooray! <laughs> so good. And what did he, was it Jay Uso look like, Ross? He looked like he could have spewed. <laughs> he literally could have vomited in that ring if he wanted to. His, he deserves an Oscar for his performance in that segment for both the happiness and the sheer dejection of yeah. Sammy getting officially inducted into the bloodline. So great. It's, like, it's so great. If you, if your kids don't want to like read Othello, just just watch watch SmackDown. Aye, yeah. yeah. I don't want to read Othello. I'll just watch SmackDown. It's I'm a grown good, man. Good play. Do what you want? Good. Uh, but yeah, one of Shakespeare's better tragedies. I agree. And this <laughs> was definitely one of the Reese's best tragedies because. Once we just said this before in the Hall of Fame segment, my God, everyone's just playing their part so well. Yep, mm. could li literally couldn't be any better as as we're sat here right now. Um, and the faith is there. The Triple H will see it through to its natural conclusion yeah. of mm. Sami Zayn becoming the oh. woo <laughs> beating Roman Reigns. I would love it if it happened, <laughs> but I just don't quite know. He's gonna he's gonna put the belt on Scar on the way out. It's gonna fall <laughs> off. He's gonna, so vigorously. They're gonna do something horrible to Sami Zayn when it. All goes wrong, and that's gonna be excellent. Yeah. yeah. Or they're gonna kick Jay out. <laughs> he just burns down Titan Towers. Yeah. Why can't you be more like your your fellow Oos, Sammy? It's yeah, so dog. Good. Why can't you be like, like that? One of my favorite bits is the friendship between Sammy and Jimmy. Oh, so great. The handshake and the fact that Sammy copies things that he says like yeet and stuff like that. <laughs> I tell you what, though, if in in the wrong hands, like the 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 being sent by the elders in the wrestling would come off really naff. Mm. But it, it, I don't know what it was, but it just added to it. Who were the elders? His dad and his uncle. Yeah, the Wild Samoans and Rikishi. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's great. They're saying all the stuff like the elders, the prophecy and stuff like that. Yeah, it but fits, doesn't it? They, they, yeah, it does fit because there have been the oldie Samoans Fair enough. since wrestling began. I think mm. since the Big Bang. Well, once the Big Bang was too small, head each people, other. <laughs> people think that maybe if Roman gets too big for his boots, then the, the elders will send another certain Samoans and deal with him. Oh, the Rock. That's yeah, good. I got it's it. Good. I got it. Thank you for explaining. The head shrinker. <laughs> yeah, his face, Jimmy. No, Jim. Just Tom. Keith. Tom. Yeah. Keith. Tom. Just shrinker. say any name. You're probably right. Yeah, um, loads of them. It's it's interesting. One the one thing I want ironed out because we're still not quite sure yet. Because for the, for a while there, Roman was merely humouring Sammy because Sammy was doing good things for him. Is Roman still humouring Sammy, or is he actually like uh, affectionate towards him? Mm, I think that's a detail we'll find out more this week. Mm. <laughs> Keep on watching, won't we? <laughs> Liv Morgan beats Lacey Evans. Uh, but it's not just a normal match. It's a match where she's proven how hardcore she is yeah. because afterwards she beats up Lacey with a kendo stick because chairs don't exist and jumps off the ring post to put her through a table. That was a very impressive spot. Mm. Oh my God. Off the ring post. Bing, bang, bong. Mm. Sing, sang, song. <laughs> Ding, dang, dong. Hello. UK hun. You know what I mean? Mm. Does this mean she's got a chance against Ronda? Or of is it course just... not, Jack. <laughs> I reckon she does. I reckon, I think this narrative they're pushing on the wrestling's wrong me. I think in a straight up shoot fight, She's got no chance. But when weapons are in play, or as ties, as Vic Joseph likes to call them on NXT, oh, they've got the tires out. Uh, <laughs> New I York's... like to play with my toys as well, but no, Wade, no. Right up my ass. But I reckon with the toys in play, she's got more of a, more of a fighting chance in this yeah. match. Yes. yes it's it's the human those. game of chess. <laughs> But I, said, I thought Lacey Evans looked really good in this match. Her offense looked tight. A couple of takedowns, a big boot, mm. like where Liv was sort of running towards her. Although I think it was a wise decision to put whatever the story they had going on with Lacey on the back burner for now. Yeah, There's yeah. time to refine that later on. Yeah, the, the, they've got the people underneath here to make the ones at top look good. And by that, I mean Liv and Ronda. Yeah. More That's turns it. than Travis. Travis? I don't get that. The band. A song called Turn, isn't it? It's just turned about a million times. Oh. Hey, turn, 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 oh. turn, turn. There's so turn, much of Travis's back catalogue of songs being mammal in the background. Turn, so many turn, shades of beige. Yeah, that's trying to get out of my head. The I Invisible like, Band, I wish they were. I, li I like Why Does It Always Rain on Me, though. It's a good song. Because you lied when you were 17. Know, 17. He sings like he's just woken up. Uh, <laughs> Throughout the night, we see Hit Row hosting a watch party backstage. Yeah, Los Lotharios, double L, arrived to try and flirt with B-Fab, mm. but Hit Row tell them to get out. Later, they come back and attack Top Dollar and Ashante before running off. Yeah. I reckon it's very good that Top Dollar, nobody hotter, whatever the saying is, was a former Uber driver, because I reckon he's seen this a fair few times. <laughs> lad, and, <laughs> lad and lass in the back of the car, but lad's gagging for it, but the lass really isn't on board, but she's going to humor him. She just fancies a quick old shag, you know? And then things get a bit too uncomfortable. Top Dollar, nobody hotter has to step in there. Oh, I, that, that's good. That's good ass assessment, Ross. But I thought you said top dollar be used to it. I thought it meant people running off. Not paying. <laughs> we can't do it with a new no, 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 no. no. <laughs> The guy runs off again. Oh, I've already paid. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days, though, weren't they? When you had to pay with cash and just try and scarper over the fences. And you, far away. Use, you go in and you hear the clunk, clunk of the <laughs> doors being locked. Okay. <laughs> I had a, uh, an Uber driver recently explain to me the rating system for customers. Oh, yeah, yeah. What is yours? Down should, there. Should we tell everyone what Uber ratings, everybody? Okay. Oh, oh, come this on. This is the big one. Oh, my God. Wait, this wait. Is terrifying. But what would they be in Tokyo Dome? Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll cut that out of the way. One second. Oh, right. this is exciting. Oh, man. Oh, would Top loading. Dollar pick us up? Oh. Loading. Yeah. What do you got on account? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll go in first. Uh, oh. Matthew, 4.83. Oh, you naughty boy. Ross is a 4.91. <laughs> oh. I'm also a 4.91. <gasps> What could it mean? What did I do? 4.91. 4.91. Oh, we're all good, but what do you do in the back of an Uber, you scoundrel? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember, so it must be good. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. How have you Top got a 4.91 after a certain episode happened? Was that not on your account? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my fault. <laughs> nah, you and Snitsky, what happened? It was um, the summer of 2020. I, <laughs> I don't know if you'd want me to tell the story. <laughs> Oh, if it's about someone else, then no. If it's about you, sorry. Well, we don't have to name who was involved. Someone, someone I know <laughs> <laughs> spewed in the back of a taxi. It was a taxi, not an Uber. Oh, was it? Oh, uh, and, uh, oh that's why. But oh. the bloke didn't realise until she'd got out, and then we were all having a. She after didn't realise. Quietly say, like, 
I don't understand. They I think, I think a couple of the lads from the office were in the same taxi as her uh, and like kind oh, of well, distracted. Oh, yeah. okay. And then uh, bait and switch. came back to the after party or whatever. We'd been like out for drinks and then carried it on in the flat. And then the taxi came back and he was aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> so I he put his like supervisor onto me and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll pay for the... And she's paid me back since because it was oh, a okay, spew. Okay. But um, yeah, he... And then she said, yeah, just give him 80 quid. And luckily, I did have 80 quid on me, which I'd never have cash, but I did. And I was like, wow, I think it had just been like my birthday. I don't know. No, it hadn't. Anyway, I, I had 80 quid or like some other people, we all chipped in. And then everyone's got the money since that they were owed, but paid him 80 quid. And he was saying, that's not enough. But his last on the, in the office had said, no, 80 quid's the going rate for that. And then he wouldn't accept it. So I shouted at him until he left. Oh, well done. But I felt awful because... Just shout at a dude to pay you, mate. Take my money. Like... <laughs> yeah, and then... But I wasn't even in that taxi, so I, I, he was being rude to me, and I was Oh, like, so it wasn't even the taxi you were we in got at the time? Two, we got two separate taxis oh. back, and I was in the clean one. <laughs> oh. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then the next morning, she realized she left her phone in the taxi, and then had to go... He, he refused to bring it and handed it into the police station instead. Yeah. <laughs> so she had to go to the police station to get her phone. I love a drunk Uber ride, mate. <laughs> I get really confident, just compliment their driving nonstop. Like, that's a great turn, that. I love how soft your seats are. Were you, <laughs> it was, were, you, were you in that one with me? I remember just being sat in this, the front of this big 4x4 four four Skoda, and the guy was driving, just minding his own business. I was just like, this car is so nice. Thank you so much for picking Aww. us up. 4.91 rating. Has anyone ever had the local radio, the local Uber driver who's like DJ Uber? Yeah. yeah DJ, Uber. Uber. DJ Uber. There's a video on Ben's uh, Twitter. Ben's Adam as well. Yeah. He just asks what music you like, and regardless of what you say, he puts on a genre of dance music, <laughs> and he's got like, -na 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 -na. you have ball. arrived at your destination. It's got oh, light, lights that flash yeah. in the car, like oh, you're okay. in a club here. Yeah. Ray Vaughn. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right, sorry, but the rest This was uh... a very Vince McMahon segment, I thought, <laughs> with the uh, top dollar and that in the, in the, in the whatever oh, yeah. lounge this is, because it was like, let the crazy foreigner make the Americans laugh. Nakamura was there being slightly eccentric in the corner. That's what I've written I'm down ridiculous. Only the Brits could be mildly eccentric on American TV. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was a better way, because it was all like bleeding towards uh, Otis and Braun for a long period. And I thought there was a better way to maybe demonstrate that Braun versus Otis is a big deal and a monitor sellout, brother, brothers. Mm. Aye. Mm. I can't I wait for Hit Row versus LLLL mm. over the fair hand of Brianna Brandy. That's a shoot name. Is um, it? BFAB. Mm. Mm. <laughs> You all the scoops. Aye. Ah, you know her. Yeah, you like Hagen Das. Mm. Uh, backstage, Sami Zayn is mocked by <laughs> Ricochet and Madcap Moss. <laughs> well, I mean, if those two are making fun of you, you're probably on the right. Uh, Solo Sokoa arrives and beats them both up in defense of Sami. And it was just pointed out to me uh, by lots of people, Ricochet took the, takes the final bump himself. The Invisible Man strikes again. John Cena was there. Da, 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 da. Ricochet criticizing oh, anyone's like character. I've called a flex but it might be something else. A flex is you know, a, a brag. Yeah. Just delusional ballocks, isn't it? Delusional. Well, it's, a, it's a weird flex. Yeah. But okay. He's got an A character, has he? Good at doing the flips. He does. Cocky man. Cocky baby face man. <laughs> that sounds like wrestling, doesn't it? Someone someone mocking somebody for having a, half a bad thing where they don't have one themselves. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, that's <laughs> us. Uh, but Reddit Moss, yeah. though, saying that someone's changed when they used to be like obnoxious and unbearable and stuff. And I was like, oh, you used to speak, speak about yourself there, aren't mm. you, son? Mm. Aren't you, son? You've forgotten what happened, haven't you? Well, Happy Corbin, who is who might be the White Rabbit Man. No, oh, that would be funny. Corbin Kent, was it Corbin Kentucky? Corbin. Oh yeah, the town was Corbin Kentucky, or Corbin Kansas, oh. or something. But it had a White Rabbit Records in the town and something else, and then that record shop's YouTube account put up a different clue, and it it's all got very Trent Reznor. Like, I, I wow. don't know, yeah, I know. Yeah, Triple H has really been. Loving this. These know. real life treasure hunts are very impressive. But are I'm, I'm glad when other people do them for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Saves a lot of time. Uh, M, -M, 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 M M take on the new day. Maxine du to who? Dupree. Dupree. That's right. Takes photos at ringside, which distracts the models who lose to roll up from Xavier Woods. <gasps> Max is furious and storms off oh. without the rest of the crew. <laughs> What's he gonna it's all about changing characters? Yeah. What, I mean, it's, it's happening, isn't it? Shoes of a champion. My God. Oh wait. He's not gonna be the bunny, is it? Like, <laughs> oh, so. oh yes! What a swerve! 
<laughs> just him in his normal gear, but with bunny hat. Yeah. Rabbit. It doesn't change anything about it. Yeah, let me talk. To- oh, it'd be fantastic. Yeah, These rabbit, shoes- rabbit, rabbit. These shoes are made of pure rabbit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the shoes of a champion? You told me about it last time, mm, but I haven't seen it. So good. It does sound good. Look at these shoes. Shoes of a champion. Look at this jacket. Shoes of a champion. champion. <laughs> he's so crazy. I love how he gets out of it, though. He's like, oh, did yeah. I say shoes? And then he just... Yeah! Goes, yeah. <laughs> That's when you're good. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, though. The Sultan of Suave was looking like a young Rico Constantino during this match. I don't oh. know if anyone's picked up on that. Was he ever young? He started when he was 40. <laughs> <laughs> God, he was old. <laughs> and a lovely Harley race high knee from the height of fashion Marseille to Kofi mm. was another highlight of this match. <laughs> a Harley race-esque high knee. Yeah, nice. like Marseille. That sentence sounded like you were like a WWE approved reviewer of the show. <laughs> got the I, nickname I, in yeah, there. I can hear the chorus. Yeah. Wow, a Harley race-esque from high the, knee. From the, Sultan, from the height of fashion. El Dangua. <laughs> <laughs> The ring is reinforced for the big match. A right touch that was. The, yeah. the ring being reinforced. Mm. I, 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 like brawn. Because they said the ring has been reinforced. No one. All right. It was men good. That. That's what you say. It's like, it's like, yeah. But they actually, yeah, they actually showed it. Oh, all right. Between Braun Strowman and Otis, Braun wins. And this was the viewing. Uh, I've started that sentence horribly. Lots of people watch this match. That's yeah, what yeah, it is you're saying. Salo the monitor, brother, brother. Yeah. Drinking on the job, brother, brother, watching the other big meaty lads slap each other's meat. Mm. Brother, brother. It's the living the dream, these wrestlers, aren't they? If you're big E, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, Braun wins, which was expected. But again, you need someone to look good. They've been away for a while. All this is coming back. Yeah, Alpha Academy. Mm. Oh, that, the, the, it's too much now, though, Matthew. It's every show they're making other people. Well, they're having other people beat them, but they're mm. also looking impressive while losing. Mm. We need to have them win. I'm convinced after this week's role, which we'll get onto later, obviously, that Chad Gable's never going to win a match again. But yeah. I'll tell you why later on. It's weird they're doing it twice in one week. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you know what? I was all right with this. Big bad Braun Strowman getting nice pops. Otis, God, he's good. Mm. They're taking big bumps like he does. Being his size, right. fantastic. The pounce on the announcers, the announcers table and the power bomb, fantastic. Uh, Otis's discus clothesline after running two ropes or two sets of ropes. Boing, boing, boom. Fantastic. I can't remember that spot. That's what yeah, he calls it. It was good. The footwork. Oh, he's going for the boing, boing, boom. The boing, boing, <laughs> His footwork was in, in, impeccable. Mm. That's also what the DJ Uber does. He presses <laughs> the button on the right. Uh, Drew McIntyre cuts a promo announcing a strap match between himself and Karrion Cross. Extreme Rules. So Karrion Cross, I guess, can't run away uh, in fear of hearing another boring promo. Has he Drew run Mc... away, though? It's it's a bit forced, but it's Extreme Rules. We're used to this. Yeah. Lots of people have been very happy about all the gimmicks are coming back. Oh, yeah. I'm like, Oh, I am. Oh, it should be. Like, you should oh, yeah. just. Normally, it's really forced like this. The first match is a strap match, is it? That's fine. Okay. That's I like, I tell, yeah, mm. I, like, I like, you know, different gimmicks, but the reasoning for this one, Karrion Cross hasn't been doing a Sami Zayn, for example, of a few months no, ago no. when he was running away from uh, Drew really? McIntyre. Yeah, it was true. Yeah. Yeah, 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 running away through the crowd. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, Scarlett makes her entrance to distract Drew while Cross attacks from behind. But it doesn't work, and Drew beats him up with a strap. That's a good way to get us excited for this. Scarlet then throws a, vi- a fireball in the vague direction of Drew's face, which Drew just goes, oh, that didn't oh. work, did it? Oh. And then Cross, she's like, get him. <laughs> and so Cross recovers and brawls. And the brawl continues, and Scarlet hits a low blow, which she does hit, allowing Cross to choke Drew out. Mm. There was something about that in the news this week about how the fireball was like a last minute purchase from B&Q or something. And that's the reason it didn't quite land or something like that. Something like along those lines in the news. It didn't it, work because it was crap. It, right, cool. It at least could have feasibly been a distraction. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like the Hogan one. Oh, man. Oh. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a shoot, brother, brother. You know, sometimes you score, sometimes you miss. Sheeran didn't score every shot he took, did he? It's about getting back up yeah, and but, taking that but, shot again. That's what life's about. Up the scarlet. Who, by the way, is a, a clair... In the words of Michael Cole, we're back to sort of a Vintism here. The clairvoyant, mystic and cunning Scarlet. <laughs> clairvoyant? She didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh, my God. She's got Apollo Crews' gimmick. Oh, yeah. Everyone, oh, everyone's got that gimmick apart from him. This week was class for yeah, Apollo Crews. I can't wait to see where we're going here because Grayson Waller's going to get... It reminds me of Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh. He's going to get pumped full of drugs, it looks like. Those red eyes, let me tell you. Um, but Lucky him. Jew as well said he doesn't like playing games so soon after what we saw at the castle very strange comment oh well, yeah that was a strange. song not a game yeah. <laughs> how dare you uh, Raquel Rodriguez beats Dakota Kai after Shotzi arrives to stop damage control from interfering they have a bit of a weird brawl afterwards and the faces stand tall a weird brawl uh, yeah uh, double R looking good as well she yeah, has yeah. two emotions she has smiling and not smiling 
This week was not smiling. She's good, but she's not smiling. Yeah, really, yeah. But the reverse, she did like the reverse lap with us. Dakota goes for the scorpion kick. Yeah, and she just grabs the leg and just goes, Wah! lifts her up by the that defies physics. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I'm not. Uh, we need more. We need packages about Shotzi being a good person again. Yeah, it's falling a bit I don't flat. know yet why that's happened. Yeah, yeah. Also, welcome to the ball pit. That's it. Yeah. The brawl was a bit bad. I she just sort of pushed here, didn't she? And then just that was it. It was like everyone, <laughs> everyone just couldn't remember how to hit each other. Yeah, I thought they were expecting like Shotzi to be like, well, okay, here's, here's the ball ball pit brawler, and she was just like, hi. Yeah, but she's in kayfabe. Shotzi's really strong. Everyone runs away. Yeah, she's holding off all three. Fair enough. Now it's your knees, which apparently, according to SRS, mm. uh, they've taken the TV the past boo. couple of weeks, but they haven't used it. What do you mean, boo? Sorry, I just instinctively. That's, that's, that's because like... some of the people on the line might be I'm saying I'm doing boo. it. I'm controlling the thing you're going to say. Uh, Jack's controlling a forklift, but she's got a tank backstage. That was a tank. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you... Tank controls. Like Resident <laughs> Evil. I thought a tank was more like... Wah, wah. I think it's two levers and you... That's left. Sorry, that's right. That's oh. left, forwards. But Dan's uh... nodding. You've been to Diggerland. We all have. <laughs> yeah, you got tanks there. Well, <laughs> oh, I can't have had them. God, I used to be a dab ad on the forklift. Like, I used to work at a granary back in the summer of 2010. Oh, yeah, yeah. Long days <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> when was this? Like? Summer of 2010. All oh, right. Just after I finished high school, working yeah. at a granary. Oh. Northeast Grains in Longhurst. Lovely. Uh, I used to drive a forklift and do all the odd jobs. And certificate? Stuff. No. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a little tiny one. Used to carry like big jugs of water and that. Was it? Was it right next to the red and yellow car you in see kids have? <laughs> for some reason, when you said as he got his fork lift, I was like, <laughs> "Does he have a? He is the certificate. <laughs> he gives them out. He gives the test. I am the table. Yeah. Oh, all the good influencers say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Usos defend their tag belt against the Brawling Brutes in the main event after winning the uh, four way last week. Uh, Sami Zayn tries to interfere, but Sheamus stops him. This brings out Imperium to attack Sheamus in the midst of all the chaos that the Usos retain. Again, it wouldn't have made any sense whatsoever to change the belts, but they did about as good a job as possible to make you think, yeah. oh, hang on. It was a good. This match. would be the dumbest decision made in a while, but hang on, it may just be, oh, okay, it didn't. Yeah. So what do you think is the best compliment you can give a tag team like them? I enjoyed it. Mm. And it looks like we're going to get more carnage down the line in a good old-fashioned Donny Brook. That's been announced oh. just today, maybe? Oh, yeah, it's on uh, the Extreme Rules now, isn't it? Yeah, on yeah. The Extreme They've added Rules. a six-man tag. With uh, Donny Brook. Imperium versus The Boys. Oh. Oh. That's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Where oh. Ludwig Kaiser appears to be a young... Oh, no, his pupils are there. I couldn't see their pupils when it was little. But... Um, yeah, look at that awful render. I thought that uh, the dichotomy, the relationship of Butch and Ridge was very interesting. Because Butch was the one taking control, and mm. Ridge was getting beaten down, and then Butch was the one taking back control. Yeah. Normally, logic would dictate in the wrestling to be the other way around, because Butch is a fridge. Uh, fr uh, Ridge is a fridge. Ridge is a fridge. Butch is merely a uh, drinks fridge. Smaller. <laughs> Good. Well, not a fully fledged. Good. That was not a, a fully fledged fridge freezer just yet. I thought that was interesting. Mm. He's a mini fridge. And to sign that uh, Triple H's buy is coming back. Could that be much of the? Well, well, that'll probably be the big question that week, won't it? Someone. Oh, it's going to be up there. <clears throat> the double super kick spot has been living rent free in my head this week. Mm. I don't know why I'm speaking so dramatically, but it has. It's working. Yeah, it's like a it's like a trailer for a film. Mm. Why is that one in yellow? Because that's a potential move of the week candidate. That's how I work things out now. But highlight do you, them in yellow. Do you highlight the winning one in a different color? No, you just decide in your head. I just I get to it and I think, oof, nothing's top that. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> everything's a move of the week. I liked the, the bit when Imperium came down as well. I thought that added to the piece. Mm. Mm. And I thought the, the, the BBs, as I like to call them, the brawn brutes, are uh, winning over the crowd like shamooses as well. All three of them are doing it now. Yeah, because last week on Raw, they came out and they're like, what are you doing here? You're a SmackDown tag team. Go away. So like, uh-oh. But on SmackDown, they're like, no, we know who they are. We love mm. Sheamus. And we love the other two. Mm -hmm. we don't look, fridge is all right, I guess. But yeah, we love Butch. <laughs> oh. Butch! Yes. They've all been good recently. On I'm looking forward to the Donny Brook. Just, Danny, bro. Just hope it's not a pub rules match. Oh, I, I was <laughs> we'll, get to it. we'll get to we'll it. Ah. We're on that later on. AW Rampage, Grand Slam. Nothing's cuter than a boy and his mooter. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Sting and Darby Allen beat the House of Black thanks to the arrival of the great Muta. He missed Matthews, sending him into Julia Hart, who flies through oh, a table dear. in bracket. Sort of. Oof. Oh, it looked nasty. Uh, Finest balsa wood there to help that. Oh, uh, landing. God. Her head twatted the concrete floor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
There was so much to unpack in this match, though. I think Sting hates his entrance theme. I've worked this one out. Think so. That's multiple matches now in a row where he's just knocked in his entrance and just attacked people randomly. But I Mm. like that. (laughs) I've seen it pointed out. Uh, I can't remember who. Maybe it was like on Squared Circle or something. But someone was like, Sting should get a title shot. He never loses. He's got a great record. Anyway. Fair comment. Yeah. I thought he looked, I don't know if it was early on in the match, but he did the, there was a bit with the splashes and he looked like he was absolutely pagged. Mm. I don't know if it was like he hurt himself or something, but I was a bit worried from there. Well, and then he got pushed through a table. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> being 89 years old and doing nothing but street fights and diving off stuff will have to get out there eventually. Um, yeah, he got put through one table and then cracked the other one with his head just to push it over. Atta boy. Uh, Darby died a bunch of times like he always does that's one of my contenders for move of the week is when Buddy did the knee when he was going for the low pay Darby oh. and then Buddy cut him off with the knee proper shear at him fantastic that was good enough. oh yes Brody King as well he's got to be I wouldn't mind if he was a singles guy to mm-hmm. be it looks like he you. will be for a bit yeah well it did and it did uh, you know. Well, he's maybe. agile oh he's, yeah for a bit I guess. he's agile he's hostile and he's mobile mm. oh. <laughs> that's what I was saying like mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be the flat share of black for a while and then yeah. Oh, I just want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Flat share of sorry. <laughs> then we had the coffin drop off the entrance tunnel to the stage. The lads yep. falling off the stage. Yeah. Darby legitimately splitting his head open off the stage. Oh, that bust. looked. Joker Sting came back for a period of time when he was tied up in the chair and he's like going. Hee-hee. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about Joker's thing. God. <laughs> See, that's what Buddha says. I want Sting. I want you for the first time. No, we're team not loads of. No, Joker's thing. Oh, okay. I think you've heard of him. <laughs> Imagine if Sting did a foley. Japanese crowd. DNA. Starts DNA. To, Sting, gets his little pin thing out. Starts to, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give us a minute. You'll know him in a second. <laughs> yeah. Gets the ring. All of it coming off on his opponent. <laughs> uh. Uh. So yeah, wild and crazy match to get the crowd on fire. I think it was weird though because they had three like no holds barred styles matches on mm. one show. Uh, they've already had a show. Grand Slam. Would this baby? Be, you know how this one was two hours? Would this have been shot before Dynamite? After, like, it was afterwards. Think, yeah. Was it after? Because yeah, apparently which is so why the crowd in between. Yeah, yeah, to wait to give free Red Bull to these people. <laughs> it was because Mr. Stephen Skoda's our source of news, uh, went to the show and said it didn't end until... Just to clarify, <laughs> yeah, Stephen doesn't break. Oh, no, that was a joke. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I was doing like reading that too much. Let's not put that no, pressure sorry. on Stephen. Sorry, sorry. Stephen Skoda's message is about this one show. Yeah, yeah, it was there. It was there. Joke, joke. Sorry. My word. A million wrestlers What's around the world. What's the sale of the podcast? Yeah. Then they'll know. Um, <laughs> what did he what say? Did he, say? <laughs> he was live in Arthur Ashe, wasn't he? He's a, yeah. He's trying to get backstage going, I'm in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that it didn't end until like way past midnight wow. after oh, yeah. all the stuff. Oh. So this was a long, long show. And you could tell because the crowd noise was up mm. and down. So then after this, we got Hook and Action Bronson beating yeah. Danny Magic and Cool Hand Ange. Mm-hmm. And it is amazing to me that like wrestlers have to be, sorry, celebrities have to be at least solid in the ring now Yeah, when they do wrestling. They can't just come in and just do one spot. They like, have can to. if they want to, Tyson Fury. Uh, <laughs> but we do still talk about that as a bad example. Yeah, the, the guy you'd expect to have some thing in it. I'm sure he didn't. Ross pointed out on the news that something Action Bronson had maybe jokingly said actually turned out to be just yeah. entirely true. Is no, no bump, no bump he contract. Didn't bump once. <laughs> but that Fair didn't play. take away from the piece. I thought this was a fun bit of business. Yes, yes. And I thought Daddy Magic and Angelo were the right lads to be involved in yeah. the match here. I thought Bronson looked like a wrestler. I thought he could be described as mm. someone who looks like an army tank but with a Ferrari engine. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> I think that this week's dynamite has proven that Action Bronson is kayfabe stronger <laughs> than Brian Danielson because he took care of Daddy Magic easily, whereas he took I Brian to like that. a. Like what, 10, 15 minute match? Yeah. It's I true. Don't know, I'm not going after the combat that. Yeah, yeah I think you have a point there. This was just nice move wrestling from Hook and then Action Bronson being action y. He, he was not Hook guiding Action right? Bronson. <laughs> he was not in Action Bronson. No. So he did, his, he did a, some bits. A lovely a flushing clothesline. queen stampede. Is what? that just running in the corner? The, the, no, the power slam is what oh, they call it. Nice. The flushing queen mm. stampede. Because oh. he's from Queens. Right, 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 I thought the Flushing Queens no, was, no, a, uh, no, was no. the name of a song Dip or something. Charlotte's head in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Flushing Queens. <laughs> How's Charlotte getting on? She all Charlotte right? She's terrible in, after that. As in, oh, Char- Charlotte Flair, the queen. I thought, you meant, I thought you meant Princess Charlotte of the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> 
Get George's head in the toilet as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so yeah, this is a nice little thing. Katasha Hajime, dueling both of them, because obviously yeah. Action Bronze and Taz mm. went, I taught him that. Mm. Yes. He Just did. a nice, simple few few minutes. Uh, Samoa Joe and Wardlow, the team of War Joe, easy beats Tony Nese and Josh Woods. The tactical bastard. <laughs> yes. <Josh Woods. laughs> the, the, the nothing. <laughs> the bad guys try to do a beat down afterwards as expected and get destroyed. Mark Sterling then takes some power bombs. So what's their it, stable called? Are they part of a stable? It's just Mark Sterling. It's just Mark Sterling's lads. lads. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No wonder they're doing so bad. Ah, the Sterling. Sterling. Yes. Dropping. Uh, Wardlow, I think, hurt himself, didn't he, in this match? Was it when he did the clothesline to the tactical bastard and went over with him on, over the oh, top rope? Maybe. I think he hurt his knee, didn't he? Oh, he was meant to be limping a bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Ooh. I didn't oh. notice that because I was just too... I was surprised that the jo Joe just pinned Nice out of nowhere after like a minute Wait, and a half. Tony Nice, Nice. It's Tony Nice. Yeah. But it was good that it seemed to be <laughs> like, okay, this is over this this little bit. We've, we absolutely annihilated these two, which yeah. is exactly what should happen. Fair enough. I did enjoy the way that uh, Mark Sterling took the... Like got into got into the predicament of taking the power bombs. Mm. So obviously he twats Wardlow on the back. Or was it Joe? Whoever he twat on the back. Instead of just going, oh, run, well, let's run away. He's not turned around yet. He just goes... Oh, come on. <laughs> Very good healing. Yeah, that, yeah, I, I like Mark Stone. I liked him. And why has Wardlow gone back to his old theme? That's an interesting talking point. Because we want the old Wardlow. Do we want the old Wardlow. <laughs> He's kept his little drums at the start with the piped in Wardlow uh, chants. I don't like how Wardlow gets really turned on when he's giving people power bombs. He stops in between and like goes like, oh, yes. It reminds mm. me of uh, Quincy, Jeffrey Dahl. Quincy Elliott. Oh, <laughs> I we're going to say Quincy <laughs> Elliott. Like sensing the air around him. The only wrestler who smelled the air and it looked cool was The Rock, surely. When he took in that atmosphere on the top rope and stuff. When other people do it, it looks pervy to me. <laughs> A wrestler's so, so enamored by their own finishing move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. Poor it's like, Wardlow. I'm looking good on TV. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, Phoenix versus Jungle Boy was next. Oh, yes. What a match. Oh, yes. Uh, afterwards, he's confronted by Christian. It's just a distraction. It's Luchasaurus. Hmm. Who's, which, which side is he on this week? Ah, oh, Christian's. Uh, ambushes Jungle Boy and beats him down at the direction of Christian. I really enjoyed that bit because Christian's like, this is a direct quote, end his ass for good <laughs> right now. <laughs> A lovely choke slam, mm. perfect flat back pump. <laughs> that is it. End Career up. over. There's no coming back <laughs> from that. Safest move. After you took seen, all night. After we've seen Jungle Boy choke slammed onto metal, flaming metal, <laughs> yeah. horrible grate and stuff. <laughs> nice flat back bump in the middle <clears throat> of the ring. End him for good. <clears throat> but yeah, what a roll lovely... him up <laughs> inside cradle. La End Mar his career. Lamar Histral right now, Luchasaurus. <laughs> Yes, Jugger Boy beat it. Uh, what a fantastic match. I'd say maybe the best mm. match that happened all night. If you count Dynamite as well, because just uh, these two together. Oh, I don't know what you say about the moves they were doing. Blimey. B blimey. Yeah. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, there's a moment in the match where Jungle Boy sat on the outside, and I've never seen baby facing like this because he's he can't stand up. He's that beaten down, but he reaches out and touches a small boy's hand. Yeah, And that gives him the power to get mm. back up. That's a natural there. He's I the natural jungle boy. They have to call I, him I'm, the natural. I'm surprised they carried on this for a while. I thought they were going to leave it until Christian was better, but now maybe it's going to be Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus. That makes sense. Which, to, oh, it's, you know. I've never been so sad since the Assyrian portal broke up in Chicago. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, like that as, came out of nowhere. Like them as a tag team at the, back in the day. And they had the... Um, Instead of a coffin match, had a sarcophagus match. Yeah, they didn't work as well apart. Yeah. They used to have great matches with the colony in them. They did. Oh, man. Then with the days. But yeah. anyway, until then, though, we've got... Glad these... nothing happened to tarnish Chikara. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the office. Look at the camera awkwardly. <laughs> and then go back to this. West Side Gun, though. Get off your phone. I was about to say, they go, wow, we have hip-hop royalty watching at ringside. And they finally looked and they were... Both of them. Uh, <laughs> Get off your phone. Bored of this. Bored of this. Uh, I was going to say, even uh, Phoenix, though, was doing three Amigos tribute spots now, which I thought, yeah, you were contractually obligated to do if you were wrestling. Were they Rey better Mysterio. or worse than Logan Paul's? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you that. About the same level okay. as our Lord and Savior, the greatest wrestler of all time, Logan Paul, right now. I thought you were going to say Jericho, just to stop the thanks again, Chris, for all that you do. <laughs> just, we need to get that out there. I mean, not enough people speak about it, do they? No. Not enough. Not enough. So, so far, it's looking like a pretty good one-hour rampage. Pretty if you stopped there, maybe it would have been all right. And then part two, 
Electric Boogaloo started, and... We're going five sets, Matthew. This is a grand slam. Oh, uh, of course. Well done. Well done, Arthur Ashe, who was also on his phone watching this. <laughs> Eddie Kingston defeated Sammy Guevara, but won't let go of the stretch plum, even when security tried to stop him. The referee reverses the decision rather quickly and then awards a win to Sammy, so Kingston beats a few folk up oh. as the crowd chant BS have very been... loudly, and they cut away rather quickly from oh, this. Have you been worked? Are you cross because... He didn't win the mat. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mad, bro? You mad? You got work, bro? Yeah. Kind Fair of. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a shame that a match with so much real life heat yeah. has gone down a lot well, considering rematch. all the other crazy heat that happened mm. in AW. This could have been a main event of a rampage or a dynamite oh, by mm. itself and it was just kind of thrust here with yeah. not, not much time to do much of importance. Obviously, what they did was all right. I don't you know, know why they did the dusty finish. I don't get it. it. It wasn't that well done. When they've done it before in the past, like Shamrock and The Rock did it magnificently for like six months deal. straight. It was like, there's a big deal and you get the, you know, Sammy, like, either being helped off by, you know, the nation or whatever, or on a stretcher. Sammy? I was like, I was saying, if he was the, the Rock in the situation. Oh, right, 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 I got you, sir. He'd be like, hey, you know, a thumbs up, like, ha, ha, ha. But it was just really quickly cut away from. It's Rampage. Apparently because the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> and also because the crowd were very, very negative to this live, according yeah. to my man in the clouds, who goes well, by no name. <laughs> what, well, yeah, it should have been saved for a less cluttered night, probably, if mm. they were, were going to do this angle. But I don't think you have to do this angle, really, do you? Know, if they're going to do it, you, you know. Yeah. It's probably, it's presumably it's set up a rematch where Eddie will just win. I thought that was where they're going for, but I'm less confident now after Dynamite because well, there's. Now was there? There's no follow-up. In theory, the mm. rematch whole thing is to give both of them a win. But Sammy doesn't look good here. He got beaten up so much that he won. <laughs> yeah, and it was it the Guevara tease that he may be leaving wrestling for a while oh, and no one cared? Well, he, he, he picked his time really. It, lots of other news was going on when he did that. Yeah. yeah. No. I did like how they used the real life like fat POS line. I like I like that bit to set up the match. Mm. But then yeah, just it is it's just all too quick on Rampage. Everything is. Yeah. Apart from the opening match of the night, everything else is just too quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Jade Cargill retains the TBS title against Diamante. Oh, no, really. Oh no, but then uh, there was no reaction for Diamante. Oh no, but then or Trina who then turned no. on Diamante after having all of maybe 10 seconds on TV. And then aligned, her, <laughs> aligned herself with Jade. No. Again, I'm not being overly negative. Literally no pop. No. I've been trying to think who is the UK equivalent of Trina, but I don't know enough about Trina to decide that. We don't Samantha know. Mumba. <laughs> yeah, it's like if Samantha Mumba. <laughs> Samantha. So you've got a couple of bangers, by the way. Oh, God, yes. All right. Well, what? Show me where I belong tonight. Right. Give me mm -hmm. a reason mm -hmm. to stay. You know, it was Capaldi's cover of uh, Britney oh. Spears' Every Time. <laughs> No, Upstairs, Ross has had it on repeat. Upstairs won't believe me. It's the sound of the winter. It is the sound. If, sound if, he, if he releases that as a proper song, that is the sound of the winter. So Nus Capaldi did a cover of Britney Spears's "Every Time," and oh, Ross said it's the song that will play when England get knocked out of the World Cup. It's it's so it's so raw. Haunting. His voice has got the emotion. He's been hurt by so many beautiful women in all of his life. <laughs> I really thought that was going to be your move of the week. <laughs> it just it, it's one of those Radio 1 Live Lounge thingies which just works just got released on Monday and has put, I just mm. flicked it on because I, I like Britney Spears every time as everyone does I'm sure but he takes it to new heights he does oh. and I went <laughs> I went oh I like Lucky and then Jack Atkins went but why do those tears fall at night Jack <laughs> but you tell every time is a good ballad yes. she wrote that was the first song she wrote by herself really oh. it's probably better than anything from Harry's house <laughs> I tried to clip my neck and it didn't work. Break the news that uh, Fraser will be on next week's podcast in my place. So. Ding ding. <laughs> I'm going to come in like Tyson when he had the towel over his neck <laughs> for that rematch. Was it with Razor Ruddock when he comes in? He's all like, oh. Yeah. Razor Ruddock? Not that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Razor Ruddock. Turns out his... the two famous sports Razor, people. Razor, Razor Ruddock yeah. got his nickname from the box of Razor Ruddock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, there was we'll no... probably see that on a thriller next month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yo, true. Joe Boxing with yeah. Razor Roddick. It was an impressive catch from Jade in this match. Well, she lost her balance, but she didn't. She just went. Then... I can't remember anything. Well, that, done, that, well, that, well done, done for that... writing something about this match. Well, that's well the only thing I could write. We need proper challenges for Jade. The women's division needs serious, serious surgery in AEW. Mm. Matches like this do not. Well, if only there was a segment later on in the week that demonstrated the strength of the women's division. 
What are you What are you talking about, Jack? Hi. <laughs> I'm Sreya. <laughs> <laughs> the revolution has arrived. I'm the revolution. <laughs> I'm on page. Wins the golden ticket battle royal. <laughs> I've got a golden ticket. <laughs> yeah. Last eliminating Roosh. Mm. Paul yeah. White on the call. That's the big news from this. He's yeah, back. It certainly is. After Tony T's mm. Captain Sano. Yeah. Before this week's, well, before last mm. week's uh, Grand Slam events, he just does commentary for this one match. Well, it's nice to see him. I would like to see Captain Sano though, just laughing at these little virginins in AEW. Virgin, uh, uh, <laughs> virgin on the extreme there, Ross. <laughs> I've been, uh, I've had quite a bit of free time this week after work, so I've been going back and watching some of the best matches of the year so far. I think say Adam Sandler films. So I've got a really good picture <laughs> when it comes to the end of year awards. And I'm also going to apply for the Voices of Wrestling Match of the Year poll so I can Ooh. be a real journalism. They're good. They are good. I enjoy reading them, even if I disagree with them. I think they're structured really mm. well. Aren't they? They've but, blocked um, me on Twitter, but the website's very good. <laughs> Why have they blocked you? Because I block them. <laughs> what, who, um, who are they? What, what is this? Voices of Wrestling. That's a wrestling no, it's website. Just, sorry. Yeah. Well, and they do every year. They do a massive um, wrestler of the year, match of the year poll mm. with like two hundred matches in because they they collect the top twenty or something from loads of different wrestling folk, and I'm going to apply to uh, be part of the voting because I've looked and most of them are just like. People with blogs and stuff. So if they turn me down, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I hope both Chuck oh, and Fraser, and Fraser uh, both if, submit. It's the same match. But I've been seeking out like matches that I've not seen and stuff. I've watched oh, okay. a couple of Stardom ones, a couple of Noah ones. I've seen um, Junkus I versus uh, Desperado yet. No, I'm st- I've started from January. So. Oh, right. um, but the, uh, recently I rewatched Brian and Hangman's second match, the one that didn't go to a draw. Oh yeah, yeah. and Big Show was one of the judges. Alongside Jerry Lynn and Mark Henry. And okay. there's a really good bit where Brian takes Hangman over and he's, Hangman's all bleeding and stuff and he starts beating him up in front of the judges going, look, look. And you see Big Show go, oh, just writes a note down. <laughs> he is battering him. <laughs> anyway, that was just, I'm glad to see Big Show back. Yeah. Yes. When they started this match, though, I thought they were doing the reverse battle royal of TNA fame. Because everyone brawling, I was confused. Yeah. Everyone just brawling on the outside. It, it ruined the, like, the surprise appearances of the likes of Dalton Castle and people like that who were just sort of in the yeah. mix straight Bang away, around. which was strange. And, um, uh, Brian other, Cage was there. I was about to say, the other big surprise, <laughs> Brian Cage back in. He is actually employed. And he got an elimination, just one. Yeah. But that's good. I said, Matt does, Hardy does... try to help the private party? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, he's mm-hmm. going to get them back together. Mm-hmm. Then yeah. they're going to fly away with the eagle's nest. I um, can't, can't wait. Um, and the Satnam Singh spot was brilliant. Because Jay Lethal is no small man. He's got a massive arse. So <laughs> the fact is, that Satnam stood truck. there and caught him like he was Puppet Jack it was incredible. Well, he's, you know, he's yeah. quite yeah. short. He's got no arse on him, though. Absolutely no arse on him. I think about it. That's how, that, that's how that works. So one of those jeans stay up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... It was just a battle this. royal. It was just a battle royal. But I did like the last... Very last bit with Roosh and going for the Frankenstein. No, is Hangman Page going for Frankenstein now? And then he landed right on his head on the apron. Then he held on to the uh, the Roosh. Dead rather than eye. The, yeah, rather than the ropes or that. I thought, that was oh, a novel that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And then he won and it was like, okay, cool. He gets a shot. Yeah. I was like, well, I thought maybe I, everyone would be more happy about this than... I think that the goodwill for Hangman has skyrocketed once again since the same Punk stuff. I think Hangman's come out of that looking like quite a sympathetic figure. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll put a crowd like that. Yeah. And then... Is there anything to be said for on. this? Like, did this need... is Because I've written... I thought when I first saw like the advertisement for the match, does this need to happen when MJF basically has the same prize yeah, already? Yeah, it doesn't really. And MJF started talking what? about how he can cash in. Mm. Mm. He said, maybe I'll cash in on Dynamite this week. Mm. He's just doing so that he can choose tease. whenever. We, don't, we need the rules established. Also, did you notice that they've been calling Tony Storm the AEW Women's Champion, not the interim. <gasps> I hadn't noticed that. Interesting. Because that uh, the other person who used to hold the... the oh, sorry, who still holds the title, yeah. I guess, um, says she's injured, according mm. to Tony Storm. So what's going to happen if they just give it to Tony Storm? When was the crossover? I need that for my Wikipedia lists of title yeah. reigns that I like to read because I'm sad. What are we going to do with that then? Wait, AEW and drama. This, da, 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 da. In the interest of fairness, I did hear one commentator on this week's Dynamite use the word interim. Oh, but really? I, I can't remember oh, the context. Oh, sorry. I, no, I can't remember the context of the sentence. Okay. 
But just in case, you know, people are going, well, they cool you. Oh, I remember when it was. Uh, William Regal joined some commentary and told Taz. No, 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 no. I'm into him. No. <laughs> I, I, oh, I saw it. I saw it. I saw a bouncer and a duck. The, the, no. <laughs> yeah. so I was like, you can't stop us, Jack. <laughs> That's very good, that. Thank you. Very, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Big fan of the rimming pun. <laughs> yes. Really good. Mm. <laughs> it's like Lewis Capaldi, isn't it? See him on BBC Breakfast. I did. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you fancy a rem. <laughs> nah. Okay, uh, moving on. He he not, his, like, he just a classic miscommunication. He does not care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, why is it, who's written that? Oh, it's him. I love that he's very bright, like, oh, you've got lovely hair, you. <laughs> just being honest, you've got lovely hair. <laughs> so, yeah, I've not been to bed yet, can you tell? <laughs> ah, so then he went, okay, now we're going to put the lights off. There'll be a lights off match, and they'll come back on and have a match. And I imagine at this point, there'll be many people that, oh, get in, lights are off. Sleep. Get in the bed. <laughs> because they look tired. And that was obviously the perfect time to have Ricky Starks getting his revenge on Powerhouse Hobbs, p -p 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 Powerhouse. Again, the third no-holds-barred street fighting mm. hardcore match of the night. Hobbs got a table set up. Some fans yelled EC dub. So Hobbs told them to shut up. <laughs> I'll put that. Good. What's this going to do with EC dub, you idiot? Weapons. No, weapons were never used. Yonkers, New dub. York. Yonkers. Yonkers. Tommy Dreamer. Home. Players, yeah. Kingston that sounds like something play. Scooby would do. If you, sorry, Shaggy would do if you found a clue. Yonkers! <laughs> I, think Eddie King, nice. I think Eddie Kingston's from Yonkers as well. Oh. Yonkers. Silly name, isn't it? What's your Yonkers? <laughs> Scary like, place, though. It's like Peebles. Peebles, yes. Why'd you be for a place called Peebles? Like, have you misspelled Pebbles? No. Fraser. Microsoft Word. Very racist place, apparently, Peebles. <laughs> Uh, I liked Powerhouse Hobbs. <laughs> where, where did that come from? <laughs> Fraser. <laughs> I liked Powerhouse Hobbs working on the neck. He didn't approve of it. He wasn't like, good racist. <laughs> so, oh, if you love racism, go there. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's the tourist board. <laughs> no, so, it was about some sort of festival they do or something. He was telling me. Oh, about. the bell team. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, know, the bell team. There's one where they all ride horses around the village to keep the English away, traditionally. Uh, Fraser, what, you know what? Given what this past week, they have a just point. Like, disgraceful. <laughs> Fraser gets on a horse. Like apparently, everyone in the town gets on a horse and just like there's a big convoy that goes on for miles <laughs> of horses. With the... Keep the English away. That's fair enough. I was going to say, you know, the, maybe there's a point for that. Uh, just mow them down with a tank. Hobbs did a nice neck breaker on his thigh. <laughs> really good move. I like the bit with the belt. <laughs> yeah, that was good. This, this, <laughs> this is the delivery sometimes. <laughs> oh, really good move. Uh, the match didn't really explain to me why they had the squash match effectively no. at the pay per view. I knew that Starks was going to win this one because he was squashed. It's weird. Uh, there was a couple of moments where Hobbs looked like he had it though. The upturned, yeah. the upturned chairs in the ring. I don't horrible. know why they do that. It looked horrible. It's on you the, feel like that. The small yeah, of his back, um, and then the power slam on the chairs. Um, I don't know what else to say here. It was a good match. But... Oh, yeah, the little things, when the, the sparks when Hobbs pulled off the light fitting. Oh, oh I like, yeah, That's yeah. how it happens in real life when you get a bit yeah, drunk at right. night and then pull your lights off the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in a taxi. <laughs> oh. uh, I like that they... Hobbs whipped Ricky with Justin Roberts' belt. Mm. Watch out, pal. Last time someone grabbed one of, no, something no, off no, him, no. he got released. No, no. Oh, right, okay. Next, I, thought it was going somewhere, I thought it was going somewhere sexual. I'm just going to be honest. Fine. No, no, no. It is incredible. the last comment. It, that's, that's your, that's on you. There was another spot this week in some of the rest. Was it in AEW as well? Or was it on Raw or SmackDown? I can't remember where. Go on. Someone else ripped off a belt and used it. It's incredible Ooh. how quickly the wrestlers can go. It's like Joey Tribbiani with a bra. The bra. It falls off. <laughs> There's been... Uh... <laughs> It's a good podcast. There's been, of... <laughs> <laughs> been a lot of friends on recently. I've seen a lot of friends recently and I'm like... All right. right. Friends is all right. My girlfriend loves friends. It's like a comfort show. No. But she's seen it so many times. I'm like, oh, no. I, I like the occasional friends, but I, I, I've not got the. Do you like friends? I don't mind friends. I was you literally like, going to turn like friends. I was going to turn to you, Ross, and goes, it'd be great if there's actually no point to this. And this is all he's saying. And he's That's actually. That's basically it, yeah. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> well, I, I just want to gauge everyone else's. <laughs> I don't mind friends. <laughs> just. There's like, in one episode, you know, Joey gives him a neck break stop, on two chairs stop, or something. I thought it was going to be like that. Stop being mean. It, it was, was good. Do you like friends? Good for you when you were a teenager. Because like, you just learn, you just don't want to be like Ross. Just he's an arsehole, isn't he? 
Grade one arsehole. I haven't seen it since I watched it as a kid, and I liked him. So is he, oh, is he no. an arsehole? Oh, one of them. Oh, no. no, no, no. Oh, don't. He, he, he's, he's very manipulative. He's always the victim. You're going to get he's... booted out the CTC with uh, chatter like that, Matthew. The cool Twitter club. Mm, you bought who, your words Who there. else is in the CTC? I don't know. You and all them accounts. You and all them accounts. That... <laughs> Some cartoon that I don't recognize as the profile picture. <laughs> The CTC will not approve of Ross Ooh. Geller. Oh, no. <laughs> I enjoy this. Oh, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Just asking for trouble. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, we but, left ourselves out there. But... Monday Night Raw was next. Whoa, that's a, where, Rampage where, was exhausting. Go on. We're Jack. actually ahead, me and Ross, of the of the CTC uh, in terms of the recent trend in wrestling, though, because we've already acknowledged that WWE is now pipping AEW, whereas I think a lot of the CTC are still... Trying to pretend that WWE is worse than AEW currently. We're ahead of the grade. Grade. Ahead of the grade. We're, We're not dead. <laughs> I think death is irreversible and she's trapped. <laughs> That's so great. Weird that, wasn't it? Isn't it great? <laughs> right, anyway. God bless whoever did that. Had the hurt, you know, go, <laughs> bum, 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 let me out. Um, raw, go, Ms. Force, go. I love that. Banker Belair opens a show with a promo. There's in order to buy Bailey, who wants a ladder match at Extreme Rules. Belair accepts before beating Io Sky in a nice singles match. Is this a tactical misstep from Bailey? Who's better at a ladder match, her or Bianca Belair? Because Bianca's best at everything. Well, to your point, Jack, yeah. I would argue that Bianca has had a t- tactical misstep. Here. Okay. Because she, her entire promo is about fighting battles against all of the damaged control. Mm. They're still going to be there in the midst of a ladder match. Why was this not booked as a hell in a cell or something like that? Well, I know the, the pay per view isn't until when uh, Is it still page? It's normally October, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, did, sometimes it gets moved to the summer. Oh. Yeah, they've been shuffling oh, stuff around. Oh, it was around. Cody this year, wasn't it? Oh, was Seth and Cody, was, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've had it. Tit fell off, didn't it? <laughs> That's right. That uh, happens. Yeah. They get to his age. So, yeah, you're right. Why wouldn't you not have a match that keeps the bad people out? Fight pit. Two of them yeah, on the same two night. Two fight pits. So everyone wants. Or the same. ball pit. <laughs> match. Or a ball pit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 24-7 yeah. time. Did shot, shot you block out? I thought you... Black art. Black art. What did I call her? Block art. Block art. That's Teddy Long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Thank you for saving me. I thought Bailey was cutting a baby face promo in this segment, though, saying, like, it's her life. And she was dressed like Freddie Mercury mm. as well, and you can't hate someone dressed like that. You think Bailey's going to win? You can't have the Seth Rollins. I wouldn't mind I'll it. Either. I wouldn't mind it. I don't doubt that Bianca is one of the newer stars of the women's division, and she's fantastic. But for the storyline, I want Bailey to win. The mm. chase is always better, isn't it, with the yeah. baby face? I tell you, it was lucky that Eo Sky would, had a all, gear on. Oh, lads. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. That was so weird. I don't know why I did I'm that. I'm just remembering I got a chocky muffin in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on, Jack. What were you if expressing? If Bailey wins, right, and then Sasha came back to challenge her, I would be oh, delighted. Oh, snap. Exactly. That's what, that's what I thought. Who? That's why I got... Who? I tied that name in, in, in Twitter and nothing thingy. came up. Mercedes. Oh, her. The Colonel's daughter from GTA Vice City. Was her name Mercedes Bernardo? No, just Mercedes, something oh. else. But, um... <laughs> what a coinky dink that would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Sitting Vassetti. Mid- never thought he'd get it. You're dressed a bit like Tommy Vassetti. Oh, thank you, Paul. Right. You got a so movement on your breast. Uh, yeah. I'm just up, the up the movements. Oh, I don't know if Tommy was a fan of the movements. What a, what a theme tune that is, by the way. <laughs> the, mo- the first uh, one. Friendly faces everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting into Primus, you know. Have they been cancelled? Have you? Yeah. I don't know that I'm aware of I watched the, uh, the, the 25th anniversary concert they did I at Red that, Rocks. Yes. And that was my introduction to Primus. Oh, to defy the laws of tradition. What a what a banger that is. Woodstock 94. Oh, <laughs> I think right. Dan wants us well to move on to the wrestling because he just went... <sighs> <laughs> it's only three o'clock. Dan, we've got two and a half hours yeah, until yeah. you finish. <laughs> Was it? I like the, the story they told is just like, so we asked Primus, could you sing us a song for the credits? And then they played the, sorry, the, the introduction and it was the... Closing theme, yeah. Anyway, this is too slow and no lyrics. Can you make us quicken it up and sing something? <laughs> so I recorded backstage at this event. It was like, oh, that's how they got that? Oh, and I didn't realize the, the credits was just the slowed down. Yeah, what oh. well, they originally submitted, yeah. But yeah. That, the guy who, I don't know what his name is, the guy from Primus who plays the bass, mm-hmm. but it's actually the lead guitar while playing the bass. Mm-hmm. Him with the Woodstock 94 with the 
jumping around the stage and that, and I've never seen anything like oh, it. There's only one iconic performance from Mud Stock Night Four, and that's Green Days. <laughs> oh, no, of course, yes. the Mud one, the Mud, the Mud show, and the Mud show. Was Pri- also... Primus have a song called "My Name Is Mud." It yeah, came out because that was in tribute. Yeah, that was it. Think or maybe not. He starts, oh no, no, it was they paid down. My name is Green Days. Mud show. It's like I've opened a can of words. Yeah, stop throwing the mud, you son of a bitch. <laughs> also, also, was it Bill Hicks who played or oh, whatever well, performed at Woodstock '94? And you had that one joke where he went, "Bill Hicks." What were we talking about? Yeah. yeah, I think he was. Was at he alive by '94 still? He was at one of those All Woodstockies right. that came out. It wasn't '99, no. but um, <laughs> he went. Uh, I swear it was that. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But the story where he said, "Hey, uh, by the way, I've lost my contact lens. If anyone sees it, let me know." <laughs> it was supposed to be a joke, but then probably lots of people in the inbox like, "Oh, can you see it?" <laughs> <laughs> Off their tits. Uh, yes. So. Uh, so Hello, Sakura. Backstage, the Miz introduces us to Miz Force, his oh, yes. private security team. He oh, sends the match. Off. We haven't gone through the match. We just did well, the promo. No, I, well, I said it was a good match. Do, oh, do, is that what we're saying? Oh, sorry, we got distracted somehow. You and Bianca, yeah, it was a good match. Uh, yeah. I did like Canada trying to steal the UK Thunder with a DJ Otzi chance. Yeah, never right. even heard of him, have they? Nah, they don't understand. That's the Trina. I they? mean, I think that's originally someone else's song. To be fair. Oh, well, obviously, but DJ Lt brought it to fame. Yeah, something, he did. Yeah, something in the sixties. Yeah. he stole it. It's the best. Mm. Vic Reeves. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say. I just thought nice it was a good arm showcase. drag. Arm right. drag off the middle rope mm. from Eo Sky. Very nice move. Never seen it. I've bored Jack. He's on his phone. He's doing a Mr. West. What was it? West Side Story. Yeah, yes. West Side Story. The rapper. Side gun. Very good. <laughs> Backstage, the Miz introduces Miz Force, his private security team. He sends them off to find Dexter Lewis. Go, Miss Force, go! Yeah. I've hired you for stealth. One of them's seven foot tall. Mm. What's he thinking? Just saying. He can hide behind the other wrestlers. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, nice nothing. incentives, though. Million dollars, cameo in a movie, mm-hmm. pre-owned vehicle and career advice. Oh. What more do you want? What more do you want? I'm thinking. What's Lewis's oh. aim? Actually, we'll get to... I think I've recapped the rest of this storyline just in this segment anyway. <laughs> Then later, Miz finds Miz Force all unconscious. Dexter Loomis is behind him, disguised as an ice hockey mannequin, and chokes him out again. Hit the thing, Dan. Oh, my. Oh, oh baby. The reveal of Dexter Loomis in that hockey statue is my move of the week. Wow. <laughs> Josh Woods is no longer the tactical bastard. <laughs> The tactical bastard oh. is Dexter Loomis. That was marvellous. Five you, stars. Was it because it genuinely took you by surprise? Yeah. yeah I didn't same. see him. Mm. Yeah. Did you see him? No. Uh, well, you knew it was coming, <laughs> but still, you like the you like, reveal. No, it was very, like, very pandemonium. Like, oh, where no, could he be? It wasn't like, the dude he, right no, behind him. It's it wasn't like our like, truth with a plant pot on his head. Aye. It was much better than that. The first but he had a hockey ten, mask. The first five to ten seconds, you were like, oh, it's just a normal hockey statue has been there all night. Mm. But then you realise you can't not even see the stash, can't you? And you're like, oh. You know why I know oh. <laughs> You know why I got it? Because not being a hockey fan, I see a hockey mask. I don't think, ooh, Wayne Gretzky. I think Jason Voorhees. Jason so Voorhees. I'm like, can't trust him. Mm. Fair enough. And I was right for completely wrong reasons. What's Dexter Lumis' aim? To choke out the Miz every week? <laughs> I don't know what he wants. That's understandable. Well, it's it's not the oh, family. It can't yeah. be the family because he could have had the family, but he didn't take the family. Um, he's been in the house with a coffee table and that. That's right. Yeah. So that's not a motive. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Miz is the bad guy. Maybe it's just karma. Mm. Miz has been a bad guy for many years. True. That is true. Had a quick break in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> then the figure four. Sorry, invented the figure four. Yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, oh, he was talked to him by um, Chris Jericho, yeah. uh, also, one of the greatest wrestlers backstage. Also a face against Shane McMahon and lost that feud. When Shane McMahon beat, oh, up, God, I when Shane McMahon beat up the Miz and his dad and won. Did that be it? Like, fuck, tell, tell me, why are you doing this? And he just tells me. Your dad sent us because you haven't been ringing them as really, really <laughs> used to. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I hope it is. So George gets back on TV. Yeah, yeah. that's what we need. A bit of George. He goes, "Oh, you." He's 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 unhinged. Is George? <laughs> There's no filter. Fantastic. Yeah, like the one. The only time I watched Total Divas was when they're all sat around whatever show it was. Um, and he's like, Dad, I've got something to tell you and you only. And he he went. Is that? Oh, just us two and these cameras and those cameras and those cameras. <laughs> like, no, Dad, Dad. dad. And they left it in. They left it in the show. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Seth Rollins cuts a promo about he ha, ha, ha. might not be the favorite in the fight pit, but he'll find a way to win, like he always does. Okay. He also insults Father of the Year, Rey Mysterio, who attacks him before the match. 
Uh, Dominic distracts Ray, which allows Rhea Ripley to hit him with a chair, helping Seth get the win. Mm. So Ray cuts a promo before the match as well, saying, oh, yes. under no circumstances will he fight Dominic, which means Dom's going to do something terrible to Ray. And I can't wait to see what it is. What do I think you'll do? Um, Take his mask off, wipe his ass with I him. think the match will be for the mask. Hmm. Mm. 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 Aha. Ma- mask- acceptable mask versus goth lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> imagine Ray <laughs> oh. the filthy animals no they weren't gothic at all were they? <laughs> yeah. oh. um, oh, you, could, you, could, you could bring the horns back though you could yeah oh, it's gothic true. ensemble yeah. I'm surprised they didn't bring get back. the weird things then who horrible. was it who was the who was Ray's who was the filthy animals like Valet Tigress Tigress oh, right. bring yeah. back Tigress bring back Conan Oh, Lally. Don't bring back Disco. Eddie. Oh, yeah. yeah bollocks oh, to that guy. Yeah. Bring back Hoovy. The Hoovy. Juice. Was Kidman in it? Kidman, yeah. 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 Um, Lance? No. No. <laughs> no. God, Team Robert Canada. Animal. He's the cleanest of all animals. <laughs> yes. I am neither an animal nor filthy. <laughs> I believe myself especially clean. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that? Oh, no, it's sure, Matthew. I was shocked they were doing this so quickly after the pandy as well, because in my mind, at least, the, the memory is still fresh of the ping pong ball. The what? eye. The oh, eye. The, oh, right, yeah. The eye for an eye match where he no. ripped out his eye. Do you I remember, remember that? Sick. I remember them like putting a lot of effort into it and then just immediately going, actually, nah, ball. you know what? This is more. <laughs> little ping pong ball. And then going, my eye, my eye. And then <laughs> he could say, oh, it got better. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, stupid feud. Yeah. I did like Rollins shoot cutting his head open on the stairs. That was gnarly mm. in a certain mm. sort of way. Uh, Corey on commentary just shouting, Ray needs to come to terms with fatherhood. The weens are going to leave the nest one day, mm. he basically says. Yeah. Um, the crowd largely booed Rollins, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, you think he was the, like they? the one heel mm. in WWE or something? They really did oh, boo him. Wow. They booed the yeah. heel. Uh, but at the start, they did cheer because they... It's almost like, oh, isn't this great? We're going to see him live on TV. And he starts talking. I'm really great. I bit this dude. I did this dude. Yeah. I'm the height of the century, according to this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts doing his stuff. He goes, by the way, I hate Ray. He says, oh, yeah, yeah. You're a heel, boo. Hmm. Oh, he said it. Oh, I said it last week as well. He's got to snow. He's admitted it. Armageddon. Mm. Uh, the QR code briefly flashed as Don was making his way to the ring. Oh, yes. Which yes. leads me, do you reckon there's a chance, right? Because it's all sort of, way. It's all Ooh, sort of I... been surrounding the judgment down at these little references like Demon, mm. Finn Balor, flashing up when Don was there, the leg missing on the hangman. Do you reckon there was a point in time when it was Edge and now they've called an audible? Maybe. That would be possibly. Are we all in agreement that it's got to, it just is the got theme? It. It's got, got it. It's got to be the theme. Got to be the theme. Yeah, because they've, ch- they've played it at house shows and everyone's doing the the flashlights. Jefferson Airplane song. Yeah. Yeah. But just the audio of that, which I thought Jane! was I think it's fantastic. Sorry, that's me. Jefferson Starship. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's eerie as bowels, man. I think it's a wonderful it's wrestling mm-hmm. just, just the vocals, the play. Mm-hmm. Um, Rollins as well, whapping out the Nobby Solano for a finish. The Nobby Solano. The Peruvian necktie. <laughs> oh. Okay. Imagine if it was called the Peruvian chump- trumpet. Just got a WrestleMania entrance of Nobby Solano and his little trumpet. He always would come to Morpeth on a Saturday night back in the day with his trumpet, Nobby Solano, just in Chambers Pub. Ah, what Great a guy. Times. Great times that by all. Good lad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Rollins was still cheered until Dom showed up and then Rollins started doing the three amigos because you have to do it when you're at Rey Mysterio. Mm. And then the biggest five foot seven woman in the entire planet, Rhea, <laughs> attacked Ray to help Seth win. Mm. And then the crowd chanted, Dom is useless. Oh, that's, that's not is the that... sort of heat you want. It is if you're Dom, because he is, and they know. But he's a sub, and he's got that wonderful mm. sub energy. He loves it. Yes. Someone said Chant that. it louder. You know, when me and you did the weekend wrestling, just us two, a couple of weeks ago, we there was did. a comment on that which is stoked with me. It was like, oh, Ross has got a wonderful sub energy. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? I, oh. could, I could bend you out of this table if I want to do, Matthew. Let me tell you. But do you want to? <laughs> nah, not really. Of course. You want to, <laughs> uh, uh. I'd rather have a strap on up the arse. Uh, Riddle was backstage watching TV the right way around, but really closely. What's going on there? Don't I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Riz, Riz was watching TV. Riddle was. Riddle, sorry. He was watching it like a, a human would, but he was like, if that's the TV there, his face was like. No. Oh. Maybe probably blurry eyed. Yeah. Sometimes I leave my contact lenses at home, and I understand. Do you just stand in front of the TV like? I get closer to my computer screen than I probably should. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. so imagine like standing like you're ordering fish and chips because I want to get just like in front of the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Panda Express beat Alpha Academy in a tag match mm. despite interference from Austin Theory. Later, Theory shouts at Gaylord Otis for losing. 
he gets a phone call from Braun Strowman challenging Gable to a match <laughs> next week. Now, <laughs> now, Otis cracked me up in this post-match segment backstage, but I can't remember the word he said. He said one thing the whole way through, which was when Theory's on the phone, he goes, it's for you, like for Chad Gable. And Otis goes like, the captain or something like that. He calls him the, <laughs> the chief or something. I can't remember what he calls mm. him now. Oh, I wish I knew. Teacher, principal, somewhere. The, mm. the leader. Oh, he says something. Leader, Gable. leader, <laughs> Gable. leader. Gable cracked me up. There's little like, he, he gets the phone call. He's like, shush, shush, shush. shush. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Owen Morrison's like, a big fan of the whole shush thing. Mm. He loves it. My mom, Kayla, is as well. It, she started watching, ever since the, the, the clash at the castle, she started watching Raw religiously. And Chad Gable's her highlight of the week every week. He's funny. Mm. He's a funny man. It's it's pretty bad when we start like FaceTime at night. She starts to call by saying, shoes, shoes, please. Oh, <laughs> catch and try. Get away from that when I go home. I wonder if they're on <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> I did like when Braun Strowman issued the challenge. He sounded like he was Bane. I was about to start taking Batman. It's me, bro. Yeah. Hello, oh, ladies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in this match, I forgot that they were in Alberta. Someone was like, Kevin Owens, yeah, and the the brother love pop. He Kevin fought Owens. A, he fought a sign as well. Did you see that? It said fight my sign. Yeah. Kevin Owens fight my sign. So he punched. Him. He did mm, good. That good luck. guy. Otis's oh, mm. gorilla press world strongest slam. I need to mention again. Oh. Mm. Up there were the best moves in wrestling today. Uh, it was good when was it when Owens started doing the sharpshooter as well. Yeah. I think it was Jimmy goes uh, sharpshooter obviously, but then Corey's like scorpion death look actually. Mm. <laughs> What's he like, eh? Womp, womp, womp. But then this is the thing. If Chad can't win after the theory interference and he does that big old swinging DDT thingy, which yeah. looks really good and I don't know the name of, I should do in my role as a professional journalist. You should. But uh, if he can't win a match after that, I'm convinced he'll never win it all ever again. Because that was it. He still couldn't get the job done. He can win a match. They are the modern day Dolph and Ziggler, the pair of them, <laughs> put together. Just, which wow, one is so which? Good. <laughs> As several have said. Uh, because, yeah, they're so good at making other people look great that and still being entertained themselves just like that's so great mm. you never win it yeah it's too valuable Shame. I'd like for them to win more I'd like for them to both be like upper mid card heels yeah. yeah now they're just kind of theories cronies for now and he's not even in the yeah. academy they're the Miztourage yeah, yeah. why is the, why is the youngest God, ever going to the back telling the, them what to who do who is the Miztourage again uh, uh, Bo Dallas and uh, Curtis Axel God wow what I, wow when was that the Misterage. Like 2016? Oh. 17, yeah, yeah. 2016, 17, 18. Wow. Monday Night Raw. Was that before or after like the... Miz and Roman. Cast? Raw 25. That's all Vera. Wow. <laughs> B- I'm team. trying to imagine B- it. Team. It's not go, working. Go, go, go. It was after... B- yeah, team. the B team. I remember the B, from... the, yeah, B, team was after, B team was afterwards. Because okay. they won the titles of Mania. They beat FTR. Or well, the Revival. Yeah, they did. They did. But then the Social Outcasts was before... Yeah. Photographic yeah. evidence. Wow. I, 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 not the, so much evidence. <laughs> I, <laughs> all, Matthew's the still not sure. <laughs> I've watched every episode of Raw since 2010, and i drawn a complete blank. Me on too, a little bit. The name rang a bell, but I couldn't have told you who was in it. Nah. I was thinking of Hawkins and Ryder. Yeah, if you'd asked me, I probably would have said, yeah, yeah them or... Were they ever aligned with the Miz? No, they're just because they were the oh, edgeheads, a similar yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, very, very similar. Mm. Well, anyway, moving on. I like the crowd going KO to the tune of Ole. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They were up for it, these lads, weren't they? Whoa, it's mm. bizarro it's land up there, isn't it? Mm, just cheer them that's, that's what I've been that's, that's snowy north. Yeah. Uh, Finn Balor again approaches AJ Styles, offering to be in his corner against Sami Zayn. Styles says, nah. The offer still stands. <laughs> I've been practicing on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, almost as a match against two Just, jobbers. What's the point? Move on. And wins easily with MVP on commentary. <laughs> the only thing I picked up on this match was uh, Corey called one of the jobbers the ultimate hoser, which I believe is a reference to Ian C. Pot of Awesomeness from back in the day. Because everyone who listened was a hoser. I think a hoser is a Canadian term for like, you big goof. What are you like? Oh. I'm going to Google it. Just make sure it's nothing offensive. <laughs> Good. <laughs> they use that, they, it can't be. They use it on that podcast. Everyone so if they're wrestling, if, if Pac beat two, Look, lads, with Corey Grace. Ah, oh, two doylums here. Guys, the yeah. ultimate knacker. The ultimate a knacker. foolish or uncultivated person. <laughs> That's us. Yay. Thanks, e uh, Informal Canadian. Oh, I, I like the, the end was weird as well, wasn't it? Because they just rebuilt the announce <laughs> table after the KO match. And like, almost, looks like he's going to stack them on there, maybe get on the top rope, do a shame up man elbow, <laughs> drop us of it. <laughs> but just it goes, just, eh. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. 
Yep, that was all that was there. Well, he's yeah. back. And then he? Candice LeRae makes a surprise return to face Nikki A.S.H., who she be easily beats, obviously. Quite Nick, a very quick match, um, actually, yeah. Mm, Nikki has a tantrum afterwards and rips her mask off. <gasps> I swear we did this already with Dewdrop. No, there was, oh, no, her and Dewdrop had an argument. But, now the she's... Title but then they would moment. go to NXT and be friends and then come back to Raw and fall out again and then go back to NXT and be but friends. But now she's arguing with herself. I guess you could say she's losing her sanity. Oh. Ah. Uh, I like DJ it. Uber. As well. Sean, Sean Ross Sapp is being confirmed as the, as the scourge of the world wrestling entertainment. <laughs> Because he noted after this match that internally it was listed as Nikki versus Dewdrop to throw him off the scent. Did he say to throw him off the I scent? I don't know. I've just inferred. Oh, right. That. To throw other wrestlers and possible sources backstage off the scent. But he's the main boy. Mm. The top dog. Maybe to throw any of the rags off the scent. It was nice the to see that spoiled brother. the rags. Hogan when he lit the <laughs> yeah, observer right. on fire. <laughs> These bloody red tops. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was nice to see it not spoiled on Twitter beforehand. I didn't see yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see it. I was yeah. It was actual... News and the actual yeah. surprising bit on Raw. Wow. Do you remember when they like didn't remember ever how to do surprises? So they'd go, coming up next, bloody Jeff Jarrett. He'd be like, hang on. <laughs> and then he'd be yeah, after yeah. the advert break backstage. And he'd be like, just get him to just have his music here. Yeah. Oh. Later backstage, uh, Candice wishes Bel Air good luck in a title defense at Extreme Rules. Damage Katal overhear this and argue with Candice, who challenged Dakota Kai to a match for next week. No, oh, hey, why not? Mm, fair enough. Aye. Battle of the see. colourful haircuts. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. You me. <laughs> Sami Zayn beats AJ Styles, who also gets the love from the Canadian crowd. Mm -hmm. Thanks for an appearance from Solo Sokoa. JD arrive after the match with Balor again, offering JD. AJ Judgment Day. Oh, I thought you meant Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Can't say that. Oh. I was oh, like, off you've off mixed up Balor and Devlin no. again? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Judgment Day arrive after the match with Balor again, offering AJ a place in the stable. And AJ again saying, nah. But the offer still stands. Yeah, like Spider-Man. Yeah. When he's trying to learn how to shoot his webs, he starts doing all that sort yeah. of stuff. I used to crap me up when I was a kid. That one is good, it? Yeah. Um, first match back where Sammy's proper wrestled like a good wrestler for a while. Not just taking mm. moves well, but mm. like doing yep. his own moves as well, which means we're in full like babyface turning mode. Building up a head of steam in matches and stuff. I've written down here, we're in full babyface mode with a heelish shacket. Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you are right. Uh, they beat him down, and Bala offers, sorry, prepares to pulmonize his neck, but he stops himself, saying, That's not what friends do. Because they offer. Aww. Still stands. Styles did, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we should team up. Why? I didn't break your neck. Sorry, podcast audio listeners, he flipped the birds. Double birds, wasn't Styles it? Styles can't be a goth. He's too. He could with that hair. He's got long. Uh, he's just. He doesn't give goth energy at nah. all. He's like the opposite. He's like a. He wears tap out and affliction shirts and that yeah. drinks energy drinks. He's, he's too Christian to be goth. If yeah. He, if he combed his hair differently, he could be <gasps> your man from the Cure. Robert. Robert from Robert the Cure. Smith. No, he couldn't. No, I think. Do you need... AJ would never wear lipstick <laughs> ever, ever. No. Do you think that they they trick him by playing like Christian rock? It's like you're never gonna get me to join Judgment Day and they play like Creed. Hello, my friend. We had a steel, oh. steel rock band at school. <clears throat> the I scourge wonder. of all the school discos of a Christian mm. rock band. Really? They were called Steel Machine. I don't know if they're still around. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Early noughties, Christian Northumbrian rock. Um, what a genre. <laughs> Zane did an orange crush. Yep. What's that mean? I don't know. Just likes different moves, I guess. Well, what's the significance of the orange crush? Significance. Ah, uh, one wanted to win the match. Yeah. I know that, but like, why? His Corey was going. It's the Orange Crush. Oh my goodness! Was it? What was it? Did he used to do it when he was El Generic? Well, sorry, when uh, his brother was El Generic. Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't know. I, that, I don't recall actually. Now you've said that. Big Maybe R big REM fan. Uh, <laughs> there we go. You know what? I don't have an answer for you. I wish I did. Fair I'm enough. Sorry. And then Riddle wins the main event against Damian Priest. And I thought what your line may have been for this uh, week's Raw for the byline, Jack, was going to oh, be, will no one riddle me of this Damian Priest? Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but gets beaten down by Judgment Day, not confused with JD Madonna afterwards. Edge is back. Where, 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 where did he go? What do you mean? It's been like three weeks. He broke his leg. Yeah. Broke his leg. This... Definitely broke his leg. Yeah. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith said. <laughs> Every time Edge, Edge, like, he's back. Like, it's been a week. <laughs> Do you reckon they just didn't realise they were in the, in the Canadia for like yeah, yeah, yeah. in a few weeks' time and just said, oh, might as well. Why not? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it challenges oh, Ballard... broke a little bit there. I guess so, guys. But it challenges Ballard to an I quit match, Extreme Rules. And after the show, Seth comes out and brawls a riddle again. Now, I you? hope that I quit match is not 
too long. Because what? remember that last man standing match at yeah. WrestleMania? Mm. This is going all around the arena. Uh, it's going to be such a dramatic affair. At least with a live crowd, it might go a bit quicker. Hopefully. Who, who, who's, who should win? Edge. Mm. Oh, see. <laughs> mm. Ooh. Edge got kicked in the nards of the castle. He's got to mm. get the win back. But he back. got the win, though. But I think AJ could cost him because he and Balor were buddies, weren't they? <laughs> oh. Yeah, Balor's like, I really need your help, buddy, <laughs> to deal with this Edge head. Maybe. It's good for Edge because back in those days of the podcast, he'd always go on about Finn Balor. Ooh, I'd love to wrestle him. Ooh. Ooh, he's good him. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Munchy, munchy. But why would it scrubby, make him scrubby. quit, though? I'll give you a hug if you tap out. All right. Do some reason. Balor's knee. remorseless, so he should never quit. Nothing should make him want to quit. Prison Whereas Finn Edge, quit. what? Prison Finn wouldn't quit. I thought you would say like the threat of a prison sentence. <laughs> those were saying. Like, um, but you think like Edge is like, do it or I'll hit Dom. He's like, fine. <laughs> yeah, like that spot might actually happen. Yeah. Or like Ray will come out and be like, stop beating my kid, and then like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kill Ray unless you that do something. Could be like, and then Edge will be like, all right, just for my friend Edge, Ray. Edge has got a conscience now. He's good, Oil, he's he's good edge. Mm. Oil will make Ray join the Bullet Club oh. with a real gun. <laughs> Say you quit. <laughs> or he gets it. Oh, Begora, please. <laughs> please stop. Anyway. <laughs> Reason 999 to hate the Brits. Uh, so yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But yeah, I think Balor, it's weird. I'm thinking, well, Balor should win. He's the young up and... He's in his 40s. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's, I mean, he looks compared like... Compared edge, Ooh. he's a young up and comer. He loves right. a McDonald's, you know. No, he doesn't. Finn Balor. What, look at the menu? That's his mm. cheating meal. Probably Licking taking... it and going, ooh, you taste like McNugget. Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Not someone different, Jack. Yeah, yeah, bacon yeah. and McNugget. Mix, I might have been in an interview with that bloody pesky Satan. Um... <laughs> he doesn't follow me on Twitter anymore. I think, like, I think he heard the podcast. Uh, <laughs> it was a joke, so Ryan. Rough, what a bloody shame. Hell. No, it wasn't. Well, no, it wasn't. Well... No one's ever called him Satan before, are we? <laughs> it's right there. Must just be reliving school days. Sorry, sorry, you're right, you're right. Ryan Sutton. Does he follow me? Why do you want him to follow you? You know what? I don't care. Twitter's it's just, not it's even when real. You find out, it's like when you click on someone's profile on Facebook and it says, like, add friend. You're like, oh. Oh, it's like, that is it. Oh. Yeah, but some people just go on oh. big purges, don't they, and just clear loads of people they don't really talk to anymore. <laughs> yeah, but the, the moment when you, you don't know you're in it, if they mm. message you, hey, I'm getting rid of you, you're mm, like, all right, fine. True. But you click on it, you're like, oh, oh, oh. It's, Any, hard, it's harsh but fair there in most cases. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard the term before, ex-axed, which is when an ex of yours cuts you off on social media. There you've been ex-axed. Mm. Mm. Yes. Could be a finishing move with that. Mm. Mamma mia! He just got ex-axed <laughs> like it. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. I can hear that and smell it. <laughs> so let's move on. NXT white and gold. Oh, yes. Gallus are the... <laughs> Come on. Gallus are the baddest boys in the whole wide world. That was inspired by an Impractical Jokers sketch, that one, where they <laughs> uh, make they make Sal sit on a park bench next to this woman and say, Penny for your thoughts, and she says something normal, and then he goes, do you know what I'm thinking? She goes, what? And he goes, I'm thinking I'm the baddest boy in the whole wide world. <laughs> <laughs> she likes it, though. She goes, well, I'm the baddest girl. And they're all like, oh, it's working. Because Sal's the cute one, you see. Anyway... Gallus are the baddest boys in the whole wide world. Because they're the cute ones. I guess. No, no, they're just they're just bad lads. Ooh. Imagine calling Joe Coffee cute. What would happen to you? This is probably man. what happens. Real men wouldn't speak like that. I'm not cute. I'm buff. I'm buff. <laughs> Aye, yeah, I you, remember, you're buff. Bagwell, he's on TV either. I remember in the sort of heyday of Big Brother, there was a, a bit where they had to do like, um, like, like awards, like that, like who's the funniest housemate, oh, yeah, who's yeah. like the most popular. And I remember there was a Scottish man, funnily enough, kicking off because he didn't get best looking. And they were like, no, no, it, it's all right. And he was like, I, 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 they talked him down. And he was like, if there was a Buffest Award, I'd win it, right? And they were like, yeah, yeah would you? Yeah, you'd win the Buffest Award. That's what reminds me of this. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Ilya Dragunov. The sandbagging's atrocious, right? I'm enjoying <laughs> it. I was smiling. Yeah. Mm. Obviously, the audio people can't hear Matthew and Ross smile stop, stop, at Jack's stop, stop, very stop, interesting and relatable stop, story. Stop, stop, stop. Elliot Dragunov opens the show and says he hears 
to face another unbeatable monster to win a title. But this time it isn't Gunther, mm. it's Bron Breaker. Mm. I thought Elias' head was going to pop in this segment at the end when he gets going. The redness oh, and the He's vein. intense, man. Oh, he dresses like a villain, speaks like a baby face. Mm. I love the Coliseum bit. Like Dan mm. Housen. No. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> much, much, much better. Oh. Watch him. I don't know how they're used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We've Dan. both had the different voices. Dan Housen has this amazing Russian, well-spoken English accent. And Ilya, yeah, I'm from Russia. <laughs> I, I imagine... I saw a, I saw a old footage of Dan Housen wrestling before he was a comedy wrestler. Oh, yeah, yeah He yeah. wrestles a bit like Bala, that sort of style. Mm. Lots of sprinting and double drop kicks and stuff. Mm. Really good. Should do that again. <laughs> no, it's what didn't get yeah. it over. Getting some of the loudest pops you've ever heard in your life doing nothing. Yeah. Oh, you point. know, bust on my ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. He's interrupted by J.D. McDonough, a.k.a. the sexy serial killer. No, 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 not that one on Netflix. Like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> J.D. is Jeffrey annoyed. wasn't sexy, I'm sorry. Oh. All those lads mm. would disagree. Mm. Ah! Well, I, wait, well, what, yeah. what am I doing? I'm a pro Dharma. <laughs> Jesus. What am I doing? You Dharma defender. Hey, hey, hey. How are <laughs> no, you stop, to judge? right? Jeffrey Dharma was sexy, okay? <laughs> oh, stop. Anyway, who was annoyed at Ilya for getting in his way and threatens to end his career like he did in NXT UK? Because mm. JD McDonough's just making up storylines here because no one watched NXT UK. <laughs> apparently, this made up thing he's, he's saying now, and this retcon we call in the business, he injured Ilya so badly that he had to, he's the reason why he had to vacate the title yeah. that then Tyler Bate who I think is still wrestling for that in that tournament that's still going on now we know firsthand, Matthew that JD McDonough and Ilya Dragunov have incredible in-ring chemistry because we true. saw a really good match featuring them at Progress in Newcastle but can they do it when someone else is added to the mix I don't know because Bron Breaker arrives Whoa. and he just out of nowhere drops a Steiner Math reference before suggesting a triple threat at Halloween Havoc I liked that. I did as well. He did. He goes, hey, triple My threat, myth. baby. But it was good because they were like, Jerry's like, no, no, I don't want a stupid triple threat match, idiot. What did I just say? Yeah. He got a bit, he got a bit, if that is true, that thing that JD was saying, he got a bit screwed. I don't know if it is true because I didn't people watch keep, NXT. People keep cutting in line. Hmm. But he's already lost to Bron, though. Yeah, you know, storyline-wise, that's a bitch because it was like, oh, it's actually, you know what? I like justifications for, no, mm. why I should get that? I'll just do that to you. But no one cared because no one wants to. <laughs> so the crowd, like, even the plants are like, did that happen? Do you plans, see this? Plants did a very planty thing in this, by the way. It's going to be a triple. Right. right. Yeah. When has that ever been a thing? <laughs> yeah. Look, Bron's just got charisma. Bron's watering the plants. Oh. Scandal. That was that. good. Matthew, Matthew oh my laughed God, and enjoying, no, no. He not enjoyingly enjoyed that. Not it's my birthday that. week. You can't be mean. I'm not, bit, I'm not the rules. mean. The rules are I'm you have being to be nice. nice to you, but you're doing that thing that where, where we're nice he to you. He you got get... you a confectionery. You did actually, to be he fair. He got me bugger all. Oh. You have a disdain Maybe for me, When you were away. Oh, don't you, Dom. It's the fact I slandered Jeffrey Dahmer that you don't like. Yeah, you know what? I didn't want to bring it up, but that was it. I can take everything else, but... Oh, dear. You eat your... Thing. What was it? Brownie? Oh, I thought he was talking about Jeffrey. <laughs> 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 Enough yeah. about the Dharma. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Gallus has shown brawling with BJ and JB backstage. Afterwards, Fallon Henley loses against Mandy Rose, who calls out Alba Fire. And it kicked off on Twitter because oh. someone suggested that Mandy's knee was better than Kenny Omega's. I was so glad this happened because I saw that's what people were arguing about on Twitter now. Just went off Twitter for a bit and did something else. <laughs> Mandy's <laughs> knee is decent. It looks like it's got a heft and a weight behind it, and she's improved God leaps and bounds, right? But Kenny Omega's knee is like one of the best of all time. I thought like Kanye West there. But Kenny Omega's knee is one of the best knees of all time. I love that that one person tweeting something has now stretched itself over to this. And I think they're about. both good in their own ways. I wish them all the best. And what about, what about Buddy Murphy's knee? And then I don't know what this was about, but then Mandy put up a video of her in her bra eating a cake and said, stay safe, everyone. But I don't know whether that was about the storm or about... The knee, or about neither. Wait, wait. I have no idea. Come no. eating pie. It's like, hey, stay safe, Florida. Come in this week well, to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Jack the Job will eat his confectionery <laughs> in a bikini. Ooh. Bro, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Hey, hope you guys were all right with the sharks that are now swimming down Florida. Yeah. Um, it does look bad, like. No, can you, do the, you can do the uh, Kevin Nash thing and eat it whilst <laughs> on a podcast. Oh, hey, people still speak about it 15 years Dan Bilzerian did that as well on the True Geordie podcast. It was awful listen. What an awful man. <laughs> what was he eating? Joe Gallus. Joe Gallus. Joe uh, Coffee would love that. 
What was that? That podcast. It's all about man and yeah, stuff. Yeah, shagging in that. Yeah. Manly things. Oh, yeah, what was he eating on the podcast? I can't remember. It was a few years ago. Oh. Yeah. I'm not going to bother say I was... So, <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> anyway, and then Alba appears in the Tron and spells out the fire and new in fire. Yeah. Well, she Which says, was nice. I'm more of a visual lady, but she didn't counter in the wind factor because it sort of blurred what she was trying to say. I had to pause and go, one of a visual... What about visual lady? Visual you lady. know why they're saying that? Not only because I can fire things working out if she's doing stuff like that, because they're all going, sorry, your Scottish accent's just a bit... Oh, come on now. too thick. I, this is the NXT universe you're speaking about. I like <laughs> Alba Fire or Kaylee Ray as a wrestler, mm. and I think she would be a fine women's champion. But Mandy's reign's been... I don't want her to lose. I want Mandy to keep going. It's much like Jade Cargill. You haven't built up that challenger to take the title yet. Yeah, yeah. It could be Wendy Chu. Oh, no. I just she's already had a chance. Be Wendy Chu, yeah. I no. think it, it was You're lost. dreaming if you think that's going to happen, Jack. Mm. Uh, Alba Fire was lost on me when you know Mandy was in there being like, you know, we're, we're sexy lasses, us, and we're cool and just be, talk like a human would. I wish we were a trio of sexy lasses. By we are. We can be whatever we want to be. <laughs> Dan, was, Dan's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dan making notes here. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm proper fit. I'd be the GG. Yes, I yourself. think. No, you'd be the GG. Are you the most? Goth? Oh hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank oh, you. hell yeah. You know what? Feeling <laughs> a bit mid today after that. Oh, take on the world. That, you would be the Mandy though, wouldn't you? Man. Biggest she's name. The... Leader of the podcast. Well, she's, yeah. she's, the, she's the best one, so you would be it. Nah, Gigi, oh. Gigi's the best one. You're Oof. the Ferrari engine that keeps this thing going. One of them drinks in bars. One of them... That's you. Loves music. That's me as well. JC no, goes to the record shops, doesn't you? Oh, yeah, that's it. No, Dan's the JC. You're obviously the... There's not four in Toxic Trash. Yeah, you're the Courage Jude. <laughs> Sorry, it was right there. She's not low hanging fruit. She's not a pop punk lady anymore. She's a real goth now. Are you going to be a real goth? Or not? I've never crossed that divide. Why not? Um, to Jack uh, the Gotha. I enjoy major yeah. chords too much for that. Oh, yeah. why didn't okay, that happen gonna... back in the day? What's that? Jack Just the Gotha. Jack the Goth. Yes, yeah, Session Goth did it, didn't she? When everyone was Jackman doing... Day. Jackman Ooh, Day. Trip about that in it really. <laughs> Just doesn't yeah. sound right at all, does it? Anyway, yeah. I was gonna. Yeah, she was lost on me, Alba Fire, when she started speaking about like mythical fire keepers and that. And I was like, just you're a bit naff in comparison to Mandy. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot you said all that first. Yeah. You know, I just thought I remembered fire, and now that's cool. But yeah, the mythical fire. Oh, right, it was okay. in the set where Mandy's just like, "Hello, I'm proper classmate." She's like, "Oh, I'm a mythical. I live in a long line of fire keepers. Oh, get in the bin, will you?" <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, she did say that, didn't she? <laughs> Apollo Crews is. Say who is the oh. woman, though? Tiffy Strats. Yeah, no, but that would be heel versus heel. Tiffy Strats could be a baby face. There could, there could be a transitional baby face champion, maybe Roxanne Perez. Yeah, she is. Okay, yeah. They are building her up, unless she loses to Cora. Yeah, she needs to, you know, win a few matches first. She's done all right. Yeah. She went toe to toe with Miko Sadamura. Man, you'll eat her up. Yeah. Like her. Chucky, Chucky Muffin, Muffin. That's oh, right, right, Jack. Oh. Well, right. That, that, that's not actually my thing, though. <laughs> I want to see if I can just make it your thing like, against your will. Uh. Apollo Crews is in a car park at night time. That's already... Okay, get out of there. Oh, NXT wow. car park. It wasn't the NXT car park, though. This car park oh. was elsewhere in NXT land. Oh, okay. Yeah. At first, I thought he'd gone back to the Lake of Sadness, but it was a different car park. That might be where you park up for the Lake of Sadness. It looked like yeah. that sort of yeah. area, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot about the NXT geography. Just imagine, yeah. like, you know, when you go for a, a chippy tea with your mom and sit yeah, in the yeah. car, look at the lake and yeah, the, yeah, the ducks yeah. and that. Apollo's just sat there with his chips thinking, should I get out there and ponder on the right in my diary? Lake of but Sardis. he can't, can he? Because he can't see out of his eye. He so can't, it's a he, rubbish view, this. He, he can see out of his eye, but he can't see it in the future. Mm -hmm. It's a crucial thing there. He was writing in his diary, I think. <laughs> yes. Dear, dear Stan, uh, he's writing about seeking revenge against Grayson Waller. He has a vision of Grayson with a terrified expression and bleeding eyes. Bloody hell. Uh, later, Grayson Waller worries that Apollo's vision will come true. He was shocked. That's a good pun, that actually. Yeah. What? His vision will come true. Well, vision for whatever. Uh, he also, you get later. He also tells us that next week he has Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade as guests on his talk show segment. No, right. That was just to build up next that, week. Yeah, nothing but he, he was shook. I've never seen this side of Grayson Waller before. But it's warranted. Because <clears throat> Apollo Crews can see into the future. And the future is. Grayson Waller looking stunned as balls. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh, he's no. never dabbled with the devil's letters before. We don't know. But yeah, Apollo Crews continues to bleed for weeks on end. He hasn't oh, seen anybody for it. it. Crucially, he didn't bleed the first, the, the week the week one after it happened, he didn't bleed. But weeks two, three, he has bled from the eye. Yeah, 
So what's happened there? Bit of conjunctivitis, bit of pink eye on the pillow. Who knows? It's the same doctor CM Punk was complaining about. <laughs> a doctor, I think there's some ads there, Pat. Sorry. <laughs> How long has it been bleeding for? A few hours, three weeks. I put my pants. Backstage. That's Rod Stewart from South Park, that, isn't it? That is, yeah. yes. Oh, me but pardon. I think they have tried to make fun of CM Punk for because that actually anyway, we're moving on. <laughs> backstage Jay Dragonoff calls Xian Quinn stupid. He is, though, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, backstage you went, you're rubbish, you. <laughs> I'm the expert. No, but he's because people have talked about your potential and Zangquin yeah. starts like the potential pose, which is like, yeah. yeah. The fake crowd noise in this segment though was fantastic because Elia goes, um, he calls him a total mental moron. And you just hear like a fake, really fake, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but he is a mental moron. No, it, yeah. if, if upstairs someone said to someone else, you are a total mental moron, me, and you would be like, ooh. I but would make it sound like real humans, not like a, <laughs> ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey, he didn't just say that, did he? <laughs> Nathan Fraser was in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened, and I noticed that Ilya's head notes, because I haven't seen the NXT UK stuff been, well, since the Gunther matches. He gets him down and he just gives him a big old punch I rather would... than doing his uh, Torpedo Moscow, mm. as he called it back in the day. Probably because calling someone Torpedo Moscow probably doesn't sound oh, too right. right about now. Yes. They could just change the name of it, though. I like the move still. Oh, yeah, I never even thought yeah. of that. I think it's actually been nice considering maybe they took... I'm not even sure if Ilya... This is me. Just based on absolutely nothing. Ilya, we've seen what's happening in the real life world. It's probably not a good time to have a big old Russian on our TV. So just... But he's German as well. No, he's Russian. Yeah, but he's German as well. He's Russian German. Right? That's cool. Okay, cool. I so uh, <laughs> let's make my slow. I thought instead. his accent was a German accent, not a Russian one. I thought he was just born in Russia, but brought up in Germany. Oh. I don't oh, know if that's true sure. or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His presentation's quite Russian with the red and the, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the music and that. And Especially he, like, he could be a Liverpool fan. <laughs> <laughs> that's his what? new gimmick now. Uh, <laughs> Wesley beats Tony D'Angelo. Who gets injured midway through their match? Uh, Lee qualifies the North American title. Yeah, that was match. Uh, a very abrupt ending. There wasn't much of the match, but it was work. No, no, no. no. Stop it, you. The quickness of the replay, focusing straight in on the knee. This is straight from the Jimmy Smith playbook of doctor, <laughs> doctorness. I don't know, whatever. What just was the point of it, though? I don't know. Mm. But the fact they just zoomed in on the knee straight. Oh, it's damn knee. Okay. Don't work. I thought it was a shoot. I thought begin. Wes looked really oh, upset really? or really concerned. It's because he's been trying to find himself, hasn't he? He stopped being the crazy guy and he's like just being more serious. You think him and Apollo ever walked past each other at the lake? <laughs> oh, he went to the beach. He was at the beach. He was at the beach, beach yeah. Man. He could have jumped into Tanga. What's her face? What's your, the Sol Rucker. Tanga. Now he's a Tanga lower. <laughs> <laughs> a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it wasn't much of the match, and yeah, injured and... Hey, yeah, trouble in it. paradise, though, because Stax broke rank. He did. Got involved. We could be seeing Tony losing his boy. Mm. Um, oh, no. So his I was thinking, thumb is really <laughs> shrunk. I was thinking the, fin- the finish looked like it was like a concussion sort of spot he twatted his head off the thing, but it's just how quick they went for the, like, oh, it's definitely knee injury. I'm like, okay. I don't believe you. I think it was just because it's pre-taped. That's why they're able to go so oh, quick. Oh, was so. it? Well, that changes everything. I thought this was a live shoot, brother, brother. No. I, thought, I thought they're all live, but they're even doing pre-tapes and stuff. So oh, fair like, enough. You know, that's why people are saying like, "Oh, right now this is what NXT looks like," but that could change because once you got the proper cycle, maybe there'll be more. When uh, does that start? Gold, or white and gold, whatever. I have no idea. Oh, mm. I just, I just, it comes in my lap and I watch it and I'm happy. I know what I said. Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. Never nice though, is this? <laughs> Sticky in a thigh. <laughs> Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams under the backstage by Oro Mencha. They respect each other's drip. That Halloween Havoc be every man for himself. Mm. And the floor was sodden. I was just way barren. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of drippy fellas. Yeah. And Trick. He's not dry, is he? No, what? no, no, no. He's, he's, <laughs> he's got drip. This he's is going got... well. Yes. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Just two lads got uh, three lads going. Aye. I don't right? say they're not no, much no, 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 I no. wish this is one time when I miss Richard. He would have had thoughts Aye, on the drip. Found. Would he have had thoughts no, on the drip? No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. That would have been it. Yeah. I'm good. It's all right. Aye. He had clothes on. Fine. What he must look like now, though. Richard heard, must have yeah. leveled up. The stuff I've heard about the, the scene in Japan, because the mm. first week he was there, I think Richard didn't quite know what he had on his hands in terms of like the shops and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I, God knows what he looks like now. Imagine if he came back and he's wearing like pimp hats and stuff. Yeah. It's like, well, you're back soon? He goes, yeah, I spent all my money on, on Japanese wear. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best dressed man in the entire stage. Do you I miss don't... him? Yeah. Oh, that's all right, Dan. Me too. He's dead to me now. <laughs> <laughs> a video package shows us a day in the life oh, of yeah. Pretty Deadly. Yes. 2.0. Yes, I, thought, I thought there was nothing 
that Pretty Deadly could produce better than this this week. Wow, yeah. what a great segment. No, like that. <laughs> and someone sent us, oh, you sent us, that clip of one of them on that show. Elton. First mm. date. I'm, first no, I'm sure I've mentioned this before and just been ignored, guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it's one of these things I've been reminded about because okay. there's so much happens in wrestling. You forget about a lot of those things. But yeah, Elton Prince was on one of that. I mean, those shows were amazing. It's Star still on Crash first TV. Day. Well, of yeah. course, it costs like 50 quid to Aye. make. But this, this, this particular little clip of Elton Prince getting abused. This woman this that they pair him up with, is, he's, he seems like a lovely young man. Yeah. He looks different. He's not got his long hair. He looks more like Nathan Fraser. A bit smaller, yeah. But he just seemed a polite... The, his mum would have been proud with his performance on that. She'd be like, oh, look at our Elton. Yeah. This, this, this lady... <laughs> Until she watched the rest of it. This lady's like, we agree. She's telling him to get the ribs, I think it is. She's he, like, no, he doesn't want that. He wants this. He orders yeah. something else. And she's so like, she can pick off his plate. Yeah. She's like... But I thought, I thought it was just to establish and dominate. Are you, are you going to let us do this? And he was Are like, you saying that Elton Prince no, got a then, wonderful sub-energy? So then... She, <laughs> Um, so then, well, no, because it doesn't really work that way. It's not going like yesterday, yesterday. So I think she has enough. She's so also it, a bit off it because it like cuts to her talking head bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's like, oh, "I like being treated like a princess and all this sort of stuff." And she's yeah, like, that's why I own a show like this. And she's like, "Because uh, I've had exes in the past who maybe I like someone who treats me really well because boys haven't treated me very well in the past before." And then really hypocritically, she's just treating him awfully. Yeah, again, obviously uh, the great oh, editing there. I wonder, oh, yeah. there. I wonder why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then she goes to the toilet and rings her mate and goes like. Come pick me up. I just don't like him. He's done nothing wrong. Leaves without saying goodbye. He's done nothing yeah. wrong. But, but it's the, just the awkward cuts of him sat down going, gosh, mm. you're taking ages in there. Yeah. Oof. There was a sequel where they they found a better day for him later on. Like oh, that's all right. Episode, was yeah. it Kit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He has more. <laughs> <laughs> that's the origin story. His first day. <laughs> oh, if only. <laughs> but I, at 10 a.m. they get up after all the normal people have gone to work. That's what we learned this week. Uh, they feed each other breakfast in bed because they thought about getting a butler but they didn't want anyone else disturbing their perfect little utopia. Mm -hmm. I think that's a valid reason. Yeah. 11 o'clock, they try their clothes on. That's an hour. Uh, one hour to brush their hair. And then once training is finished, uh, where they don't lift weights because they're not animals. <laughs> <laughs> they don't lift heavy. Yeah, they don't lift heavy weights. <laughs> uh, they bask in the awesomeness of each other. Uh -huh. A wonderful promo package. Then they go to bed in the same bed. Yeah. yeah. Like Morecambe and Wise. <laughs> <laughs> and then cut the Wade Barrow at ringside smoking three cigarettes. <laughs> completely <laughs> <stuff>. <sighs> <sighs> They uh, If they just recreated the Morecambe and Wise breakfast sketch, that would be oh. the peak. That would be fantastic. Imagine, right, wherever this last was from on first day, it's a friend just doesn't know wrestling, but they know Elton Prince's <laughs> shoot name and knew him back in the day. They're like, you'll never guess what he's up to now. <laughs> just show that clip out of context. Do you reckon she's gutted? I would be. Maybe. <laughs> she could have moved to Orlando with him. Been in the bed with him. Mm -hmm. Spent an hour. Nah, she, she oh, slept, nah, she's not going to sleep. Kate sleep. has to sleep in the bed. <laughs> she's on the couch. Uh, there we go. Solo, so Sol Rooker, I should say, wins her debut match against Amari Miller and shakes her hand afterwards. What face. do we know about Sol Rooker? She's safe. She's not made for wrestling because she likes the, the quiet life. She likes photography and art, cool vibes. Music. She likes playing the ukulele. She likes surfing. Her home's the water, but sometimes you've got to come ashore. You do. That's what we know about her. Because tides come in and out. <laughs> um, when she did her entrance thing with all the flippy doos and whatnot, I'm thinking you're just a crap Tiffy Stratton. Oh, but it turns crap out. Tiffy Stratton. Oh, that's what I was thinking in my head. But then it turns out she's just a slightly worse Tiffy Stratton by the match's <laughs> end. Which means she's very good. Because very Tiffy, Tiffy, oh, okay. That's a back out of Tiffy, No, Tiffy Stratton's really good. Yeah. The future. Weird finish, though. The double leg drop. Yeah. To the, to the small of the back. Yeah. Mm. Not buying that one yet. Yeah. Mm. Sol. What was it called? Like Surf's Up or? Yeah, something like that. Cowabunga, dude. Cow yeah. <laughs> we. <The> Riptide. <laughs> Uh, blah, blah, blah. Joe Gacy beats Cameron Grimes uh, thanks to an appearance from the DR. I just want it to be over. Is this storyline going to end with like Cameron getting knocked down so far that he has to join the skizzle? Maybe, yeah. I guess no. So. Well, it looks yeah. like it, doesn't it? No. He already told them no well, twice that we're still Hale doing. might be a secret joinee <laughs> as well. Conspicuous by their absence, the red hooded figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You while there was conspicuous. while there was a Chase U rally going on. Mm. Oh. oh. Stop it. No. Oh, she's not there. She was at the Chasey Rally. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, if she hadn't been there. I was going to say that, that's a giveaway. Because Dave Meltzer was there. We'll get on that later on. Though, oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nikita, Nikita Leon's beats Caden Carter. She does. Yeah, Very sexy match. Lots of sexiness. Um, I think the kids call it a thirst trap. 
Because there's a spankings and all that. <laughs> uh, the finish was good. Sudden <laughs> kicks, strikes, and otherwise. Wait, wait. <laughs> the crowd is quiet. Wait, Barrett sending Big Joe off for a second pair of tabs. Who was it? Who was it this week? It was like some old retired wrestler with a podcast or something. Oh no, it was Kenny Omega. <laughs> oh, that was, was beautifully was, cynical, he said, Jack. He, wow. No, I know he said that. Um, he said <laughs> Nikki and I. Well, I can see why people like her. She's a big, beautiful lady. <laughs> oh, fair enough. All oh, right, fair enough. He was just very honest. Well, both lasses involved with doing, you know. <laughs> First trap, two peas. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Is it two peas? Am I thinking getting confused with Kevin Trap, the German goalkeeper? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Is he a thirst trap? I don't know. Probably, what's the sound of music? The Von Trap. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, you mean Chase, the sound of music, yeah. Chase, you hold a pep rally where Andre announces. We're so British. They hold a pep rally. Yeah, I, this was an American sports yeah, press really conference. <laughs> so, well, I think they're like there's one in Greece at the start, near the start, oh, where Sandy's okay. a cheerleader. And they have, it's just a big party for the team before a big match or right, something. Right, right, right. Yeah. But also, for some reason, the wrestling press were there as well. Yeah. We never got any well, yeah. a credit. Oh, a credit, a credit no one credit, loves us. Credit, press a credit. Oh, apart from, you know, <laughs> the WWE. Yeah. Uh, Andre announces <laughs> he's got a ladder match qualifier next what? week against Von <laughs> Wagner. Tom was there in the press conference. Oh, yeah. right. I just like, unlike sort of the, uh, Companies we could mention. I remember the oh press. My word. AEW hate us for some reason. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know know the hoops had to jump through to get people on straight hell. Right. Back in the day, it was yeah. terrible. Yeah, they really don't like. We were really complimentary for we a while. Love them. Loved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fair yeah. to say our commentary on AEW is fair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It always has been. Yeah. The the, the, the rumor of a five pound from <laughs> no. Tony was just that. Nothing now, more. Back to the brand of the half year. Anyway, <laughs> back to this amazingly glowing review of the of the company that actually listens to us. Um, a member of the press named Dave points uh, out that Chase has never been on Wagner. No, Dave, which makes Andre very angry. He says, "Oh, was that a five star question? Who the f did you ever be, Dave? Have you ever been in a ring? Every time I punch cum, I'll think of your stupid smoke face." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, punch come. Because we next week, next week we've. Oh, I'm not even here. I'm on holiday. Oh. Oh. You'll it's be punching right because somebody else. Andre is, Chase uh, is so gonna lose. Surely. I don't know. I After, think it's best that you avoid that. As week. he mentioned at the start of this press conference, who did he pin last week? Carmelo Hayes. That's right. So next week, of course, we're getting two of the four pillars of NXT 2.0 going at it, where we see Chase oh. versus Come. Yeah. On a Tuesday. My way or the highway. Great. God. I don't know why they did the bit with Dave, but I guess if there was ever a week to mock the rest and press, this was it. Oh, Dave's Michaels. actually not done much wrong this week. <laughs> Dave's you like, know. we have to go with me for yeah. a month. Da- Dave is is rarely right these days. <laughs> oh, hang on. Look, He's, it's, it, it's a fair comment. That's look, honestly, He's rarely right. Kushida's brain was taken out of his skull, right? What? <laughs> clean and put back on. Pardon? Yeah, they, he yeah, said Dave, that Dave, once, Dave yeah. howler where he said mm. Kushida's brain was so badly damaged. He reported this on the what? Server, that they took Kushida's not, brain and put it back in his joking? head. When? It's hard to tell. He can't joke. I think yeah, the, Dave Meltzer's The howler joke. for me was the one where he thought the meme was real of the fans in the pub going yeah. mad and it was when Okada revealed the shorts were back. Tee hee yeah. He blocked me for that. Oh, oh, are you well, blocked by Dave so. Meltzer? Yeah. That's a shame. Because I laughed at that. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. Yeah. But yeah, there's just when people like bring up like, oh, the bad news, the bad news. Oh, actually, no, he did have something to do with Alistair Blackman, didn't he? Didn't he say something that Alistair Black said, no, that's not true. I'm not. I can't remember what I Dave did know. this week. Yeah, you know what? But, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, let's make fun of him. Well done. No, don't make fun of Dave. He's all right. No, and Andre. He's all it. right. We can't. Oh. That'd be bad. We want him from straight to hell. Who? You. What? Oh, sorry. The rest is hope you'll go to hell. My, my, my apologies. Well, Dave. Damon has Kemp. Dave not been uh, on straight That was an attempt at a joke. I'm really sorry. Hell, Dave he? did it in 2018. Yeah, on straight to hell. All those years I know. Ago. Was, it, it didn't oh, work. Right, okay. I, I apologize. It didn't work. We're all pricks. It, Adam bombed. <laughs> Damon Kemp deliberately gets himself DQ'd against Brutus Creed, beating, oh, sorry, Brute Creed, beating him down with a chair. He says if Julius wants some, he should come get some. You want to throw down? Come. come down I thought he was channeling John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Brutus looked really silly climbing up the stairs like that. Really silly. I really laughed. He did it like that up yeah, the stairs. Like a child. Yeah. Racing your dad <laughs> up to bed. Like, oh, I didn't think it like that. He ruined it now. Yeah. Um, I like, Here comes Brutty. I like the start of the match with Brutty going down the ramp, just setting the tone good yeah. and proper. Then we got the biggest rest hold I've seen since Randy Orton from Martin Kemp. 
long time that was in. It means he's a pro. Yeah, obviously, yeah. So slow it down, grab a hold. Nice. Yeah. Wow, look at that. And amongst all the kids there, all these quick kids, he's slowing it down. He's a bad guy. And then Brutus is a powerful man. Mm -hmm. I like the finish with the chair. There are no depth this man will stoop to. That, that he won't stoop to. They won't stoop to, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're very much opposite of what I said. Mm. Yes. He's an evil man. Yeah, he is. But also, right, where was Julius? Hmm? Mm. The commentary team said he'd be watching backstage, but Should if he helping. really cared about his brother, he would be out there yeah. fighting. He uh, said it was, a, see, they're, they're too honourable for their own good. They said, he said idiots. singles match. I think, a little, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a little part of Julius secretly didn't want Brutus to win this match because he wants to be the one who takes out Damon. Mm. He's been the one most personally affected by this. How, how, why would you think Brute and Julius will have issues? Oh, yeah. I love well, saying that every week. Mm. Such a good we've had, we've had Othello and now we've had Julius Caesar. Yes. Can we have a trifecta of Shakespeare? Oh, references? of course we can if we speak about Nathan Fraser and his football kit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I left out that video no. package, actually. Oh, Sorry. God. Oh, this Get is right to it. One of the highlights of the week, this. So we know how it, Nathan Fraser, if he didn't want to do wrestling, would have made it the EPL, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Premier League. Yeah. Um, Source, Nathan Fraser. So we had a, a scene here where he's in an Enfield Town football <laughs> kit just down the park. Because um, that's the team that NXT UK had some sort of affiliation mm. with. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you for explaining that. Um, he's been uh, tired before, and because he was the player his team always turned to, he knows how to win the game in extra time. He does a very good overhead kick, to be fair to him. There's no keeper in the net. He's it not bounces. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it bounces before it hits the net, but that's not quite, <laughs> not, not, not quite EPL standard. But, you know, he, he did the, the motion of the... He did the, the, the two the, yeah. the two kicks in the air. Um, so that was good. But they're just he's actually now a footballer. We've got a footballer in NXT. <laughs> he was in a football kit. If he wrestles next time, when he does this, does he, is there still one more to go in the best of three with yeah. Axiom? That's it, because he's saying that's why they're going to extra time. That's oh, why they yeah. bring him on for a sub. If yeah. he comes out in a football kit, I don't know what I'll do. They're acting like this is mad. Like the, the chances of these two lads going to the third and final decider is out. It's unbelievable. It's that never this happened. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's the best of three. Craziness. Yeah. Why did you, you know, it's so crazy. You have to be football mad. He's football crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Grab a but how'd you be like a grown man and going down the foot but uh, down the park for a kickabout on your own? That's nice. <laughs> and then bragging. Was he in a full kit? Bragging yeah. is <laughs> full kit. Full kit wanker. Bragging about scoring an uh... open goal. <laughs> I love it. Uh, in the NXT kitchen. Yep. Uh, well, Quincy... I didn't know what this room was. Yeah. I've never seen it in my life. Quincy Elliott. Chizzo. It looked like it looked like the kitchen at, in the the prelude of Metal Gear Solid Two. The kitchen in the cruise ship in the in the. The Good ship. reference. I'll catch that. Look like one of the oh, cabin yeah, quarters, kind of. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, you ate that later on. Mm. Uh, Quincy Elliott cheers up Sanger after his loss. Last Quincy week. Elliott's a horrible dick. <laughs> 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 after what he said. <laughs> after what he said in this one. He's nice to Sanger, and that's fine because yeah, Sanger's yeah. a nice man. Yeah. Zion Quinn arrives, and Quincy says he doesn't see the X factor Zion so claims to have. Zion after Quinn. Zion's just lost to so Ilya Zion, badly. Zion Quinn's obviously been asked. Everyone's been asking Quincy for feedback for some reason. Yeah, yeah. And Zion's gone, Quincy, have a look at my matches. Give me some feedback. And he yep. comes in, having just lost. And Quincy goes, yeah, I've, I've done what you asked. And he's like, oh, brilliant. And he goes, yeah, you've just not got it. <laughs> yeah, but he's the, Zion's the heel. He thinks he's got the X factor, but the narrative yeah. is. Wade's like, Wade's saying he's got stupid confidence on common. Uh, yeah. Quincy's the baby face. He, he's like, I just don't see it. <laughs> and he, he walks floats off. Yeah, yeah. On Fantastic. His he says, he actually says, tee hee. Tee hee. Yeah. Was that old comedian? He had the thing where he said someone came up to him on the street and goes, can you take creative criticism? He goes, of course. And the guy replied, you crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought of. I like Quincy. I don't. <laughs> I think he's mean. But it's, it's that sets up a Zion Quincy match where... Oh, Zion Quincy. Zion, <laughs> yeah. Zion Quinn on Quincy's so yeah. shoulders. There you go. What a tag team. Uh, yeah. And then he's going to lose again. And you go, what do you think of the match afterwards? <laughs> Zion Quinn... I'm surprised they've not tried to push him more because he's got the look totally. And there's been other wrestlers who've had the look, but not a character yet. Mm. And they've pushed, they've given them way more of a chance than they have Zion. <laughs> to be what? fair, like, you know, Kevin Owens said, people like Zion Quinn, there's millions. Yep. Mm. Always fall by the wayside, but like Kevin Owens and Johnny Gargano. No, Zion's different. He's got a tattoo on the back of his head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that, that promo from Kevin's just going to hang around yeah. for a while people like uh, yeah you know what good there's point one thing I like about uh, Zion Quinn and that's his Power Rangers move where the yeah. guy's running off the ropes and he goes bah! he's X and that's his move yeah 
t- takes him down. He stands front mm. and holds block. Okay. Yeah. Power Ranger, maybe in the car park, no. the dangerous oh, car no. park. Zoe Stark and Nikita Lyons argue with toxic attraction over who should challenge for the tag titles next. Mandy points out that Stark and Lyons are outnumbered, but I'll be. I love that. In every TV show, in every film, and everything. Oh, yeah. You and one army. And someone's always there. Because <laughs> Alba Fry arrives. Fire. Alba fire. Fry. <laughs> Daughter of Don Fire arrives and sets the ground on fire. Toxic attraction, get in the car and bloody well drive off. Right. Yeah, they're like, well, we've, well, enough of that. Yeah, Zoe yeah, Stark yeah. nearly perished in this scene. <laughs> this the was flames. amazingly done, right? Yeah. The flames like, were up in the air as she was stood over them. How has she got away and with it? She's got quite poofy hair as well. <laughs> it might have been Donna. Imagine yeah. an ounce of hairspray in that hair. Oh. Would it be like a game of vodka thing I was speaking about oh, earlier? God, I, yeah. <laughs> um, but I good, oh. glad she's so nimble. Because if she wasn't, if she was a Zion Quinn, mm. he's nimble. Who's not nimble? Who's not Come. nimble? He, yeah, well. Comes quite ploddy. Oh. Mm. No, he's not. He's quite sticky. <laughs> like a sticky insect. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That vodka game, they do that in pubs, don't they? That sets up the main event. BJ and JB win the... Yes, are you as surprised as I am? Win. That's right. The Pope Rules main event... I'm surprised they won. ...against Gallus. Yeah. Who I think are winless so far. Maybe. Yeah. I think they've won one. Yeah. I don't they've remember lost, that. They've lost the rest. You they've won like a, like a four-team... Like oh, mixed, okay. like, yeah. Uh, afterwards, Gallus attack security guards and referees until police arrive I, and arrest them. The structure of this it was segment was so weird. Weird, it was right? weird. Because they're doing the thing where they're not happy they've lost and they're shouting at them from the ramp going, Ay! and Joe Coffey's doing the terrace point where he's singled that one away fan. He's like, oh, after this match. <laughs> that we've and, lost. Yeah. And he's doing all this. And then, like, <laughs> security one by one stand in front of them and a member of Gallus will go, <laughs> yeah, it and then about, wonky. Then there's a big gap, and then ten seconds later, another one, and then the police come. <laughs> like, yeah, hooligans. It's weird. The police are on standby anyway. Okay, they are hooligans. Yeah. Right. Where they was don't Hank? Attack the police because they're not daft. But... Hank would have sort Hank's him. a superstar now. What are you joking? Oh, he signed yeah. his contract. He can't yeah. be a security guard anymore. He's, he's graduated from the young boy security status. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but the, yeah, the, the match itself, it was okay. For NXT there was one event. part that was outstanding. Go on. And it reminded me of the standoff between Darth Maul and Ewan McGregor in Star Wars episode. Darth one. Maul and <laughs> Ewan McGregor. I forgot what his name is in the film. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> now, funny enough, it is. <laughs> Not Qui-Gon Jinn. It's all coming back now. Qui-Gon's Liam Neeson. Yeah, it's Liam yeah, Neeson. Yeah, yeah. And then you got uh, Anakin Skywalker as your little fella. Yeah. It? So it's, it's, it's a standoff. <laughs> the little it's fella. got you know where they're fighting through the um like it's like the doors, but they're not doors. Yeah, it's like yeah. shields. Oh, the laser door so, thing. Yeah, yeah. They're on, on a, a timer. They're on a, they're on a timer, mm. and they're waiting for the time. The bit where Gallus are in the ring with their weapons, and the young boys are on the outside mm. with their weapons. That was like Darth Maul and Ewan McGregor. Just waiting. Just waiting. And then but, boom. What sat down? Very calm. That bit's Sorry. class because it shows the characters of each. So Qui Gon starts meditating because he's calm. Darth Maul's pacing because he's evil yeah. and I think Obi-Wan's like young and fiery at this point so he's like mm. yeah. and then one of the worst decisions that ever happened in Star Wars what a fight, what cut, a fight. Cut, cut him in half cut him in half aye. what's wrong with that I would have loved to see Darth Maul just in other films showing up oh, and the, be like the, the aha fact, it's me the fact they killed him off get. yeah what do you find on that bottomless pit oh. yeah. do you know death's rubbish Boba Fett yeah Han Solo the law... accidentally... Right. He's meant to be the coolest, most badass man. Yeah. And as, Sorry, he, as, he, as he falls to his death, ah, he's like Just screaming his lungs Bo- out. Bo- Boba Fett, I guess you've got to call him. I've always called him Boba. Boba. <laughs> he's meant to be a really cool, badass, like bounty hunter in yeah. space and that. And he dies because Harrison Ford pulls back to punch someone else and presses a button on his jetpack and he flies yeah, into a blind pit. Han Solo yeah. beats him in a fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and he flies into a pit and a monster. Yeah. Oh, no, him. the button in my jetpack that says fly forward. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops. Anyway, yeah, this match happens. It's it's okay. They took some nice table bumps, though. Joe flying off the apron like a mad get. Mm-hmm. And Wolfie going through a table just because. But then there was one bit where it's so anticlimactic, like, they get the glass. and I hated like, this bit. Oh, no, they've got the glass. Oh, it's getting serious mm-hmm. now, lads. Psh. And the crowd was like, hey! It's like, oh, that didn't look serious you need, at you all, need did claret. it? You need claret yeah, yeah, for bringing yeah. the glass And Wade's like, they'll get you a rest. They'll get you 10 years and, you <laughs> and all this stuff. And uh, and it just it was just nothing. It was just a complete throwaway spot. But like, Wade's commentary did not match. No. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It was, all, it was all right. There was a couple of nights, nice, like the bit where um, well, Wolfram, or, or, or Patrick with Wolfram Williams, uh, he gets a chair, but Mark's holding one of the the the, the Texans. Oh, the Texans. I don't know what they what are. are. The Cowboys. I think the Buchanan family are from Alabama. <laughs> I've just guessed that, but I think, oh, am I thinking of Boss Man? He's uh, Georgia. Oh, no, oh no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, Have you ever heard Bill Buchanan speak? No. No, that guy is really sudden. Is he? Yeah. Oh, really? I'm B Square. He got one promo with Right to Censor where he was actually his best Georgia work. Georgia as well. Uh, where he was talking about how, like, because he's in Right to Censor. Why have you joined Right to Censor? He was just on the microphone like, I don't want my children watching this violence on TV. <laughs> and it was like, what the hell? That's what he sounds like. Brooks Jensen is from Georgia. Uh -huh. Josh Briggs is from... Stalin's from there. <laughs> Sorry. Josh Briggs is from... It doesn't say, but he went, to, he went to the University of... He went to UMass, which I guess is Massachusetts. I mean, it, just my, the, the University for Big Lads. Uh, Mass. Ah, oh, that uh, nice. Yeah. nice. But I, I think I think Gallus have now been written off. For um, them. For yeah. Them. Uh, which is a... Maybe it's like in a Buddy Matthews way. Maybe they've got to go and sort some stuff out. Tom Campbell had a theory. Oh, go on. <laughs> well, he reckons that they've just they've been invited over full time, so they've got this little break to get their house in order. Oh, get said. their visas and that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Or they're gonna show up like we were speculating a few weeks ago. Not show, here. Like, Oh, Drew needs some lads to help him out for this um, oh, um, Survivor no, Series thing. No, no, don't put that out there. I can't believe you've Wolf, done this. Uh, get Wolfie involved, not the other two. <laughs> no, Mark Coffey's the best one of the lot. I like the Wolfie. best one. <laughs> <laughs> We're the wolf pack. <laughs> There's never been one of them in wrestling before. <laughs> um, I thought that the, the match was going to be like Drew and Sheamus and Butch and... And Ridge, mm. and then one more, Wolfie, oh, maybe, <laughs> against the bloodline. the bloodline. And that's when Zayn's going to cost them the match and the cracks start to mm. ping, ping. That could work as well. Mm. I'll yeah, allow it. Yeah. Sound like Fraser Porter there. Mm. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, the Harry's house. Anyway, <laughs> AW Dynamite. I wish we got Orange versus Juice instead. Oh, hey. that's good. That's, that's, that's a you. keeper. I was more proud of the Muta one, but thank you. Nothing's cuter than like important, isn't it? The Jericho Appreciation Society and Luigi Primo. Wow, I wonder uh -oh. what him and, uh -oh. what him and Jericho have in common. But Jericho was, Jericho, Jericho, Jericho was vaxxed, didn't he? He had to get vaxxed for his boat trip. Oh, I see. So oh, oh, okay. Well, I don't know what else we're talking about then. To open the show, they celebrate Jericho's Ring of Honor world title win. Uh, they refuse to share their pizza with the crowd. <laughs> Heat. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Plus, you know. It worked. The crowd were like, we want pizza. One an easy way just to uh, have the pizza, but it's not uh, Philadelphia style or whatever it was. It was New York style, New York but they were in style, Philadelphia. Yeah. Right, yeah, there we go. Yeah. It's like them saying like... It's square pizza or some, it's the wrong part of the country. We've got some chips in Newcastle, everyone <laughs> right, going, yeah. oh! Yeah, oh, like, do you want chips? Yeah, 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 Do you want gravy on it? No! Uh, yeah, oh, who yeah. doesn't like gravy on chips? Southerners. Oh, what? Uh, they refuse to share their pizza, and Jericho claims to already be the most viewed Ring of Honor champion in history <laughs> I love that. because nobody knows about Ring of Honor. <laughs> that probably wasn't something that somebody that should be saying brilliant. on TV at no, AEW because, yeah, that is a legitimate criticism. It was funny, though. Yeah, it was, it was true. That who was cares the... about... Yeah, who cares about Ring of Honor? Who cares Jericho, about... shut up. That's the only good bit of this segment for me. Oh, right. well, I'll carry on doing the rest. He gives, <laughs> the he, <laughs> his clothes on. he gives Daniel Garcia a new bucket hat, which Garcia rejects before taking out Luigi Primo. He says he's had enough. Well, Peter. Uh, <laughs> Jericho says it's time for Garcia to choose, but Danielson interrupts. He and Jericho argue over Garcia, who wants to team up with Brian against Jericho and Sammy. Matt Minard interrupts and gets so wonderfully angry at Brian. Oh, he did. God, he's good in the mm -hmm. mic and faces and everything. The into a match between the two, which Brian wins after Claudio Castanetti takes care of Angelo Parker well, by takes simply care <laughs> lifting him up and walking away yeah. by playing an old 16-bit platformer. He oh, look, flopped around wonderfully well. It was like watching Puppet Jack when you throw him about. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, but the opening, the opening promo, the AEW Galaxy stuff, appreciate us. That's yeah, the, that's, appreciate that's us. That's the best angle in wrestling you're trying to like laugh at. Yeah. And you're not very good yourselves. Oh. Nelson. The shots at Mandela. WWE are not landing anymore. They used to, but they're not landing anymore. Well, were, there, were there any in this segment? I don't think I've there just, was. I've just said to Acknowledge me or um, appreciate us. Yeah. I didn't. Do you you know what? Maybe I'm being sick. I didn't realize that was maybe oh, a WWE The way thing. they say it, though. Do like, you know what? Maybe yeah. I'm just so far deep I, in it. I'm I didn't not realize. 100% yeah, on it, but this week made me more. What, what is going on? Two seconds. There's a lot of noise. Tribal chief, you deceive us. 
I don't know what. <laughs> and then the guy. <laughs> He's talking to the elders like Heyman. It's the elders at this Affa, we're sorry. <laughs> and then the guy. Ga- was that the Garcia turn? No, well, well no, we're, we're building up to it. It's a story. I think what Tony needs is that to do what we're now, building up? He, he needs like, to stop teasing us now. He needs to poo or go off the, the pot. The Jamie Hayter thing has gone on too long for me, and the Garcia thing. The, it, Gar- uh, the Jamie Hayter thing's ended. She's back with Brit. Recently, in, yeah, no, it? no, it'll, it'll, no, she no, is. no, that's not the end of it. <laughs> they can't do that. Yeah, but yeah. recently, I, on my weirdest episodes, I've done stuff with. Billy Kimmel and Tori Wilson have just happened to be on like two of the ones I've done. And in every single every single time they appear, Tori Wilson, I think she's turned on Billy Kidman twice and three times in I'll two bet shows. She has. No, no, no. She's betrayed sorry, him. Sorry. sorry. Like three <laughs> times in two shows. She did that as well. And it's like what I'm feeling about Daniel Garcia. Like Jerry Gunnish needs to realize, no, he's he doesn't want to be in the group anymore. It's just the way he's like, well, I think I've had enough, good sir. It's not a moment. No. I hope we are building two way moment, but mm. now that moment has been diluted by this little thing. He was like, "What if I team with Brian Danielson?" Crowd why, go mental. Why couldn't they just do it? Just do when, one when moment he, when he won in Buffalo. Jericho comes out to congratulate him. Bang with yeah. the bell. That would have been amazing. Imagine if you know when the goat and the donkey broke up in WWE. Oh, Owens and Owens Jericho. and Jericho. Yeah. Oh. Imagine if they did several little moments before that one big moment. Crap. Yeah. Wouldn't have had the same effect. I like, I like, lost I like unspoken hints, <laughs> but I don't like yeah. spoken ones hints. where he's like, well, what do I do? Well, what if I team with Danielson? I think I've had enough good, sir. It wasn't the worst segment of the show, <laughs> but we'll talk about that. No, uh, Didn't think it landed, though. No. I, I'm, 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 I'm of the uh, opposite, though, Ooh. because I have been like, all right, JAS, WWE, yeah, okay. hey, get it! Uh. I'm like, all right, whatever. But this week, I went back to liking it well, way more than I had. Um Mostly because of Jericho, which is, I don't know what the hell's happened to us, but no, he was actually just very good on the mic and the fact that he is building up to this going, look, I'm so much better than Ring of Honor. Isn't this great? I'm going to ruin Ring of Honor. While the Ring of Honor Pure Champions right there. It's like, oh, here we go. I'm looking forward to this. That is And uh, more later, Jericho compliments to come. Ringo on commentary again, though. The music man is off his nut. He just started playing music randomly, didn't yeah, he? They played a bit of Brian's <laughs> song. Yeah, he just yeah. To play the Oh no, they just stopped the song dead, didn't they? And it, he went, whoa, whoa no, start, no, fade. It was like they thought they like, were going to an advert, but it went like, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, was it? And then he's calling Excalibur this week. You lovely little rice crispy you. You can snap, crackle, and pop me anytime you want, sweetheart. But then interestingly, he was like the proposed like Garcia being part of the BCC. And he was like, no, no. I would rather have Garcia as an opponent because you need great opponents, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, steel sharp and steel. Mm. Mm. But the beat down from Daddy Magic went on for ages. <laughs> Good pause. <I> <laughs> it went on for absolutely ages, and I was like, "This comes a mere yeah. days after Action Bronson was pissing in his eye." Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it needs to be said as well. They were in where were they? Philly, Philly, Philly. Okay, yeah. silly you Philly. couldn't tell, could you? Due to the fact that the crowd made bugger all noise. Ooh, oh my God. Hey, look, Philly fans, I Whoa. could be their own worst enemy when it comes to this. Either they wasn't properly mic'd up or they were just not. EC Dub. Them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, is oh it, why is it that EC Dub, right, is so associated with Philadelphia? But then you watch I'm any, so it's always like, this yeah. happened in New York. The arena's know? there, oh, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The fabled ECW yeah, arena. The, the, yeah, those, those shows where they do like, one night like stand 05. Heyman's a New Yorkian. Bully Ray is a. I don't know. New York. Yeah. I need to bring up the song Mixed Signals by Robbie Williams now. Which one's that? You're sending me mixed signals. It's 2017. Oh, no, no, no. It was like, what was it called? The, the, the Heavy Entertainment Show, I think the album was called. It's off that album. Because... Well, she's getting old. Behind the scenes, at the stalls, they're still selling CM Punk t-shirts. But then this promo package that happens after the opening segment where they're on about Moxley and Jose. Tony Schiavone says it was the summer of Moxley. Mm. I did notice that. I didn't think that oh. was. Mm. She been piping a fake NXT two point. Oh. oh. Oh no, you. What were you going to say, Matthew? I've cut you off. Oh no. Oh no. You said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm waiting to see what happens. This but... segment's gone on for ages, hasn't it? Sorry. Willie <laughs> Uda interrupts the show to cut a promo on MJF. You fat old prick. He said that to Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he did. Wheeler. Was better than last week. So he tried to go like, "All right, cool. I'm I gonna, just, I'm gonna just say all the stuff. Come oh on, my God. let's just hurry up, once MJF. Let's do the usual bits." Once it kicked off, you know, it was just two blokes. What? Okay. Yeah. Wow. I just want to say the sandbagging. I just want to say <laughs> that um, Jack says he's injured. 
<laughs> they both uh, were just shouting at each other a lot at one point. I was like, oh, I'm shouting. I like to use Kavorka in this, like, because he starts off, with, yeah, let's go on with it. Just do your little low hanging fruits right, and right, do right. your little sports, sports reference. Yeah, yeah, they still yeah. booed it, though. And Even though he said it sarcastically, they went, oh, boo. I like that. And I like <laughs> the Phillies <laughs> are good. <laughs> yeah. like, come on, Philly. Oh. I like the fact he's like, uh, they haven't qualified like for whatever for Philadelphia, we've learned. Uh, now, wow. Again, for all those CGW and ECW shows I watched, and all the times I'd go there, sit in their hands and be like, wow, all right, Matthew. the bell would ring, ding, 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 10 seconds of the match. Boring. Shooting on it, One of the worst things to happen to wrestling was the fact that Heyman did such a good job of making it go like, the wrestlers are the second most important thing, but you guys are the number one. Oh. And they've, they've lived off that. They've lived off that rep for oh, decades. I can't now. wait for people to email in from Good. Philly. They, now. they know. I've got how, how, what, Starcast Six is in where? Phil. I love <laughs> my favorite Tom Hanks film. Would you believe it? It's Philadelphia. But where's, where's Extreme Rules? Is that in Philly? I don't know. Hmm. No, oh, WrestleMania's supposed to. Sorry. Is it WrestleMania that's going to be in the Philly area? Sure the dude, no, that's in about, LA. People, next year. Oh, people keep talking about the yeah, maybe one of the, also one event is because people keep on talking about the WrestleMania. Um, I think they're doing an ECW tribute at the WrestleMania. Like, uh, how uh, the remaining people that are still alive? It's in what? Philly. He's just googled rules. WrestleMania Extreme forty. Rules. Oh my god, god, life is going to end soon. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry, Matthew. Before I interrupted you, do you want to? You can carry on. That was me. who was happen. talking about you as Kavorga. Like, I like oh. the way he was uh, laxadaisical. Then as the segment went on, he started just losing his right completely. Mm. And he was like, bad things happen in Philadelphia. This is the first time I've watched you, you to speak and think, oh, I believe what you're saying here, young boy. I agree. And I like the fact that when MJF came out, he basically just said, I've heard what you said there. I'm going to acknowledge that you've said it. I'm going to do it anyway because I don't give an SH1T. Mm. I like the entire segment. Yeah, much better than last week. Yes. Hey, Tony, uh, sorry, Tony. You were coming out and going, yeah, yeah, could we just skip ahead, skip all this, blah, blah, blah. But then the crowd being like, yay, we like this dude. And then Jeff be like, no, 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 no I'm not going to Wheeler do that. is from Philly, which helps. Aye. Mm. But, but, but it still yeah. worked, it worked. And he goes, we've, we've wrestled each other loads of times. We've come up the, mm. the all these little indies and stuff like that. But I don't want to fight. Yeah, I'm going to make millionaire at 26, blah, blah, blah. You're all poor. Uh, and here's the ass boys. <laughs> Sorry, not called it. You can call them the yeah, ass boys. Know, the yeah, gun club. That's yeah, the old the ass boys. No, no, no. The heel been. would call them the gun club. Mm. The face call them the ass boys. Uh, arrived to back MJF up and he says he won't face Judah until next week. He also teases cashing on his chip on John Moxley. Yeah, and then MJF did a good job of getting the crowd to boo him because, you know, he knows, like, well, it's Philly. Yeah. They're going to cheer us a bit. You stink and the flyers are terrible or whatever. The Penguins the, aren't real, yeah. whatever. Pittsburgh's the Penguins, unfortunately. Oh, well, pe Penguins are real. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Pac, like, Pac was cutting the same promo here, and he's like, well, he oh. wouldn't even know that Newcastle's not won a major trophy since 1969. <laughs> oh. That sucks for him. He would still be. All right, Roy <laughs> Keane, stop it. <laughs> it's just funny how he was like, he wouldn't even know that. Funny. In that accent as well. Mm. Yeah. That was a good segment, though. I thought yeah, everyone hit their, you, hit their mark very well. Yeah. Mm. So you're trying to be positive there, EW, this week. Oh, we can. Well, no, we're being fair. I just like the bits I like and hate the bits I hate. And that's it. You know what? I'm, yeah. 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 It's it's weird, isn't it? Because I'm like yourself. I'll try to be fair. But at the same time, it's like I do find myself procrastinating more over the bits I don't like than the bits I do like. So I'm trying to turn that frown upside down. Mm. John Moxie beats Juice Robinson and stares down MGF in his private box. They did the same bloody thing where MGF did it last week. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great different. match. But what's MJF doing? Mm, it's going to be a thing. It wasn't as prominent this week. I thought they yeah. did it. And it put, was a point of the box this time. Mm. Hangman Page arrives and gets in Moxie's face to a big pop mm. the crowd like him MGF interrupts on the mic but Wheeler appears behind him in the box and attacks until security drag him <laughs> away and security yeah. do their job no police needed looking at you Gallus <laughs> <laughs> that shows how unhinged hooligans they are what yeah. unhinged hooligans they are true. Right, exactly. what do you think of the match Jack? I uh, mm, I like most Moxley matches anyway um and I like Juice, but I preferred Face Juice. And I know he's been a heel. Face Juice sounds awful. And I know he's been. A, he's, <laughs> I know he's been a heel for. Moxley got some Face Juice in this match, actually. The crowd laughed. Oh, look didn't at him. They? Laughed when he re he got his head above the <laughs> thing. Did he laugh? Just saw one. Because it happens every bloody week, doesn't it? This is a. Throw I know this is the whoop mm. <laughs> throw. Like his groundhog. It's just it's, it's, it doesn't need to happen in this throwaway match, which wasn't for the title or anything. Yeah. Well, a random dynamite. Juice is a foe of his from New Japan. Oh. You got a juice against juice. Yeah. Oh, you don't. Yeah, you do. Ah, man. Eat, eat up. Didn't uh, wasn't it Juice who broke Kevin Owens' nose in his first NXT match? Yeah. 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 Juice. Man. That bomb strike. CJ Parker. Mm. That's right. Yeah, I like Regal was like, I've known him since he was 21 years of age. <laughs> uh, so he hired him for NXT. I like, I like the match, but it was nothing like 
Because even though they went, this is a title eliminator, Juice will get a shot if he beats him. I never once thought he actually would. I think that was the... No, yeah, right. Do you know yeah. why? Go on. Because there's been too many of these matches recently Ooh. where a guy has yeah. been brought in for, I'm not going to say a cheap pop, but you know, like, an, oh, he's coming. And that's nice, isn't it? Why can't storylines be at the forefront of AW once again? That's what I'm asking. Story not not instant reacting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like because the matches like this, we've seen it so much, especially with Moxley. Because I think, I think Moxley. Tony has lost someone. Yeah, Moxley's bunch, yeah. Tony's lost someone who he knew dearly once, who is was brought up in the southern tradition of wrestling and long term <laughs> storylines. And his name is Cody Rhodes, and Tony's lost him. And since then, he can't write a story. Yeah, and you can't. You can't. It's apart all from the acclaimed. Maybe does that count? And that was by accident. That was, uh, yeah, they got themselves over. Yeah, that was them. Yeah. They pulled the... a Zack Ryder and got themselves over Since accidentally. Since Cody left, has there been any good stuff? Looks like they're right. singing Elvis then. What are the stories? Since Mark Cody <laughs> left me. <laughs> Let's not mention feuds, well. right? But what are the stories in AEW at the moment? Not the feud, not M X versus MJF's X. MJF's whole thing. Right, that's just... Yeah, one. Garcia, will he, won't he? Are right, we not yeah, counting Punk in the Bucks and all the real stuff? Yeah, 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 no, not the real yeah, stuff. No, no. It's actual on. Okay, that's, that's a good, um, good, good thing. Swerve and Keith. Oh, oh yeah, they're potential, potential breakup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, Look at all these talented women. <laughs> <laughs> nah. nah. <laughs> you put your finger down. <laughs> uh, that's what they said this week. Oh, uh, Jericho wanting to ruin the lineage of that's Ring of Honor. Oh, yeah, that's the one that started this week. Four stories. There's probably more, but. Is there? I don't know. It feels like there's 900 wrestlers on, on contract. On Dynamite and I'm Rampage. To, I'm, I'm thinking. Hook is he's just sorting this thing out. Uh, Joe and Wardlow. Whatever. The, where where, nah, not for the, me. where uh, are the trust busters? I'm just going to call that one. Where are the <laughs> trust busters? <laughs> the, the glue, they keep it together. Yeah. There's four um, stories. I think they've lost their way big time. Me. Matt, um, and the, Matt and Private Party. Are there more titles? Oh, yeah, that's a fifth, I guess. Yeah. Andrade, oh, I think, great. tweeted this week. Andrade doesn't count. I think he tweeted the amount of seconds he was on TV this week. <laughs> he tweeted like 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, are there more titles? Yes. Than yeah. Oh, yeah, there's more titles than stories. Yeah, yeah. way more. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Cody Rhodes. Kip Sabian, master of poison. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Darby <laughs> Allen versus himself. Yeah. Uh, every oh, night. oh, I clicked all my neck. That was uh, lovely. And uh, Jay Cargill is great. I want to <laughs> issue the most sincere apology to Cody Rhodes. So I used to slander him at the start of this year in his booking and his self-centered nature, as it would appear at the time. Well, I, but I, he was the Sean Paul of that promotion. He was the, the glue. glue. <laughs> yes, there was, was the fat man. He was the fat man scoop. He was the hype man. Tony <laughs> Khan needed. Yes, there were missteps, the Agogo go feud and whatnot. Yeah, the last, the last you know year what? of Cody, though, no let's, not, let's not kid ourselves and misremember things. That last year was rotten. Yeah. It wasn't rotten. The Agogo, go the hair dye. <sighs> the, the, uh, the good match with Sammy Go um, the, Guevara. The rambling provos near the end. Oh, they were weird. <laughs> <laughs> but generally <laughs> yeah I bet again uh, when Arn Anderson pulling a gun on you was enough to scare you away that didn't sound quite scary now you say it like that yeah, maybe it's Arn maybe, maybe that's the reason why it's all gone wrong where's Arn been he was there no he wasn't oh yeah he's not nah, been there for ages hasn't he no, no. so like but that, that nicely sets up the segue to the next segment <laughs> Uh, Soraya wait how do you pronounce Soraya. Soraya Soraya thank you Bob. Soraya cuts a promo promising to create change in the women's division because she is the revolution because she was there in 2015 do you remember yeah 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 I mean she is right about that but yeah. that was 2015 she calls out the women's division and a smattering of baby faces arrive the four lasses come down the four lasses go that's us that's us <laughs> like the Von Trapp family all, getting the second mention of the podcast and what I didn't like was all coming out happily even though Tony Storm is presented as the best one they should be like separate yeah we're together we're, we're the good guys all... which is very WWE -ish. it was yes, such it was. a WWE yes, segment time. Uh, no WWE wouldn't it was a Vince segment a Vince segment Paige right. well I'm not going to call it that Lawsuits. Soraya he takes her ear out and puts Stephanie McMahon in and yeah, do the yeah. same thing and it's WWE. Yeah. And then she stands in front of them, including, you know, Tony Storm, the champ, who does get a chance to speak. They're interrupted by Britt Baker and her pals, which also now unexpectedly <laughs> counts Penelope Ford. <laughs> no, no, no time for stories. Uh, I mean, when did that happen? Why did that happen? Britt and Soraya argue back and forth. Sorry, I have said name wrong again. Sorry. Uh, back and forth. But Soraya says that her name rhymes with a swear word. Uh, it, Okay, so they talk. And again, uh, Britt, and I'm not saying it's subtle, but I guess by wrestling standards, it is going, oh, well done. You're just a catchphrase. Not like me, Britt Baker, DMD. <laughs> I'm merely doing a catchphrase. I like that bit. Um, the crowd chant for Jamie Hayter, mm. who 
realigned with Brit last week. Yeah, yeah. I think Trevor Dame pointed out is maybe the first naturally homegrown women's wrestler they've got in AEW. Was oh, he in the CTC? Hmm? Trevor Dame. <laughs> is he in the CTC? The cool yes. Twitter club. Yeah. Like that's it. not. That's not fair. I, I, I consider Brit homegrown in AEW. Like she wasn't that character she is now when the promotion started. Uh, okay, a, you know what? Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Then. Okay, she's sec two. Like how <laughs> Jade Cargill. She got a start yeah. there. Okay, yeah. Three then. Uh, like, my point is, there's not many of them. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay yeah, yeah. right. Mm. Yeah, good point. But, um, but speculates that Tony could lose her title to Serena Deeb right now. Uh, Deeb arrives, and they thought, you know what? We haven't had enough of uh, this little segment. We'll put her on commentary as well. Um, They're making a lumberjack match. She oh, makes it a... Under her breath, though. <laughs> They'll make it a lumberjack match and then she goes, uh, for the title. <laughs> she went, they, I've talked to Tony backstage and it's nice, by the way, to have a boss that bloody listens. Again. And I'm like, Whoa. hey, hey, guys, guess who sucks? Who's that? WWE. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I don't think that was what's that going to do with I anything? don't think that was one she was told to say. This whole promo had a, quite an unwritten, like a loose cannon sort of feel. When she told uh, off the teleprompter like guy. Husband. Time cue people, yeah. Like, I don't time cue. Don't time cue me. Yeah. Let's waste a bit more time. Well, and then she, she moved shouldn't. on quickly with the second. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, again, it's another one of those where the it's not the situation. It's Sorry. not the time to be throwing shots at Derui because they, yeah. they're not landing. They're not landing anymore. Triple H is You do that when, you're, on, when Tri- you're doing good. If Triple you're doing H, bad, you just yeah. Mm-hmm. Triple H is up, up on points and they keep going for the big knockout and missing. And Triple H, like Fury, is just well, around. That is a beautiful <laughs> analogy, by the way. Thank Jeff. you, Jim. <laughs> Wow, yeah. this was a pro- this was a bit of a car crash of a segment, like proper uh, rudder. And also the the highlight though, the, the the best car crash of the segment, <laughs> the destruction derby, was uh, her big line. Well, yeah, you may. Oh, again, it came after a really brutal line from Britt Baker, who absolutely washed Soraya. Oh, which she said, "Oh wow, another toy that'll get discarded." Mm. Which is like. Again, that's one of those things like Jericho talked about Ring of Honor. It's like, you know, that's too close to the truth, right? Yeah, same. And then yeah. she went, yeah, that's a good point. But let's just remember, your name rhymes with poo. <laughs> and the, Taz the went, silence oh. to that. <laughs> okay, because Philly had been on the hands all night anyway. But then Ooh, Taz... a shot of Philadelphia. <laughs> then, because so you can, hear, you can hear every bit of have the you confused... Been? You can have, yes. Did you have a bad you, time? Yeah, I had, I had a lovely hoagie. Um, Sorry? They, <laughs> what's that mean? No, it's, no, it's the, the, the hoagie. The, Sandwich? Yeah, yeah. It's like sandwich. a cheese day. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Sounds like something really yeah, different. I even did the hand test. You know, it's what they look like. Why'd I do that? Sandwich, a big sandwich. What are you laughing at? Big, girthy, uh, juicy sandwich. <laughs> anyway, just, yeah, so the, the car was so quiet that the, the commentators were, you could hear the disgusted. Okay. Taz, Taz I, I wish I had my cough button. <laughs> and then, then Excalibur goes. Just so everyone remembers, by the way, just to clarify, that's Soraya, not Soraya. And then she sits down on company and goes, everyone, my name is Soraya. And Excalibur goes, no, no, I've already, don't worry. Like, Excalibur has to have everything. I've already done that. I think it was because last week Excalibur kept going, Soraya, Soraya, Soraya. Uh, and putting them right. then Taz yeah. went, oh, Taz went, I liked when they were called Lumber Jills. And then Paige went, oh, Soraya went. <laughs> Stop it. She went, no, no, call them Lumberjacks, Taz. And Taz was like, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're equal opportunities over here. I was like, oh god, I was just waiting for something bad to be said. I was yeah. on, I was on edge the whole way oh, through. The best bit for me was when she says the Tony Storm, who's in the back of shot while Paige yeah, is at yeah, the yeah. forefront, she's finally being utilized to her full potential. <laughs> yeah, while like, she's what, stuck what, behind what, you, what, the what, champion. <laughs> It wasn't whole... really featured too much anyway. To I don't begin with. To we're through that, the looking glass. I don't want people to think that we're necessarily hammering Soraya too much. No, it's the right. I'm really yeah. scared of her family, but also because <laughs> yeah, but I will, also, what I said. But also, great, be- great bunch of people. But also because it's not really her fault. I think the whole conception of this segment was awful. Yeah. Like, it's a badly yeah. written up segment, and I don't think it's her fault. And, and it I felt quite bad for it actually. And it sucks as well because they're like, again, Deeb and Storm. I, I don't know if they AEW aware of this, but they're really good wrestlers. They are really oh, good yeah, wrestlers. So. Yeah. Tony Storm again actually leathered her and uh, had a lovely little thing but like the Ring of Honor and everything else it's like this is all happening we don't know if she can wrestle mm, yeah, so she's, she's like well, she hi said, it's me I'm said, like what are you here are you an ambassador well, for the said, women are you a revolution she's damaged or? but not broken great what does that mean I mean she can she I might don't know. Be able to this is what we need to, we need to like have this foundation yeah. before we start doing anything else so maybe like, she'll mentor 
the hater when she leaves Britt Baker's side. I think we're all haters right now. <laughs> Call them absolution. <laughs> yeah. Um, they were the other riot squad. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would just like, I don't know, obviously, pay, uh, sorry, Saraya being on the show, yeah, it should have happened because of the big debut last week. Mm. But having just her maybe come out and be on commentary and just make Tony Storm and Serena Deeb, you know, yeah. prop them up a bit, that would have been a lot more effective yeah. than what actually happened. Yeah, to make things fair, she should say all the regal stuff to Taz. Yes. Ooh, scrummy, scrummy, Tazzy, Tazzy. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Taz, I'd love to... I don't know. I'm not going to be bothered. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, what's the yeah. point? Um, but yeah, good match they had, the, the two lasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was almost an afterthought. So. Cereb- uh, Deeb, that submission hold where she sits on the neck and yanks mm. the arms back. God. Oh, oh, man. Then she transitioned that straight to a different thing. Imagine if we had like 10 more minutes of that yeah. instead of what happened before. <laughs> you also imagine that like, the people back, running backstage who running things would go like, See, that, that, that's what you guys wanted, right? Some more focus on the women's division. Go, no! <laughs> no, that's the wrong kind of focus. No. The match was the right kind of focus. Yes. The yeah. finish. Oh, the middle oh, rope pile driver. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Filthy. Yeah. Scary. Delightful. It was done well, though. Yeah. Backstage, they claimed on an open challenge for Friday. He uh... arrives and accuses Billy Gunn of costing he and Swerve the tag belts by interfering. Are you ready for next Wednesday? National Scissoring Day, officially. <laughs> MJF, MJF and you are brawling, by the way. Do you reckon they'll get the scissors out and just... Oh. Like back in the day. Like Sid and... Jesus. Uh, yeah. On. On. Oh, it was on, wasn't it? Mm. In the hotel corridor. Oh, God. I should be Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> not mentioned him. Jeffy D. Uh, the AFO argue backstage. Hey, it's one of those stories. Oh, with this An- was what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> with them just, they were just Butch yelling at each other. Butch and the Blade... Camo edition, lovely. Oh, I'm dressed in like army men. Oh, nice. Lovely. Mm. Mm. Matt Hardy meets with a disgruntled private party after Andrade takes Butch and Blade's side because they're way cooler um, and implies that they should reunite with him. Yes, they should. Time to, get to fly, boys. Far away from that. <clears throat> I was about to call him a brick. But <laughs> the thing that's weighing them down, Andrade, the Anchor. Airfoil. Anchor. Millstone. Yes. Noose. Oh, my goodness. Noose. Noose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of... Okay, and my heart is going to have a huge stable of lads for some reason, so they have something to do. And then it's like, okay, now Andrade's with this massive stable. Now Matt is out the stable, and I was just... But it's Matt literally just Andrade, uh, Butcher, and Blade now, isn't it? But Matt and Jeff, like, well, potentially Jeff, being aligned with Private Party, who are sort of like them when they were younger. I like that. That's what it was originally. Yeah, And I, like, I thought that worked, yeah. yeah. So that getting back together would work for both parties, and I hope they do. And I hope so they have a wonderful party. Yes. Wow. Ain't wow. no pie like a hardy party. Yeah. Ricky Stark squashes a jobber. He does. One step forward and two steps <laughs> back. He just won a massive blow-off match on Rampage with what we're beating jobbers now. I try oh, to... so I'm all right with I, that. Ah. It's never a bad thing just to squash a job. It doesn't always have to be competitive. Come on! I tried to stay up to watch it live last night, and this I fell asleep after this squash for some reason. I'm not saying that it just was... Just didn't wake you up? The fault of Ricky Look at him! <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> woof, woof, I like moo, moo, et cetera. I love his theme music and everything. Maybe I was wanting a, a longer match with a more established name for Ricky. I don't know. But then I had to finish the rest of the show today. Mm. Yeah. That's a shame because then the main event, the now really good Chris Jericho beats Bandido, <laughs> aka former Ring of Honor world champion, which makes sense. Now, there, is, there was a story here, to be fair. Bandido mm. lost the title, didn't get his rematch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gets the rematch now. Mm. Fair enough. FTR look at this going, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Say, say that again? Huh? Mm. Uh, he cuts a promo afterwards, promising to destroy Ring of Honor's legacy by oh. beating every great yes. champion. So, as people hope, that means Michael Elgin will not be showing up. <laughs> that held the belt. He challenges Brian Danielson before taking out the Ring of Honor head. ring. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> ring of Honor ring, announce it with a Judas effect because he means, yeah. 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 Sorry, obviously, Todd will actually be choking. But the Ring of Honor ring announcer goes, you were Ring of Honor. Yeah, Judas. Taking you out. Good bump, by the way. Mm. Yeah. Good snap. Good pop. <laughs> Chris, uh, what are your nuts? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, so this match, uh, Bandido, I don't know if you were, this is really good. And I thought, oh. I'm aware. Okay. I've pretended to watch PWG shows before. Hey, I haven't. <laughs> oh, he's really good. <laughs> oh, he's, a... he's small and nimble, but also really strong. Oh, that one armed gorilla press had <sighs> me saying, ooh, 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 at home. So it did. Yeah, it's just arms called you for a suplex for a bit. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, taking all the bumps. And again, Chris Jericho put in I would love a... if he turned out to be Hooventu Guerrero. <laughs> I just always see that. that. I'm like, imagine if he was... There was no mistakes in that match. There was no mistakes in that match, though, wasn't it? Oh! Oof! Wow! Juicy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Jericho taking Hurricane Rana's off the apron to the floor. 
Uh, yeah. The stuff, the fall away yeah. slam thing off the oh, top. I, I love him. Oh. That, but a guy the size of Jericho as well. You're like, all right, go. He was like Gargano, wasn't he? Mm. Kickouts. Oh. <laughs> no, I stop it. I'm, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm, see, I'm being positive. No, no, no. This was this was this is the main event. This, this is, is the, jo- the, Johnny Bait. Pre- <laughs> Procedures. Ring of Honor World Title. Oh, it was cool. That Jericho is now going to kill by taking on all the great champions. <laughs> Which it's a but similar Danielson enough is one of them. Line. Well, that's my one drawback for this is that I'm worried that Danielson is just going to beat him straight away. Whereas I'd rather see Jericho take out your Davy Richardses, your Eddie Edwardses. Hear me out. Your Adam Coles, even. No, he's been gone. You, you know who will return? Will return at the culmination of this story. Daniels? Punk? Punk. Oh my God. <laughs> if you ever was going to come back, that would be it, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. oh. People get upset because nice. you use that old song. Misery, yeah. Kintaro, yeah. Miseria, Mis- Miser- Miseria. Do, 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 do. Yeah, <laughs> the EastEnders theme. Yeah, that's all I heard <laughs> then with the drums. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, so, yeah, Bandito's great. Will this carry on? Who knows, but I Why was... Why is he challenged Danielson so soon? And again, the crowd were loud for this. The crowd mm. were like, oh, they have been awake. Fantastic, good. Yeah. And I sent the picture of the thing earlier, Dan, if you wouldn't mind hopping Does it Morishima up. Does Morishima still wrestle? After the show went off uh, the no. air. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I don't know oh, if sorry. this is a in, in, oh. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if this is a hint to what you remember when Triple H did this to Cedric Alexander but not quite as enthusiastically when they were like Yay! sign him up yeah Yay. it's like a season finale I'm sure Tony <laughs> imagine credits like, I'm sure Tony yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you have me watching AW <laughs> jumps and hugs him and stuff like maybe they could sign him Sentimos I don't know <laughs> oh it's so good I know this, the you're picture. the best Around. <laughs> Look at the the <laughs> around, around. You know the end of Street Fighter. He's off his lips. History repeats itself. Trying <laughs> you succeed. Do you know the end of Street yeah, Fighter? Yeah, yeah. The movie where they go, and they'll do the pose. Street Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he also has got a really dry mouth there, Tony. His, his top lip stuck Tony to his teeth. Nice. Stop it. You can't Sorry. help but bring up Tony Nese. I think great. And if they ever do a, 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 a scrum, not a scrummy scrum, but a, a, a media scrum. I think we'll ask all the good questions and we won't say anything controversial. Oh, <laughs> we'll be Ross. There's another picture. Like, you under the table. There's another picture of Bandido and Tony where it looks like he's about to belly to belly him. Give him a big old hug. Mm. I, could that be like a Triple H? Like, oh, we're going to sign this guy? Maybe. They don't need... Well, they t- no, you know what? I'll, I'll sign him. <laughs> Go on. Do it. No, he'll end up in the air, for. <laughs> don't do it. Don't bother. He'll be wrestling Mark Sterling in no time. <laughs> Coming soon to AEW Dark near you, yeah. Bandido. <laughs> oh, what a what a crazy week for wrestling. Yeah, man. It was. <laughs> I, don't know what yeah, like, I would like to retract what I said at the start of this podcast, yeah, which was yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The week in wrestling. Thank you very much. Let's have a run in our mail bag. <laughs> ah, let's have a little look in the mailbag. News from our source, by the way, before we kick off in New York, not Stephen Scores, but okay. our, our friend Justin Henry, who I think was at the show last night, maybe. Yeah, bought last night. Omega and the Bucks are on a t shirt in AEW, but CM Punk is not. <laughs> and the House of Black, all three members are on there in their little horny masks. Mm-hmm. Work. A little horny mask. Mm. But there you go. The Punk spread officially Barrett. left AEW. That's what we've learned there. Well, we can break the news. I'm mm. being mm. facetious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. No problem. Hello, lads. This is my first time writing to you, though I've been a fan and patron for quite some time. Thank you, Shun. As of late, I've noticed that a certain podcast trend has disappeared. Oh. That being, guess what this word means in our culture? Oh, goody. Oh, yes. In honor of the debut of future WWE Hall of Famer, oh, Saul Rucker, oh, turn this over. I have sent in a collection mm. of surf culture slang. Yes. You all to guess I. Shaka bra. I've surfed twice or so. So I'm. So dumb. you know Shaka bra? Shaka bra. Well done, mate. <laughs> I've surfed my entire That's life, and everyone should try it at least once. That's right. Mm. Uh, bonus. Surfers are so relaxed, it will be very hard for you to offend us with your guesses. Yeah, just you mm. wait. Well, what if you try and turn up at a locals only surfing spot? Ooh. Yeah, that annoys them quite a bit in the 70s. <laughs> Lots of dog tongues. One That's of my favorite done, films. Right? Yeah. Uh, so let's have a look. Uh, a car. A car. A K A W, not a. Like a car oh. Wheels. Mm. Hey, good sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah greeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, re- uh, no, it means. An exclamation of shock or surprise. A car. Usually from seeing a huge wave. Oh, car. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Mel to watch in Tokyo Dome. Um, That's more like, oh, yeah. It's supposed, oh, supposed to be a car. It's supposed to be a car, but he's, he's, having, he's having so much fun, he can't even say it. Uh, 
Uh, didn't work. I'm sorry. Uh, clucked. Um, when someone else takes your surfboard off you, <laughs> I think <laughs> I've been clucked. I think it means drunk. It does sound good, but being no surfers. I think it means stoned. Being scared usually of waves. Oh. Are these all waver? Well, yeah. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really oh, I'm totally, Imagine a wave. I'm totally a waver. clucked, dude. Should it be like a wave that you think's coming but isn't? Oh, I've been clucked, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 having a good time with that. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Uh the expression Eddie would go. What? Um Oh um send it, do it, do that big wave. Make a massive fire pit. Kings <laughs> Kingston would do it. Yeah. There's petrol and blood. That's right. An encouragement to do something dangerous. Go on. In honor of Hawaiian surfer Eddie uh, Aikau. I okay. Aikau. I got that one. Rest in peace, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's dead. In honor of, maybe. Oh, yeah. yeah. I assume so. Uh, Grom and Grom Mum. Uh, Gromits are um, like newbies to surfing, I think. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. I reckon a long range surf, a bit of a surf safari. Mm. Let's go for a Grom. Oh. Uh, you're right, Jack Bowen. Oh, what was that to say? A young or inexperienced surfer and the mother of such. Okay. Hang 11. Ooh. Like the best ever, like, yeah. trick shot you've ever seen. Trick yeah. shot? Trick thing you've ever seen in your life? Yeah. That would make sense, but the answer's better. When a male surfer surfs in the nude. <laughs> oh, because, like, hanging 10 with all your toes are off the edge. Plus your winky. Yeah, got it. Oh, well done. I was oh, trying to figure out the... Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, ho, Dad. <laughs> I mean... A large northern character from Game of Thrones. Big Daddy Dudley. <laughs> a surfing poser. Buys oh. all the gear, but never surfs. Oh, Nathan Fraser. Uh, uh, <laughs> here's a... Okay, the best one. Landlord. The owner of a... The owner of a beach. I reckon something like... Oh, no! Something that eats you. No, I, um, shark in the water. That's exactly right. <laughs> oh, I, re- I thought that's it was going to be a surfer who was like all over the shop and getting in people's way. Like, oh, the bloody uh, landlords are here, lads. Mm. Get out. Uh, he's gone for the Australian <laughs> slash Yorkshire surfer. <laughs> My pub. Oh, Cockney. Yeah. Shaka. Shaka, bro. Like, it's like a, what's up? Cool, yeah. 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 The, the, that, mm. that hand signal Smojo does. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wahine. Is that Wahine, maybe? Uh, w a h i n e. I reckon you pronounce the a, but I have no idea what it means. Wahine. Wahine. The noise you make when you've like done a really cool trick. Trick. Wahine. <laughs> I'll say, is it like a? I don't know. A, 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 yeah, I was agree with Ross. A female surfer. Oh. oh. Uh, Zimzala. Mm, that's what you all chant when you pray to the surfing gods before a big <laughs> surfing sesh. <laughs> I reckon one of those surfs like a. Go like that. The slalom. <laughs> These are great answers. So it's a shame it's not right. A frequent beachgoer. I wish I was a though surfer. not always a surfer with a very relaxed state of mind. Nice. That was the last one. Thanks for all the great oh, work. That was Keith good. from Arizona. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Keith. Keith from Arizona. It's, it's landlocked, isn't it? Yeah, hang on. There's a big jungle, isn't there? It's desert. Are you thinking of the Amazon? <laughs> 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 what arena was WrestleMania 26 at? Because I can picture like a big Phoenix junglist area. Uh, junglist master. Arizona's next to California. Oh, Arizona. Easy. One. Yay. Well, I hope you managed to the, find the some surf anyway. Yeah. That was on strong. I know that there's a big name. coastline. No, that's California. No, the bottom. Isn't Arizona the lime green one? No, it's the blue one. Blue oh, one. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, right. So as you can no, see. No, that's not a coastline. That's Mexico here. underneath that. No. What? Oh, yeah, right. Maybe a, maybe a, a, smid, a smidgen on the far left. Maybe. There might be. There might be. Just a little bit. Maybe you have to nip it. Yeah, wait. When is... Oh, no. There's no Mexico on there. <laughs> well, this can go to bin. <laughs> Map of the world. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Matthew, Ross, Jack, and anyone filling in. Oh, no, check no, that'll be all landlocked, like. <laughs> Beg me pardon. Yeah, when you surf an Arizona person. There might, there, might be, there might be a little bit. No, I'm sure Mexico goes all the way to the California yeah. border. Uh, I'm a long-time listener. First-time emailer. Oh. Call like wrestling podcast. Hello. This last weekend, I had the chance to go to my first live event for WWE, and I've realized just how much you miss only watching wrestling through a screen. 
The Miz. Oh, how much you miss? Like, as in the stuff you miss out online. Yeah, yeah. Like, Ross came back with all sorts of wonderful extras from Cardiff. Oh, yes. Mm. He did. News, by the way. Hashtag free El Idolo. It's been tweeted out by Andrade. Oh, my God. Mm. He's put on a cup of tea. He's, he's, he's having, as Boris Johnson would say, a cup of tea on the balcony. Mm. He's seen that before. <clears throat> he's like, he's offering all the press a cup of tea. I think so. Prick. <laughs> yeah. So the AEW contracted situation of the week continues. Uh, the Miz was my highlight of the night because of his promo. He said, quote, I've made six movies in Vancouver. I'll beat most of them with straight to DVD, but Vancouver fans are the straight to DVD of wrestling fans. Uh... I had a good laugh at that, and it got the crowd really against The Miz. I'm hopeful I can go to more events the next time WWE or AEW are in the area. Nice. So my question is, have you, ever have, a, have you ever had an opinion about a wrestler change after seeing them do their work live? Oh, The Cold Light Wrestling Podcast is always a highlight of my week. I look forward to every episode. Thank you. Also, want to send a shout out to my grandmother that was two seats away from me, having the time of her life, screaming at all the heels. Ah, oh, very good. Sincere, yeah, sincerely, even, uh, Dilraj from Surrey. Thank you very much. British Columbia, Canada. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help fill in your map of the USA. Right, okay. Don't worry, pal. Oh, that was a nice question. Yeah, that was good. And I've got an answer. Go on. Mine was Kazuchika Okada. I knew he was a brilliant wrestler and everything, but I didn't quite connect with like the support that the New Japan fans had for him until I was fortunate enough to see a Wrestle Kingdom live. And when he made his comeback against, I think it was Jay White, it was like it was like a really, really good babyface comeback. Like the crowd was really behind him. I thought, hey, he's he's pretty decent him, actually, that Okada. And uh, he lost, I think, in the end. But it was a really good uh it made me realize that he's even better than I thought he was. So mine's Okada. But then Stephen Larson made me realize that Okada's a bit worse. Because at our show in Las Vegas, Stephen Larson nominated his finisher for the worst, the most overrated finisher. I think, I can't remember if it was Steve or Larson, but they said like, oh, I'm going to do my little spin around and then clothesline you. And I was like, oh, they've got him there. They've nailed him. Yeah. Aye. Mm. I miss Stephen Larson. They were lovely. Ah, oh, I love seeing the little twitches. and. Great. Uh... <laughs> Stephen Larson, the one person. Uh, Stephen Larson, the little twitches. Yeah, then, <laughs> like a rabbit's nose. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say nearly all the wrestlers who are on NXT 2015 when they came to Newcastle. Oh, yes, we were there. God, they were good. Uh, like all of them. But I'd say um, Gable and Jordan, mm, probably. American Alpha. I the, think so. Yeah. You know what? I literally couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah. Alpha, yeah. Alpha, yeah. yeah. No, the, the Alpha Academy on Raw. Uh, big difference. Alpha, Alpha. Because, um, uh, yeah, just because the little stuff they were doing, uh, sometimes you don't get to appreciate all of that if there's TV and they're like, you know, mm. coming up next and all the other stuff they're doing on the TV to overwhelm in your camera cuts. But we just see straight up what they're doing about these attractions. It was, oh, it's beautiful. Very good. That's a good answer. My answer is really crap. Because um, obviously, when you see a wrestling ring in person, you have a new appreciation for every move that's ever happened off the top rope. For yeah. example, oh yeah, yeah, because you don't realize how high how high it actually yeah. is on TV. But then, double or nothing, twenty nineteen. My abiding memory, apart from Moxie coming up and going, oh, it's, it's Ambrose, uh, was <laughs> seeing Scorpio Sky jump. Oh, mm. just a, a plain vertical, the leap over the top rope, for example. I've never seen a man with springier legs. Mm. So that is my really crap answer. Scorpio That's Sky's leaping ability. TV you, doesn't do it justice. You do realize live that even the stuff that looks the most basic is probably actually very hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we encourage anybody to actually go to a live oh, wrestling yes. show because very different just watching it on TV. See if or you can monitor. get well, close to a wrestling ring and just try and climb the ropes. <laughs> I no, tried. No, we don't encourage people to just I've, randomly start charging the ring. I've got on the second ring. rope once and I was scared. I got on the second. I didn't get on the top. No, same. Mm. How they do no. that, I don't know. And then you look down to the outside even and you're like, even the inside's like, oh, that's a bit far. Mm. You look outside, you're like, that's a new planet down there. What? It's mad. Yeah. yeah you feel like if you jumped off and <laughs> doing the Wally Coyote thing of like holding up a sign that says, ouch. <laughs> also how high the top rope is. And you think, how do they do a springboard? How do they balance? I know it's all core strength and stuff, but. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wrestling, eh? It's a mm. skill. It mm. is, yeah. <sighs> Dear Matthew, Jack and Ross. I'm a big fan of the podcast and love all the content you guys put out there. Thank you very much. I am a doctor in the northeast of England oh, and wow. a big wrestling fan. I was listening to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast this week and felt now was the time for my first contribution to the mailbag. As you discussed King Charles the uh, sorry, the third's swollen hands and feet. Oh, now this is terrible. No. Surprisingly, I am not Charlie's Charlie personal physician. 
but the most likely cause is that he has some element of congestive heart failure oh my and God. has his royal heart cannot pump blood around his body as quick as it used his to. royal heart. Fluid leaks out into his hands and feet to give him those swell boys. He's always had <laughs> uh, he's always had swollen hands. Given I've taken the time to write to you, it feels only right to throw a question your way. <laughs> oh my God, that was just a statement. <laughs> wow. If you were to wake up in hospital one day and you open your eyes, which wrestler do you think would make the best doctor for you to find out is looking after you? Okay. And who would be the worst? Hope you are all well, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Doctor. Pete you're Pete right. <laughs> oh, Pete the doctor. Um... They still look delicious, though. Delicious? Charles Thurston fingers. Mm. No. no. They look... Nom, nom, nom. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> I said Ooh, that last yeah. week. Very, oh. That was it. Maybe like in three seconds. And so I heard that one. I'm, so, I'm writing an email. <laughs> they look painful. <laughs> they look so like... <laughs> right, who would want to see there if we wake up in hospital? Um... I'm trying to think of wrestlers before That's who... Dr. King Charles III to you, man. No. I'm, I'm trying to think Sorry. before who's... Which wrestlers have given me a sense of security and like, oh, they're in control of this whole situation. Ooh, okay. um, the, the first one that just sprang to mind there is that one time I had a bottle of beer, but no bottle opener. And then Lana Austin opened it with her teeth. And I was like, thank you, Lana Austin. I'll enjoy my beer now. So Lana Austin. So how, how is she going to take it, your cast off? No, no. I just feel like she's got many. She's just in control of every situation. Oh, okay. She's like a Swiss army wrestler. She's good. Right. At worst, um, Abdullah the Butcher. Mm -hmm. yeah. John Cena for the best. Okay. Very orderly, very regimented. I know I'm in safe hands because he's not going to take anything, any bollocks mm -hmm. that he wouldn't put up with himself. No. A, wait, wait. Okay, go on. There's a list. He's going to sign a contract. He's going to make me sign a contract while I'm unconscious. Yeah. I'll wake <laughs> up and I'll be abiding by those rules. The worst. Insert. Well, all the candidates are there, aren't they, to speak for themselves? Just something. Don't want to say anything libelous on air. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! Uh, Who's a funny one? I reckon Norman Smiley would wouldn't take it seriously. He'd be like, "Oh, hey, Norman, <laughs> stop dancing. Just sort my leg." Hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'm you'll be Dr. doing Norman. You'll be doing the big wiggle anytime soon. What? <laughs> yeah, like Norman. Does he? Yeah, this is finished. Norman, I can't I breathe, man. His voice. <laughs> That's how he talk. Yeah, he did. He had a high pitched little. He voice. had a high pitched voice, Norman. <laughs> Smiley. Not smiley. Not that high pistol, was he? <laughs> smiley. Sound like, you sound like Sean Locke's impression of Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you want clotted cream? That's <laughs> when he says that. Oh, man. Uh, oh, right. uh, who'd I pick? Um, I have like someone like Dr. Terry Funk. No. Because you'd be like... It'd be terrible. Because you'd be... You know, no, this is what you want in the Northeast uh, Hospital, as I've had in the past. Um... You come in there and you're like, oh, I feel so bad. Oh, I'm dying. What else is wrong with me? Uh, and then they'll have like the porters, whatever you call them, just the old biddies, wake, wake you up at six in the morning to change the bed and go, now, oh, hey, shut up, stop complaining. I've been up since four. You want that from Terry Fung? <laughs> yeah, Terry Fung's like, <laughs> oh, you got a bad back. Oh, that's fine. My my knees don't work. <laughs> my toes fell off in 83. Yeah, your impressions these past few weeks my have been My head's on empty. Point. <laughs> You know, but I guess you can you can rest here on this bed <laughs> and I'll go and do your job. You know, I can see. I mean, all right, all right, all right, Terry. Sure. I'll get up. I'll get up. The regal one last week was magnificent as well. Oh, thank you, Bob. Yeah, they were both <laughs> top notch. Oh, that's it. What's regal, next week? Regal, give it to me straight. <laughs> I'm not going to be all right. Okay, so I, I want to tell you a story. All right, in '83, <laughs> that's when Kendall Nagasaki, right? He had this mask, <laughs> and a mask, so you couldn't see him because that's how masks work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so me and uh, Les Kelly, we've got these pipes. Now, and I bet you can love that. Uh, John Major, who was the Prime Minister at the time. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Regal. I asked, the question was, how are you doing? Who's that at the door? It's Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember the bit, man. I couldn't do it. Oh. Anyway, there we go. More, more. Thank you very much for the questions. More daft impressions as well next week. Mm. And if you have any things to send us to our way, if we're right or wrong about anything, we love to be told. Mm. Uh, please send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. Reese's Pieces. We just had an awful discussion off camera about some really controversial topics. Let's carry on. <laughs> oh, 
oh, is this how we sound like dirt cheats? Wow, the stuff well, just, we've just I been think, told, I think we can't tell you. I think that sometimes in this podcast, it cuts and then we all come back having clearly just been laughing loads and now we're like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder Reese's pieces now. Well, they cut the camera and they're all exhausted. I wonder what happened. <laughs> oh, God. Wade Barrett syndrome kicking in. <laughs> hey there, Matthew Ross Jack and the real star of the show. Puppet Jack, that's uh... enough for ye. <laughs> I have been a huge fan of all your content from the very beginning and can't begin to express how much you and Triple Jump have meant to me these past few years. Thank you very much. Enough of the sappy stuff. Oh. All right, fine. On to the pieces of Reese, inspired by the WWE Rivals show on A and E and the return of Jack's basketball nemesis. Oh, yes, Ooh, yes. Oh, he played mm. the Eagles. Please <laughs> name each of these wrestlers' greatest rivals. Oh, nice. Or the first one that comes to mind. Mm. Oh, I like this idea. I do as well. Okay, so we'll go first thought first, which is obviously Jack lost me. Uh... Macho Man, Randy Savage. Hulk Hogan. <sighs> Controlling nature. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, we've not gone for a wrestler there. We've gone for a character flaw. Wow. wow. Uh, I'm going to go for Ric Flair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It was various. You could have gone for Steamboat. Could have gone Flair. for anybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ric Flair. Oh. oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Ricky Steamboat. Alcohol. <laughs> what? At this point in his life, Conrad Thompson. <laughs> Ray Mysterio. Um, um, Eddie. The Patella. <laughs> oh. Hooventude. Oh. oh, wait. I, I was telling people about this the other day. Was I the only person who pronounced a saw on paper who would do Guerrero and said it like, Juventus. Juventus Guerrero. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> that was just me as a kid. All right, moving on then. <laughs> Brock Lesnar. Um, mm. Who's his biggest rival ever? Oh, come on, guys. Well, it's not that obvious. Um, it is. If you say yeah. diver, take your light. No, no. <laughs> <All right>. um, <laughs> Drug test. I'll, I'll, no. I'll go for Roman Reigns. Yeah, Roman oh, Reigns. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, Undertaker was mine. Yeah, fair, oh, enough. fair yeah. enough. You could have also had, like, Cena, maybe. Yeah, the push. Yeah. Goldberg. Chris oh, Jericho. Awesome. <laughs> Very good. Thank you once again. Oh, thank you once again. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Mick Foley in brackets, any face. Right. The the weird thing is, even though I've never really, uh, I'm far less well versed in this period of time in wrestling, my first thought was Vader. Yeah. Because he had a great feud with him in WCW. Terry Funk. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, that's the one. There, there it is. Uh, the Rock. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because. Seth Rollins. Ooh. Oh, the other two members of the Shield. Do I have to pick one? Roman. Oh my God, Seth Rollins. Um. Oh, who's his standout feud apart from those two? Cena. Oh. Oh no, John Stewart got involved. In John Stewart. Oh. <laughs> yeah. John Cena. Yeah, I'll go with Cena. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ambrose. Yeah. That's a feud yeah. for me. That made Ambrose. Sting. Mm. I can't do it like Tony. Sorry. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Yeah. The NWO. Not Flair or Horseman? Oh, yeah, Flair. Oh, for me. Yeah. No, Hollywood Hulk. Not thanks to WCW Superstars Volume 1. Mm. It's Hogan. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> DDP. Oh, Bang. Um, not Canyon. Why is Canyon? I love Canyon. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Canyon. Yeah. He did, but like... Positive. No, it's not like his iconic DDP feud. I'll go for Canyon. I like, I like Canyon. So great. More love to Canyon. Goldberg. Mm -hmm. Macho Man Randy Savage. 97. Right. Goldberg. I'm oh, not Hogan again. Um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Doors. Doors, yeah. Doors is good. A lot of blame in oh, Goldberg's right, career yeah. on Doors, Bosch, etc. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, Raven. Aye. Oh, yeah. US title. Yeah. Right. I was there. You're going, <laughs> quite interesting here, you're going for the ones that made the person, maybe not the ones at their peak. Yeah. Mm. Well, Goldberg didn't do many feuds. Just at the top bit, apart from like, I don't know, Kevin Nash. Uh, yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. Big Show slash The Giant. Ooh, okay. Um, oh, Hulk Hogan. No, um, mm. I know you could. You could. I'll go for Brock Lesnar. No, no, I don't know. Angle sprang to my mind. Yes. It's the comedy match. The tranquilizer mm, gun stuck that, with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seamus. Oh my I god! I love that feud. Shane McMahon. Did he feud with oh, Shane? Oh, Seamus. What was that? Seamus Big Show in uh, 2012. 
Oh. oh. Was it when it was surprisingly really, really Yeah, good? and yeah. this ungodly chemistry. He was, mm. she, she was really good. He went, oh, fella, you ever seen a ginger snap? And he gave him his finger. <laughs> <laughs> Best moment. Uh, Okada. Uh, now, Omega. I know there's two obvious choices, but I'll go for Omega. Uh, the crushing jaws of defeat. Okay. I'll go for. Uh, so you lost the plot, didn't you, after you lost the thing? Yeah. Dried his hair. The red balloon, yeah. Mm. Uh, Stephen Larson. <laughs> <laughs> CM Punk. Oh. oh. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. You saved it. You saved it. There's a lot of different ones you could go for. I'll say Samoa Joe in Ring of Honor. But because he had. Yeah. Gosh. I'll go for, yeah. I'll go for Samoa Joe. Cena. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Also his massive bloody ego. Mm. <laughs> There's so many. That, uh, Jeff Hardy. Oh, yeah, perfect. Thank oh, you. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Chris Jericho. Oh. Hmm. Oh, he's had so many as well. Shawn Michaels. Uh, Christian. Hmm. Rey Mysterio. Hmm. Uh, Jericho's had loads. He has. Fair play. Danielson. Oh, Daniel Bryan. He's had loads as well. Um, the Authority. Oh, that was first name. Chris O'Brien, yeah. AJ Styles. Christopher Daniels. Oh, John Cena. Mm. Who was going to beat up Cena? That's great. Uh, yeah. I don't know, that's how, how it went, was it? I enjoyed how he yeah, beat something up like that. Cena. He wore Cena's bicep thing around his head. That was yeah. funny as well. I forgot about that. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Um, I'm going to say Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Volta. Oh, um, Volta. Um... I'll go for Tyler Bate. I really enjoy the dynamic between them. And I've, mm. they've had two really good matches, I think. The Wembley one and the yep. Cardiff one. Yeah. Dragunov. That was going to be Matthews and I didn't want to steal it. Yeah, of course it is. Um, Got a core. Think of anybody else other than Dragunov. Mm. Rampage Brown. Ah, yes. Oh. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Kane. Undertaker. Shane McMahon. Mm. I'm trying to think of anybody other than those two. Daniel Bryan is an on again, off again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that. Uh, Triple H. The Rock. Sexy Bart. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mm. Mick Foley. No, oh, loads of good ones. All in the same time. Mm. All in the same, like, three right. years. Yeah. <laughs> P.S. It was a joy seeing you all in Las Vegas. Oh. Winner, y'all hopping over the pond again. I don't know. Cheeky bonus question. Oh, thank you, Ryan, from Houston, Texas. Uh, thank you. Right now, our country is burning to the ground. <laughs> so, not for a <clears throat> while, but... I was going to say, when someone wants to pay us to come off and yeah. pay for the phone, because we can't afford anything anymore. I might draw all my money out the bank and make a raft out of it. <laughs> a tiny raft. That makes it sound yeah. like I'm... Cool. That makes it sound like I'm... I'll do it all in fivers and yeah. make a little raft and then paddle across. Yeah. I didn't... I wasn't trying to flex. Yeah. That wasn't like a... That Chaka. wasn't that wasn't like a Ted DiBiase kind of promo. <laughs> we know what you meant. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you very much, Ryan from Houston, Texas. Mm. Well, Ryan, everything's bigger in Texas, including your lovely heart. Thank you very much for that <laughs> delicious yeah, question there. Way, and yeah. if you have any of Reese's Pieces, stop it, you. Um, please, please, please send them to <laughs> mailbag at cultaholic.com. Mm. It's Cultaholics. The question. <sighs> what a lovely podcast. Oh, it's been good, like. <laughs> and there's just some time to say a big thank you to our lovely producers, Jacob Castle. 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 Chris Ru- Oh, did he email this? Routh. Ah, it rhymes with South. Do apologize to Chris. Chris Routh. 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 Mouth of the South. Thank you very much. Buddy. 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 And Reno 2200. And there's more on the next page. <laughs> there's more on the next page. Sorry, there's so many. It cannot be contained Thank in you, one bit of 84. Nick Robbie. 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 And Noah Anderson. Anderson. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. very much. Fantastic. Oh, super sexy patronages. Ah, so the Oops. big question this week as we look at old clips of ourselves looking. Oh <laughs> anyway, that was lockdown. Is lockdown? Yeah. Right. Um, is what is the most extreme stipulation? Yeah. What is the most extreme? Nothing there, lads. Uh, the most extreme stipulation. I didn't see what that was. I didn't see what it was. It was uh, the, the extreme rules pictures from twenty twenty. Oh, I was just saying what we'd done before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. um well, I think, and I was going to offer an alternative view of this one because you can have all your, all your different painful things in a match, right? All the things that hurt. Ooh. But for me, the most extreme are the ones that hurt emotionally as a fan. So I think 
that the most extreme elimination, the most extreme stipulation when I was a kid that I was terrified of was buried alive. Horrible. Oh. And also, if you if you catch wind of that stipulation before you've been smartened up to the biz, you just think someone's getting legally buried alive. And that's horrible. Yeah, that's, that's the I, worst thing. It's like, now you sign a contract, we can kill you. Yeah, and I'm, a, I'm, I for one, I'm against that sort of thing. So, oh, thank you for that. Yeah. Yes. Um, but Very no, important. I was terrified of that stipulation as a kid. Also, Sting and Vampiro had like a graveyard match once. I remember seeing a little snippet of that and being terrified, but it was all grainy and like black and white and it wasn't very good. But in, as a kid, I was like, it's horrible. So, ones that horrified me as a child, like Buried Alive. It's quite extreme. Hmm. The Japanese wrestling company Hustle. Here we go. This is more what I was. Uh, <laughs> had this. You're supposed to be comedy, you're supposed to be wacky, hardcore gimmick. Russian roulette style thing where like, it was like every, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute, whatever, a new weapon would be introduced. I can't remember the other people in the match, but one of them was uh, Kentaro Kanemura. Okay. Who's a wacky lad. How can you say that, those words there, but then struggle with most others? <laughs> most. Because I've heard, I heard lots of people say this guy's name. I'm just repeating other people's. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you're throwing us off now. <laughs> And so they have stuff like, you know, uh, table, hey, oh, what's it going to be? Chair, hey, what's it going to be? Oh, something like one of those paper fans they have in Japan. Ha, 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 ha. That was all nice until what's the next thing going to be? Uh, oh, it's Mirko Krokop. Oh. The <laughs> wow. fighter. Wow. Oh, okay. And he came out like a weapon, so to speak, and walked up to Kanamura, who went, all right, kick us then, and just shoot, kicked him in the back of the head. Why? That is he extreme. Was a weapon. Yeah. Why would he agree to do that? I'd be scared of killing a man if I was Krokop. Because Kanemura was like, I'm hard me. Like, Did he fair. pull it? The the blow? Uh, I don't Did think it look so. like he pulled I don't, it? No, it did oh not look like he God. pulled it. Because he probably talked backstage and probably Kanemura was like, ah, it's all right. Yeah, what is hey, what I'm really hard me. Like, wow. <laughs> so kicked him right in the head. Uh, I would <clears throat> probably, you know, go through a chair, a table, a ladder, some barbed wire or two. No way in hell to let Marco Kokop hit me. Ross, do you know what his little, the phrase attached to him was Go in ahead, his Jack. mixed martial arts career? It was right leg hospital, left leg cemetery. Oh. oh. That's a bit like mine. <laughs> <laughs> left, right coma. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's mine. That's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mort of Mad Dog. <laughs> the Mort of Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> why would they let Krokop do that? Isn't it weird how he got knocked out famously by a head kick as well uh, after head kicking everyone? I know. Wow. 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 Just, that is an extreme yeah. one, and it's one I've never heard of, so I like that. Yeah, thought I'd bring up something new. Yeah, it's clever. Uh, something for people that they've heard of, I would say anything that involves height. Hmm. One of them saying... Marseille. The height of fashion. The height of fashion. Yeah. Oh, oh, Seth Rollins. The height of the century. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'd say anything like that because sometimes it's like the fear oh, or yeah. the feeling of like falling mm. through the air. We were just talking about how high the ring is. Mm. Imagine right. how high things on top of the ring are. Yeah. Oh, so what did uh, Jericho say? He said, "Oh yeah, I'll, I'll fall off hell in the cell." Doesn't look that that tall on camera. We saw him and Foley and whatever doing it, and then him and Triple H got on top mm. and the press went, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. no, 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 no." Yeah. Uh, I've changed my mind. Drew McIntyre recently did an interview uh, with like some NBC Sports Network, I think maybe. But he's talking about stipulations that he doesn't like doing mm. and uh, anything with height, he said. And he kept saying, also because I'm really tall, it's even scarier. <laughs> that's, oh, a, yeah. that's an extra like foot on everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, my head, I'm thinking, yeah, but if he, he mm. holds it and then falls, it's less. He said that. Be, if he does that, he goes to fall. In his foot. one with Orton where he fell off the side of the cell, he mm. said that he mentioned like the little foot and handholds in the side, but he said live. You just panic and you don't really can't find them. He said he just shoot climbed the cage. Honestly, it's good you say that because that's the bit I get more wor most worried about because I'm looking at that going, just doing that now, getting up and doing it. Okay, that that'd be that wouldn't be too good at it. But imagine if you're a wrestler mm. and you've been doing stuff and you're, you know, dressed for climbing, obviously, and your spandex and whatever, <laughs> and you're sweaty and you're knackered. And what if your opponents work the fingers? You're mm. like, oh great, great. They just climb up this giant thing. Do 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 do. I'm surprised not more people have just like accidentally fallen off it or anything like that. It never happens. Right? Yeah. It's weird. I don't know if Foley made it up that second time. Yeah. Neither does he. Yeah, well, yeah. 
I mean, Hell in a Cell is the answer for a mainstream buy like me before the year of like 2011 or whatever year it became a pay per view. What oh, year yes. was it when it became 2009. a pay 2009. 2009. Um, it meant it was guaranteed to go down. Yeah, that was the, the feud ender every time. Yeah. Battle of the Elimination Chamber, obviously, the, the not the chamber we've got now, the first one with the greats on the floor instead of the padded mats and all that sort of stuff. Wait. People always say it was the. Huh? I was going to cut you off, sorry. What? What? You know how they've changed the design of it now? The modern one's got like padded mats on the floor instead mm. of the grates because people would complain about how hard it is because grates are hard. Mm. Um, but I'm trying to think, me and Simon used to do a stream back in the day on um, a certain paid for, unnecessarily paid for streaming thing. Uh, we looked at uh, extreme matches and Erica, big weapons obviously being involved in matches and obviously the Drake Younger is probably the biggest weapon involved in these kind of <laughs> matches. <laughs> Um, and then you got involved with syringes and... Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, Whoa! no. We're back. Um, <coughs> We're all right. Yeah. Oh! oh let's wrap it up. Mentioned Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you said the right word. You said the right yeah, word. word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, glass. Glass. Things with glass. glass Weapons and, yeah, hurt, yeah, do they? Yeah, yeah. Wow, fish, fantastic. Piranhas. We're fine. We're fine. We're Piranhas right. and fish. Yeah. Piranhas. Um, Piranhas, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. in big Japan. T uh, we, we watched that one with the little... Mat Matsunaga held... Uh, oh. oh, I think... Uh, yeah, the other Ken and Nagasaki, you know, that one held him in and... Nom, nom, nom. Yeah, we watched Drake Young again. Syringe yeah. put through his face from one side to the other. I'd Lovely. Know. Yeah, uh, wasn't scared of syringes back then. No. So, uh, yeah, wow, those are some extreme <laughs> options. What are your extreme picks? <laughs> wasn't well, actually, for an ending line, <laughs> was it? Um, what are your extreme picks? Please leave them in the comments below. We hope you've enjoyed the lovely, lovely long podcast. Jack, what have you got to title for people whilst you're being merry with your birthday? There'll be a weirdest episodes out this weekend. Ooh. Great American Bash 2004. Oh, God. Rather you than me. Uh, also, me and Owen tried to stream this week and Twitch was down. Again? Yes. Second time in like a month or three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. It's been um, down in Europe. Oh, and the... Yeah, it was the same again. Oh. Uh, and it wasn't just us because Ashton was going to stream from home and she couldn't. So we were relieved when she tweeted saying that because... I believe it was an OBS issue. Oh, really? Oh, I see. <laughs> but like a, like a universal UBS. Oh, OBS, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But hopefully, we'll be back next week at twitch.tv forward slash coldaholic at 6 p.m. UK time onwards. Ooh, Unless gosh. OBS is still playing up. Uh, I'll, I'll not have much because uh, I'm away on holiday now. So I'll have a voiceover. I don't know when that'll be out. I'm recording it after this podcast. I'm going to die today. Because <laughs> it's about my new favorite Japanese promotion, FMW. <laughs> Wait, um, really? Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, so that's getting recorded and published in the future. Has it, has it replaced FMW. all Japan as your Japanese The story is Oh, I'm so glad you've been... Oh, man, yeah. I love FMW the, and the stories. Our pals in the Yakuza are involved. Yep. Our pals in the Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Lone Sharks that's and right. everything else. The yeah, podcast yeah. is Yakuza affiliate. Ah, no, it's not. It's not. I think it was actually the week when you were stuck by your door. Mm. When the Yakuza was heavily mentioned, wasn't was it? it? Sonic the Hedgehogs and the Yakuza. Was Sam on like? Uh, no. Sonic the Hedgehog was at the Yakuza. Aye, uh, Andrew's... Oh, no, Andrew was Andrew was here, yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. Kenny Omega's in, in the Yakuza. All, all sorts is oh. kicking off. Ah! Oh, yeah, now I'm going to be saying all that stuff. <laughs> Not the oh, God. Now he's getting scanned for a game or something. Now. I think if you had respect for the culture, you'd call it the Yakuza. That's fine. Whatever. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And it'll be another video I'm assembling a dream <laughs> combined AEW and WWE roster. We were in oh, Tokyo. No. on the comments and in that. Tokyo, just just right. a stream of people wanting their release. Yeah. Well, I've been to Japan, right, lads? I don't oh, mention that. <laughs> when we were in Tokyo, Sam pointed out a thing on a building. He went, see that sign on the side of the skyscraper there? He went, that's the Yakuza logo. I was like, very brazen of them. They're just out in the open. You never hear that about. I was about. To, I was about to mention a legitimate Newcastle Prime family there. Do that. <laughs> Whoa, bloody hell! Anyway, anyway yeah, yeah, now's the time to take the, those big canes away. Just to take, hey, Jack is off this day. You never see the bloody. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, I will be streaming as well. Mm. Walking on New Vegas and what, looking and enjoying the wonderful, wonderful, as voted by the prestigious fans of the Wrestling Observer newsletter, uh, best and worst matches of '98. Fantastic! Oh, we had a lovely scrummy time watching um, Rock. Uh, what's his name? Triple H, ladder match from SummerSlam. I'm tired, <laughs> shut up. And uh, the wonders of Hogan Savage in the cage, uncensored. Oh, I you're watching go, the best matches. Yeah, exactly. Oh, all right. Um, so, yeah, all that and more to come from us lads. And obviously, the Cold Dollar Classic Smackdown review. Mm. Me, and Tom, me and the Bronze Tom, Bronze yes. Campbell himself. We're back there. Cold uh, can be patronized. At <laughs> shut up patreon.com <laughs> slash coldaholic and you can send in your thoughts queries and recent pieces and sausage fingers to mailbag at coldaholic.com this has been Jack this has been Ross this has been myself this has been Dan the man behind the camera you've you named him thank you Dan uh, finally <laughs> you've been magnificent now we're going to look at the 
the big old TV and we're going to point out a very famous Newcastle crime fan. No, we're not, obviously. <laughs> um, we're going to say, lads. I don't know. Oh, happy birthday, Jack. Oh, One, two, God. three. Yakuza. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday, Chucky Muffin. Yeah. Happy birthday, Chucky Muffin. 